now let's get started missionary gamer is live finally now the reason why i say finally is because um i've been trying to get live for a couple days now um and i've been having technical troubles galore um but we are through it and now up and functional the live streaming software i was using prism uh, apparently has some sort of web connection it checks from the manufacturer and it couldn't connect so that wouldn't run and then our arc server was down basically all day yesterday so that was a problem and then um still waiting to get started on my job so i've been thoughtful about that as well but it's friday fantastic friday we're here we're up and running and we're gonna get started so with that in mind i have a podcast that i already had um, somebody review and make sure was um a good podcast for us to and it's by um, just thinking podcast uh, some faithful brothers who um, have a show that they um, they operate, and they did this podcast a while ago. I was recommended uh, to share it by Pastor Mosman. Had a faithful brother check it out. Seems like it is uh, solid, and so I am hopeful that this will be a useful thing to. Um, Listen to uh, we get started with our today. And so, without further ado, we're going to start the podcast. Hopefully, it comes through on the stream. It's fine. I'm going to double check everything. And we're not hearing it. Oop, there we go. Let's see. If it Hello and welcome, 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 welcome to Trust Thinking Podcast. 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 It's another edition of the Just Thinking Podcast. I am Virgil Walker. And I am Daryl Harrison. What's going on? Oh, my. He- <laughs> <laughs> what up, Doc? How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. It's good to be back, man. Your your intro made me want to take a take a little bit of water, man. I'm gonna have to get hydrated. <laughs> yeah, I had I had to make up for that intro that I'm sort of flubbed on the last episode. Oh man, you know, with uh, episode 112, uh, we, it had been a couple months, man, since we've been on the air with one another. So yeah, I did the Omaha and got kind of choked up. I, I got I, I need to make up for that one. Got kind of got kind of caught up, man. Our our friend, man, John Cooper, man. He was like, "Hey, bro, the Omaheezy might need some help, man. You might need to." Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like the Tin Man, the Wizard of Oz, man. I might need a little oil on the. Oh 
Uh, but man, you 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 made up for it, man. You had you had the jingle, that the haters jingle. You know, let your haters yeah, be yeah. your motivators. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, and, you know, and, and we and we have that for our listeners, man. We do have a remix version of that jingle now. Yeah, man. We got the remix. We're, 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 we're working on trying to make it available to everybody. So hold tight. If you wanted, to, we had so many people, man, come up and say, "Hey, I like to have that jingle as my ringtone." <laughs> well, we're trying to make that happen. <laughs> That's all right, man. Well, it's good to be back. It's good to be back behind the microphone. I know we got a lot of content to run through, man. And, and I know a lot of times our folks, you know, they jump in to the podcast. They 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 listen to the particulars. I, I've had some people say they fast forward with with kind of our, our intro stuff, man. But true, yeah. true fans of the show, man, they know how we get down. They know we warm up yeah. a little bit and yeah. and uh, before we jump into some things. One of the things that I want to mention, man, we mentioned last time. Uh, was was a, a the pregame proverb with John Rayner? It, it's it's a daily devotional. Each morning goes through the through the writings of uh, or through Solomon's writings rather, and he's working on a verse by verse exposition of Ecclesiastes. If you're interested in the devotional, you could sign up for that. Go on Apple Podcasts wherever you stream your podcast. It's the pregame proverb, and uh, a, a lot of folks from the last time man were really uh, grateful and and uh, felt like it was a great benefit to them. So we're we're happy to. To have the audio a, a pregame proverb, this? John, uh, sign up with us again and want us to give a mention of that. We're hopeful that that's beneficial for him and those who get over to to check him out. I know we've got we got some big announcements of our own regarding uh, regarding just thinking, man. We, we, you want you want to give our folks the particulars of that? No, man, you the MC, bro. Go ahead and make. I'm not understanding what you mean. You lost your health, your friends. The stuff was on your phone. I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. Did you help me understand? Did you have some sort of a uh, event? What's going on? When you say you lost everything, but you lost a phone, I'm not. I'm not sure what you're what you're talking about. But we're going to take a minute here. Um, Zabi says he lost everything. So we're going to take a minute to pray for him. Heavenly Father, um, I pray for Zabi as he says he's lost everything. Apparently he's had some sort of situation happen. I pray through this uh, that you would be glorified and that you would help him. You know all the details about this. Lord. So I pray for your assistance and your blessing. I ask this all in Jesus Christ's name, my King and Savior. Amen. And apparently this will be a good thing for you to listen to, Zabby. Let the people <laughs> let the people know. <laughs> well, we we are extremely, extremely excited about the fact that our first book, Just Thinking About the State, uh, is about to take flight, man. We've been working on this what it feels like almost a year man maybe it was it maybe it's it was been about a year it's yeah. been about a year bro yeah maybe, maybe about, about a year ago when we just started kind of thinking through this and and talking with publishers and we got on a number of different zoom calls and began trying to work out you know how do we do this what does it look like for us and uh, and for our fans and and how does it make sense based upon the time commitments that you and I both have but but man we're excited about the fact that that uh, just thinking about the That's state, it will be coming August 31st, 2020. But you can pre-order. You can, and, and I'm, I'm going to encourage people to, to get on the website uh, and pre-order uh, on, on the founder's website. Get on and pre- pre-order uh, your, your copy, your very own copy of Just Thinking About the State. Anything else you want to add to that, man? Um, I'm not sure what to do about my mic. I haven't changed anything about that. Um, check out my filters. I got noise suppression. Good quality. Um, I don't know. How bad is it? Well, God is the one who you can always trust in. So, so is it is it something where I need to I need to shut down? Like, is it that bad, Nathaniel? I'm not sure why my mic would be messed up. Let me try exiting this out. The way technical things. So, 
We'll see. It might just be while the podcast's going. But, uh, Sebi, the most important thing that you have, who you can always go to when things are uh, difficult, is the board. That would be the one I would advise you to go to. And uh, never let you down, ever. He's always there for you. Reach out to him in prayer. All right, here we go. Yeah, so the website is founders.org. Just go to founders.org, and you'll see it right there on the home page. Just thinking about the state. And I want to encourage you not to just get a copy for yourself or your family, but encourage your pastors, encourage your elders at your churches to purchase copies of these books um, in mass for your for their congregants. Mm-hmm. Uh, because what's really cool about this book is that there are Bible study questions that Virgil himself wrote um, after every chapter. Okay, so each chapter concludes with a set of Bible study questions that challenge you to go deeper into Scripture to understand the subject matter that's being addressed in that particular chapter. So go to founders.org. You can pre-order just thinking about the state. I think it's what, $13? Yep, yep, which pre-order. Is $5 less than retail yep. pre-order. Uh, so again, the book begins to ship August 31st. Mm-hmm. Just go to founders.org for your own copy or copies yes. of just thinking about the state. Yeah. Uh, one more plug verse before we move ahead here, bro. I want to, you know, Jenna Ellis, constitutional attorney, is a great friend of ours, good friend of the show. Mm-hmm. And Jenna Ellis is launching her brand new podcast on the Salem Network, Salem Communications Network, beginning September 13th. It's called the simply the Jenna Ellis Show. We want to encourage our listeners to go out and uh, subscribe to that podcast. We don't recommend. Uh, other podcasts uh, too often uh, on Just Thinking. So uh, we do take uh, situations like this where we can refer others to solid, uh, biblically sound content. That's what we want to do. That's what we do here on JT. Mm-hmm. And we, we only refer uh, you to other podcasts or other platforms that mirror that commitment. So again, it's called, called The Jenna Ellis Show. It begins September 13th, so we encourage you to check that out. Absolutely. Anything else, V? Now, just, just uh, man, I want to say one one last thing about the book, and that is how uh, incredibly honored we were to, to have uh, John, Dr. John MacArthur uh, write a foreword for our book. And, uh, man, he just had some great things to say and as, as he was impressed. I got a chance to, uh, about a week ago, Daryl, to talk with him on, on the phone as we were working on issues for G3, and he wanted to make sure I was keeping you in line and, and uh, making sure that you were yeah. doing <laughs> Yeah, there there are a lot of people assigned to make sure I stay in. A lot of people assigned to me in that regard. Absolutely. But, man, I, I got a chance just to thank him for the forward for the book, and he was very appreciative of the work that, that you do, obviously, for him at, at GTY and what we do with Just Thinking and uh, and what he believes is, is going to be a beneficial to, to the body of Christ with regard to the book. So we just want to commend the book to you and encourage you to go get it. We're talking all about issues around, about the state as we're watching the encroachment of government on every facet of life, uh, from vaccines to, to CRT to uh, you name it. I mean, but we, we cover a number of different issues in the book, from government to socialism to capitalism and the like. You'll want this copy on your in, in your library. I promise you that. So that's the last thing I'll say about the book as we get ready to unpack uh, for this particular episode of the Just Thinking Podcast. Yeah, you know, Omaha, the episode of the Just Thinking Podcast that we're recording today is somewhat unique in that the topic we're dealing with is one that was suggested to us by numerous listeners. We don't normally make a practice of taking suggestions for, for topic ideas, but we do appreciate that our listeners think highly enough of the Just Thinking Podcast to trust us to deal faithfully with the topics they do suggest to us. Okay, so we're very thankful and we're incredibly humbled by that. Now that said, we're here today on the, this episode of the Just Thinking Podcast to talk about what the Word of God has to say about sinful fear and anxiety. Mm. Now, I say <clears throat> sinful fear and anxiety because I believe there's an important distinction to be made between illegitimate fear and anxiety and fear and anxiety that is, in fact, legitimate. Now, we'll endeavor to examine those distinctions later in this episode, but suffice it to say, not all fear and anxiety is sinful in and of itself, okay? Not all fear and anxiety is sinful in and of itself. You know, one of the manifestations of God's common grace in the world is that embedded within each of us as image bearers of God is an element of fear and anxiety that is healthy. Mm -hmm. Healthy, that is, in the sense 
that when one considers that we live in a world that has been corrupted by sin, we know that from Romans 8, 19 through 21, there are occasions and instances when expressions of fear or anxiety are entirely right and proper. Okay. For example, let's say you wake up tomorrow morning and find that there is a brown recluse spider on your pillow looking you right in the face. <laughs> Now, in such a situation, I would suggest that you have every right to be fearful because of your awareness that brown recluse spiders are among some of the most venomous spiders in the world. Mm -hmm. And to be bitten by one is very likely to result in serious bodily harm to you. But that's just one example. There are others, of course. But the point I'm trying to make here is perhaps better reflected in these words from Dr. Stuart Scott, who in his book titled Anger, Anxiety and Fear, A Biblical Perspective, says this quote there is a fear or danger and difficult circumstances that is reasonable we would not be living in reality if we did not even consider how an upcoming situation might affect us god wants us to live in reality but at the same time he wants us to bring him into the picture it is reasonable to respond to danger and disaster god has equipped us with a bodily response an increase in adrenaline production that can help us when physical danger is imminent. This increase can cause other bodily responses, pounding heart, muscle tension, heightened awareness, dry mouth, perspiration, and butterflies of the stomach. As long as we do not let our fear or our feelings keep us from doing what is right, and we turn to God in our fear, that fear is not ungodly mm -hmm. okay we are all going to feel afraid sometimes but don't make the mistake of equating courage with a lack of feeling afraid that's good the most courageous christians are those who feel afraid but who when right. they feel afraid place their trust in god and do what he says to do the question is what do we do when we are afraid? And then Dr. Scott closes that quote with Psalm 56, three, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. That quote was from Dr. Stuart Scott from his book, Anger, Anxiety and Fear, A Biblical Perspective. Now, it is against the backdrop of those words from Dr. Stuart Scott that I think would be helpful at this point in our episode, Omaha, to set some expectations for our listeners particularly with regard to what this episode is not. Okay. I want to clarify what this episode is not. This episode of the Just Thinking Podcast on sinful fear and anxiety should not be construed or regarded as an exhaustive or comprehensive treatment of that subject. Nor is this episode intended to address any and every conceivable individual situation or circumstance imaginable in which a believer might experience sinful fear and anxiety or conversely, how he or she should respond in every situation and circumstance because such instances are unique to each individual. Our goal in this episode of the Just Thinking Podcast is simply to provide our listeners with some biblical principles and precepts from God's word concerning the topic of sinful fear and anxiety as God grants us the humility and wisdom to do so. We want to encourage believers to take those principles and precepts that we're going to discuss, take them to heart and apply them in their own lives so far as the spirit of God directs them. OK, and I think our heart's desire for people who are listening to this episode of the Just Thinking podcast is reflected quite well, Omaha, in these words from the 17th century English Puritan John Owen, who in his book titled Searching Our Hearts in Difficult Times, said this, quote, oh, that we might advise one another as to what to do to help one another to recover from our weaknesses. This is what we are called to, what is required of us, to have faith in the faithfulness of Christ who has built his church upon the rock so that however bad things might be, nothing will prevail against him. To have faith in the fullness of the spirit and Christ's promise to send him to renew the face of the church to have faith in apprehending the truth of God who has foretold these things and to have a faith that stirs us up to attend to those special duties that God requires at our hands at such a time, unquote. 
And that is our desire and prayer for this episode of the Just Thinking Podcast, that God would grant us his wisdom so that we might be able to advise our brothers and sisters who may be struggling with sinful fear and anxiety to, as John Owen said, recover from their weaknesses. And we all have weaknesses. All of us, every one of us has weaknesses. As Dr. David Pallison, whom I will quote on more than one occasion over the course of this episode, writes in his excellent book titled, How Sanctification Works. Dr. Pallison says this, quote, the darkness of the human condition is characterized by two immense wrongs that create turmoil throughout our lives. A complete mix of moral evils arises from inside us. A complex mix of situational evils besets us. The Bible uses the word evil to describe both sin and suffering, just as we do in English. Sometimes so something inside us is wrong. Something inside us is wrong. People believe think, feel, want, and do bad things. Mm -hmm. Of course, the obvious atrocities are moral evils, but the falsity, self-deception, and godlessness of quote, normal, unquote, life, and the misshapenness of quote, normal, unquote, desires, similarly count as moral evil in God's assessment. We are quote, off, unquote, in relation to both God and other people and things outside us are wrong bad things happen to us other people betray us we face losses sicknesses and death we swim in the falsehoods of our socio-cultural milieu a liar and murderer meaning satan is out to deceive and kill us in some we face troubles externally we are troublesome interpersonally, and we are troubled psychologically, struggling both with what we face and with who we are, unquote. That was Dr. David Pallison from his book, How Sanctification Works. And Dr. Pallison says we struggle both with what we face and with who we are. That's very true. But even so, thanks be to God that his elect can rely on these comforting and reassuring words from the psalmist in Psalm 103, 14. Psalm 103, verse 14, the psalmist Psalm writes this, For he himself, that is God, for God knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. So again, I just want to say that at the outset of this episode, so as to try to establish some context as well as some expectations, uh, Omaha, for what this episode is intended to be, and what it is not intended to accomplish. Any thoughts, man? No, I, I, I appreciate the way that, that, that you opened this segment. And I, I want to charge our listeners at this point, as, as, as most folks who follow us on Just Thinking know, uh, when we cover a particular topic, man, we do so incredibly, first of all, biblically. That's our primary responsibility. How, how do, what does the Bible have to say about the, the issue at hand? And then secondarily, we bring a lot of resources to bear, and this episode is no different. As I examine the landscape of culture, I can't think of a time when there was more fear actually happening in the personal lives of individuals. And, and this is one of those times when this particular episode, I think, is just incredibly timely. And, uh, and so my, my challenge to listeners would be, one, to get a pen, some paper, uh, in the in your opening monologue alone, Daryl, you've already cited three different authors, quoted three different verses of scripture, and and we're just opening up to set the boundaries and guidelines. And so, mm -hmm. as this as this particular episode unfolds, I, I think you sent me twenty six different authors that you're going to yep. quote during the course hey, of this. Mm -hmm. I, I've added another ten authors to that based upon my my commentary as as this episode unfolds so so within this you're gonna have 36 different authors whose books i would commend to you uh as as reading so if, if you're in a state of fear and you're dealing with this issue on a, on a on a daily basis as many of us are there may be through the course of this episode a particular author or a book that that we're going to encourage you to go out and grab and 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 you know, put that in your library as a part of, of what helps you navigate um, the, the, the issues of the day. Let me get back to my notes. I think we can both acknowledge that the subject of... So this is um, Just Thinking Podcast. And yeah, yeah, up there. No, no apologies necessary. It's good to see you, Mario. And they're talking about um, why are you afraid? 
And so we're going to grab a sign shot here. So we can send that to uh, Daryl and... away and then back to the room also could please ask for some prayer dude just ask for the prayer you know you need to ask you know like that's instantaneous yes 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 and yes like of course you can always ask for prayer so i'm going to try to get this note while I'm waiting. I'd rather people just tell me what their prayer is and I'll get ready to plan. Rather than Eris. I'm not entirely sure oh, how Therizinosaurus multiensis stays populated on the island. It is surprisingly slow for its size and is a solitary predator. So no pack. Rude. Rude. Waiting for Mario's prayer request. Alright, let's see. Um, get to a place where I can focus. Hopefully not get eaten. Put our heads up and display back. Alright. I finally had the opportunity to share the gospel earlier. The gospel earlier one on one in real life. The other thing I think I'd like to ask prayer for are the big SP storms still in my life. How are things with you and your family? I'm confused, but good news is the God I'm praying to knows exactly uh, what the figuratively speak. I would have never got that, dude. <laughs> Not in a million years, but let's take a minute here. We're going to pray for Mario. Almighty God in heaven, I pray you would bless Mario's faithful proclamation of your gospel to whomever he proclaimed it to and that they would do the work that only you can do or that miracle of bringing us from death to life that you would do just that that you'd um, bring this person from death to life that they would know the savior um, and bless mario for his um participation in that process that that you are at work in i also pray for these issues and storms that uh, he's facing that you would help him and bless him and through this, as we talk about in this podcast as well, that all of this would be about sanctification, being made to look more like your son and less like our sinful selves. I ask all this in Jesus Christ's name, our King and Savior. Amen. Yeah. Prayers, of course. All right, we're going to get back to the podcast. Fear and anxiety is so broad that there's no possible way to address every single area of life which someone can, in which someone can experience fear. It's great that we make distinctions, and, and Daryl, that you made the distinctions that you did. As always, we want to approach the subject biblically. As we do, it's essential to identify the differences between godly fear, as found in Proverbs 9 and 10, which says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of One wisdom of and knowledge, uh, and, and knowledge of the Holy One is insight, and fear that one experiences as the result of the fear of man, Matthew 10, 28, which says, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both verse. body and soul in hell. That's, that's um, Ma Matthew 10, 28. One of the things that I want to add to, to what I'm sharing here is Daryl started by unpacking the, the, the fear you should have, and, and he used the example of, uh, of a spider. Yet th there's, there's fear that's there because you understand the fallen world in which we live and the nature of of death and and the seriousness with which which that situation would put would would put you in, but what's happening in culture is is far different from that kind of fear. Today, however, culture, mainly the media, seems to peddle in the fear of man. Right? You just take a quick look at the front pages of any major media outlet, and you'll find what you'll find is an endless parade of fear. As a, as a part of headline news, let me give you a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. I was perusing CNN.com at the time of this recording, and uh, and they had the following stories. Earthquake strikes near Haiti. Dozens have died after the magnitude 7.2 earthquake, and one hospital, here's the fear, and one hospital is overwhelmed without supplies. 
So, so again, what not just that the that the horrifying tragedy that took place in Haiti with the earthquake, but the fear at adding on to that of hospitals being without supplies. Um, add to that another one said, uh, quote, Antarctica is melting. Its future could be catastrophic. And again, here's the, here's the peddling in anxiety and fear. Finally, there's a story taking direct aim at fear as it reads, still people have fear what life is like in some cities after the Taliban. And so this is the issue overseas where where the Taliban is wreaking havoc back again on Afghanistan. And and, and, and the headlines are, are really focused on the fear that surrounded, uh, uh, you know, by that, that simple example. Here in the United States, we have everything from CRT to COVID to socialist communism that are on the rise. And all of this creates a tremendous amount of anxiety and fear. It's, it's time for us, again, to address this topic with biblical clarity as we get things started. So as we broach this topic, man, I'm reminded of a conversation, Daryl, that I had earlier this week with Dr. Josh Bice. Uh, he was reading to me in his office a quote from Calvin, and I thought it was really apropos in the context uh, that, that we'll find ourselves in and, and, and as, as, it, as it relates to the topic of fear. As, as we do on the Just Thinking podcast, we always want to immerse ourselves first in the subject matter before we, mm-hmm. we bring, it, bring the subject to our listeners. Well, it was John Calvin who said this. This was the quote that Dr. Josh Bice shared with me today, uh, last week. It, it's a quote from Calvin. It says, quote, if a preacher is not first preaching to himself, better that he falls on the steps of the pulpit and breaks his neck than preach that sermon, end quote. And so as we as we think about mm. Calvin's words in that instance and how important it is for those who are who are sharing the truth, who are sharing the word in this instance, as, as it pertains to Calvin's quote, they, that they immerse themselves in what's, you know, the, the content, the subject matter that, that they're sharing. I, I think it's important for you and I, as we begin this process to 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 examine our own hearts and lives oh, and make boy. sure that we have a proper biblical fear of God. Uh, not the fear of man, uh, and that we understand the nature of the fallen world in which we live. So I, I'll, I'll open that up as my kind of opening monologue to get things started, Daryl. What you got for us, brother? Yeah, that was, first of all, I need to say that was a fire quote from Calvin, bro. Yeah, yeah. That quote was fire, but yeah. what do you expect from Calvin? Right, right. <laughs> you know, I mentioned earlier, Omaha, that there's a distinction to be made between sinful fear and anxiety and fear and anxiety that is healthy and normal within the context of God's common grace, which he bestows upon each of his image bearers. Now, the approach I'd like to take in contrasting the two is to leverage an illustration from the banking and finance industry in which I spent many years regarding how to distinguish between counterfeit currency and the real thing. Mm. The way that people in the FBI and the Department of the Treasury and the Secret Service become so proficient at recognizing counterfeit currency is that they spend countless hours studying the real thing. Exactly. Now, my point here is that when you learn to recognize what legitimate fear and anxiety actually are, you're then able to distinguish between that and illegitimate or sinful fear and anxiety and subsequently to respond accordingly, which is to say to respond biblically. OK, it is an unfortunate reality, Omaha, that most people, including many professional Christians, they find fear and anxiety through the subjective lens of their own situational mm-hmm. and circumstantial experience, mm-hmm. as opposed to through the objective and fixed lens of the Word of God. Now, I say that in light of these words from the Puritan John Flavel, who in his book titled Triumphing Over Sinful Fear, said this, quote, There is as much diversity in people's inward moods and dispositions as in their outward features. Mm-hmm. Some are as frightened as rabbits and jump at every sound, even a dog's bark. Some are as bold as lions and face danger without trembling. Some fear more than they ought, and others when they ought not at all. The carnal person fears man, not God. The strong Christian fears God, not man. The weak Christian fears man too much and God too little. There is a fear which is the effect of sin. It springs from guilt and hurries the soul into more guilt. There is a fear which is the effect of grace. It springs from our love to God and his interest and drives the soul to him in the way of duty. The less fear a person has, the more happiness he has, 
unless, of course, it is that fear which is his happiness and his excellence. Let me repeat that sentence. The less fear a person has, the more happiness he has, unless, of course, it is that fear which is his happiness and his excellence. Mm. It cannot be said of any person, as it is said of Leviathan, he is, quote, made without fear, unquote. That's Job 41.33b. The strongest people are not without some fears. When the church is in the storms of persecution and almost covered with waves, her most courageous passengers may suffer as much from the boisterous passion within as from the storm without. This is the result of not thoroughly believing or seasonably remembering that the Lord, Admiral, Admiral of all the oceans and commander of all the winds, is on board the ship to steer it and preserve it from the storm, unquote. That was John Flavel from his book, Triumphing Over Sinful Fear. I want to repeat that last sentence from Flavel. Flavel said that our fears and anxieties are the result of not thoroughly believing or seasonably remembering that the Lord, Admiral of all the oceans and commander of all the winds, is on board the ship to steer it and preserve it from the storm. Now, I'm intrigued by Flavio's use of that phrase, seasonably remembering, Omaha. And I don't want our listeners to miss that because I think it's a very important phrase. The reason I'm intrigued by Flavio's choice of words there is because I'm convinced that it's in those, quote, seasons, unquote, of trial and adversity that many professing Christians tend to succumb to sinful fear and anxiety in their life. This ongoing COVID reality that we're all currently dealing with is is in one way or another a a very tangible and palpable example of one of those seasons, if you will. And it's in these types of seasons, as Flavel said, that many professing Christians tend to forget that the Lord is, as John Flavel said, aboard the ship to steer it Mm -hmm. and preserve it from the storm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if John Flavel may have had in mind Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 and 20 through 27. I wouldn't be surprised if he had that passage in mind when he penned those words that I quoted just a couple moments ago. I'm going to read Matthew 8, verses 23 and 27. When he, that is Jesus, got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered with waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. The men were amazed and said, What kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? That was Matthew 8, verses 23 through 27. Now, our listeners may be interested to know, Omaha, that it is from verse 26 of that passage in Matthew 8, that we took the title for this episode of the Just Thinking Podcast, Why Are You Afraid? Because for the Christian anyway, this matter of sinful fear and anxiety is fundamentally a matter of what we allow into our minds. And more specifically, what we choose to allow our minds to dwell on as a replacement or substitute for dwelling on the truth of God's word. Now I say that in light of such passages as Philippians 4, 6a, be anxious for nothing. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28a Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. Then there's Matthew 6.34 So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now those verses are just some of the scriptures that are easy enough for us to remember and recall when things are going well for us in life. But but when some unexpected or unanticipated difficulty or trial providentially interrupts our lives, those verses and the truths they contain suddenly aren't so easy for us to recall. That's good. because Because it's in those unanticipated situations and circumstances that we actually have to put those truths to work by faith. As I said before, Omaha, it's easy to be like Jesus until you have to be like Jesus. (laughs) That's good, man. But what we as followers of Jesus Christ have to remember in those instances 
is that, as I said earlier, those situations are all providentially ordained and orchestrated by God himself. I say that in the context of one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, Omaha, you know what it is, particularly with regard to the situations and circumstances that may produce fear and anxiety within us. And that verse is Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 14, which in the non-Arminian Bible reads like this. In the day of prosperity, be happy. But in the day of adversity, remember, God has made the one as well as the other. Oh, that's a great As verse. Ecclesiastes 7, 14, in the day of prosperity, said. be happy. Mm. But in the day of adversity, remember, God has made the one day as well as the other. Man. Now, I've often said that if you can get the words of Ecclesiastes 7, 14, words that reinforce the absolute sovereignty of God over everything that happens to us, if you can get those words firmly and deeply embedded into your heart and mind, you'll never have a bad, a bad day. Never. You will never have a bad day. If you can grasp the context and the import of Ecclesiastes 17, you will never have another bad day. Amen. And yet, in light of the exhortation that we have in Ecclesiastes 7.14 to, quote, remember that God has made the one as well as the other, unquote, the question for us becomes, when we are overcome with sensations of fear and anxiety, what are we choosing to remember in those moments? Mm -hmm. What are you choosing to remember in those remember in those moments when those sensations of sinful fear and anxiety overcome you? What are you choosing to set the focus of your mind on? Now, I pose those questions because the truth is that whatever you choose to set your mind on in those moments when you when you're feeling fearful and anxious, and it is a choice. It's a choice that you make. Whatever you choose to set your mind on in those moments, whatever you choose to set your mind on is precisely the thing that is going to guide and direct you in those moments. Did you hear me? Whatever you choose to fix your mind on, that's what's going to guide you in those moments. Now, I want our listeners to ruminate on that as I read the following quote from Dr. Edward T. Welch. Dr. Edward Welch, in his book titled Running Scared, subtitled Fear, Worry, and the God of Rest, Dr. Edward Welch from his book, Running Scared, Fear, Worry, and the God of Rest. Dr. Welch said this, quote, Anytime you love or want something deeply, you will notice fear and anxieties because you might not get them. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can't control the fate of those things you want or love, you will notice fears and anxiety because you might lose them. Good insurance policies might help but they only lessen the risk on things that aren't our real worries. They can't ensure that our loved ones will outlive us or keep us from the ravages of old age. Control and certainty are myths. Unquote. Did you hear me, listener? Did you hear that last sentence from Dr. Ed Welch from his book, Running Scared? Dr. Welch said control and certainty are myths. You know, Omaha, it was, it was many years ago, back in my Arminian days, before I was exposed to Reformed theology and the doctrines of grace, that a former pastor of mine, whose name many of our listeners would, would recognize, they would likely, likely know if I were to mention it, mm -hmm. said something that has stuck with me to this very day. That former pastor friend of mine said, the battlefield of Satan is the mind. The battlefield of Satan is the mind. The 17th century English Puritan William Grinnell wrote this, quote, the fiery darts of Satan, which the believing soul is able by faith to quench, may be described as of two sorts. First, either those that do pleasingly entice and bewitch with some seeming promise of satisfaction to the creature, or second, such as affright and carry horror with them." Unquote. So that's William Bernard. William Bernard says there's two, two types of flaming arrows for, from Satan that we can, we can expect. The first will be arrows that please and entice and bewitch us with some seeming promise of satisfaction. But the second arrow is the arrow that causes fear and anxiety, or what Gernal uh, described as a fright and horror. The Puritan theologian Richard Sibbs has some wise counsel for us concerning guarding our minds against Satan's tactics in his classic book titled The Bruised Reed, where he writes this. This is Rich Richard Sibbs from his book titled The, the Bruised Reed. Quote, are you bruised? Be of good comfort. He calls you. Conceal not your wounds. 
Open all before him and take not Satan's counsel. Mm -hmm. Go to Christ, although trembling, as the poor woman who said, if I may but touch his garment, Matthew 9, 21. We shall be healed and have a gracious answer. Go boldly to God in our flesh. He is flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone for this reason that we might go boldly to him. Never fear to go to God since we have such a mediator with him who is not only our friend, but our brother and husband. Let the world be as it will. If we cannot rejoice in the world, yet we may rejoice in the Lord. His presence, that is the Lord's presence, makes any condition comfortable." Unquote. Amen. Wow. That was the period of Richard Sibbs from his book, The Bruised Reed. And I just want to make sure our listeners heard that last sentence. Sibbs said that the Lord's presence makes any condition comfortable. And yet, in spite of that truth, I wonder how many professing Christians listening to me right now are struggling with sinful fear and anxiety due to the fact that they are discontent with their present condition, as Sibs put it. I say that in light of what the Puritan writer Thomas Boston says in his book, Human Nature in Its Fourfold State. Human Nature in Its Fourfold State. The Puritan Thomas Boston says this, we are back. Is not everyone by nature discontented with his present lot in this world or with some one thing or other in it? This also with Adam's case, Genesis chapter three, verses five and six. Some one thing is always missing so that man is a creature given to changes. And if any doubt this, let them look over all their enjoyments and after a review of them, listen to their own hearts and they will hear a secret murmuring for want of something else. Mm. Though perhaps, though perhaps if they considered the matter aright, they would see that it is better for them to want than to have that something, mm -hmm. unquote. Wow. That was Thomas Boston from his book, Human Nature and Its Fourfold State. Now, before I hand it over to you, Armahar, for your thoughts, I want to go off script for just a moment and say that those words from Thomas Boston take me to Daniel chapter three, verses 15 through 18, where we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who are about to be thrown into the fiery furnace by King Nebuchadnezzar for refusing to worship the golden image mm -hmm. that Nebuchadnezzar had, had set up. All right, we're going to pause there for a minute because we do have people on YouTube as well, and I don't have my YouTube in a format that I'm able to um, access in the same space, and I want to give them uh, their due as far as, oops, I guess I could have put there. Let's see here. How do I get to that live? One moment. Switch account. There we go. Now I can get to that and uh, YouTube Studio. It's so many more steps, but I want to be uh, give uh, attention to those who are on our YouTube channel already live so how do i get to the content live there we go all right now i can get to my control room it's not so official control room. got it all right so we had a couple people um hey played arc for years play tribe but only want to play with christians is there any way i can come and play with you guys don't know if you can see this so legendary painter if you're still there you're more than welcome to join us we had somebody come in and say Islam on top, and here's the bottom line. Um, Islam uh, is a lie. Doesn't matter if it's uh, on uh, the chat or not. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a second, though, and we're going to share uh, the gospel with this person. Hopefully they're still here. And we'll see um, if they are, or if somebody else uh, hears it as well. So here's why Islam is a lie. Uh, because there's only one truth. And it is, uh, and it's such, it's such a good, good news. And the good news has to be backed up by the bad news. So we have to understand the bad news first, and this is why we can know for a fact that Islam is not true, is because Islam answers none of the problems that we have with the bad news. 
The bad news is you, me, everyone have all sinned, every single one of us. And people in Islam will acknowledge this as well. You've lied, right? Everybody has. You've sinned against God. You have not done what he has commanded you to do. You have sinned. And one sin against an infinite God of infinite authority takes eternity in hell to pay off. Just one. And we've done thousands of them, if we're honest. Islam cannot answer this fundamental question, what can be done about my sin? Nothing. All they offer is bribes to God. Well, I'll try to do something. And that's, it's not just Islam, it's every religion. Every religion is of the same exact problem. They all try to explain how they're going to solve this problem with works. That's what you got. You either got works or you have the good news. And the good news is that Jesus Christ was born 2,000 years ago, miraculously, lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. And then he went to that cross as an innocent man to pay for our sins. That's what's very important to understand. He died on that cross, was buried, and then rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. All of this, all of this proved that he was who he said he was, God himself, and that he did it when he said, it is finished. Jesus Christ can actually back that up. He can say, it is finished, and we know it is actually done. Now, with that understanding, Jesus said the following, after he ascended into heaven and is now seated at the Father's right hand, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This good news that I've just shared with you. So what I would encourage you to do, person looking at Islam, is go into your sacred text, ask your imams, talk to them. What can I do to be 100% assured that on the day that I die and I stand before God, I will be welcomed into heaven as a righteous man? And if they're honest, which the majority of the ones that I've heard are honest about it, they say, well, you can hope, you can try, you can do these things and maybe, but all of that is bribing the judge of the universe. There is only one true, one truth that you can be assured of in salvation. And that is through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And you don't deserve it. It's a free gift. So I hope you will think about that. Very, very, very important. Um, we have somebody coming in and say, Ethan. Ethan says, not even once. Nope, Jesus didn't sin. Not even once. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing it up, Ethan. Perfectly righteous. And that's what he gives us. He gives us his righteousness. And that's a wonderful, wonderful truth. And the server, just search for unofficial servers. And it's ACC. Let me drop the um, Discord for you. You're welcome to come join us. Um, go get Rachel. Her character died, please. Oh, she died. I yep. have to do it for her. All right. So you got to log back in and get her stuff before it despawns. Uh, let's see here. Let me do an invite. Copy the invite and drop it in the chat. Uh, there we go. Here you go. All right. In the server, just search for ACC on unofficial. Yep. We work on Xbox. Uh, you can't earn your way into heaven. You cannot bribe or haggle with God. He is a good judge. And that's just it. Uh, people who uh, follow Islam have a very small God. They have a God who is not righteous. He is not just. He's willing. Their God can be bribed by their good work. Doesn't matter that he did that which was abhorrent to uh, him and that which he forbids. They do it and it is a, uh, a reality that they think they can bribe him. So we just had somebody join called Hebrew Hammer. That's quite the name. Uh, Allah is moon god? No. No, um, Allah is just another um, uh, fake um, idol. So Hebrew Hammer, thank you for joining us. You're welcome to unmute your mic. My name is Peter. It's very nice to meet you. I don't know if this is the same person who is on the uh, YouTube channel. Maybe it is. But if you'd like to join us, um, you're welcome to just search for ACC. 
on unofficial servers. At night, the air is clear. I don't know what's up with you, uh, but sorry, dude. Not sure where you're going with that. Okay. Um, so that is the gospel message. I hope you will be um, thoughtful about it. It is the most important truth that uh, that there is. Mario, I am sure you explained why good works can't be considered by the good judge as well, Peter. Uh, just in case, Mario, that that wasn't clear. Good works is a bribery. So when you think about this, you've sinned against a righteous God. And just a single sin takes eternity in hell to pay off. Not because of the size of the sin, but because who you have sinned against. The ultimate authority of God. So if you came to him and you offered him your good works and were like, hey, can you just kind of look the other way? Think about this for a minute. You're walking up to the judge and you're saying, I know I'm guilty, but you should let me go because of this good work I've done. So what? You're supposed to do good works. That does not pay for your sin. That does not pay for your violation of God's law. And so when you think about your good works, uh, God says they're like, Filthy rags before me. And the worst of filthy rags, if you want to look into it, you can. It's 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 about as filthy as filthy can get. And so understanding that that is important. Uh, should I be scared of God? Yes, you should be scared of God. In fact, that is the righteous fear that you should have. Fear the Lord. Do not fear men who the worst that they can do is kill the body and then after that, nothing. But fear him who after he kills you can throw you body and soul into hell. We should fear the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to turn from evil, right? To turn away from it. I don't want any more. Shows you understand. It shows understanding. This is Proverbs 9, 10. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to be wise? Fear the Lord. Understand that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning. We don't stop there. The rest of the wisdom, read his word right here, the Bible. Okay? So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. And then we have uh, Job 28, 28, very clearly. And he said to man, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn from evil is understanding. We just had somebody else join us. Yeah, it was me. Uh, hey, Stetson. Hebrew Hammer should be able to talk in voice chat now. Oh, thanks. Welcome, Hebrew Hammer. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I yep. can. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to figure out. I was even let my wife have a turn with it. Uh, nah, see if we, I could figure out how to talk here. It was a permissions issue on, on Discord. I actually forgot that was a Yeah, we got to fix that on that at some point. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to inter interrupt what you're saying, uh, but I would like to find some Christians to play with, man. I've been playing this game for years, and uh, but but I'm I'm at the point now where I just don't want to play with just anyone. Or do you guys play pretty reg? Yeah, this is a we have a Christian server. Uh, it's called the Ark Christian Camp. It's uh, up twenty four seven. You are more than welcome to join us. Just search for ACC uh, on the um, on the unofficial servers. And you're more than welcome to join us. ACC. Okay. Yeah, makes it I'm, easy. I'm going to check that out in a bit, but uh, I'll let you guys get back to it. We could we could uh, get to know one another later if you have time. Anytime, man. You're welcome right now. We're just listening to the uh, Just Thinking podcast and uh, playing some ARC at the same time. And my name is Peter, by the way. Would it be okay if I asked your first name? Hey, Peter. Yeah, I'm Josh. Nice to meet you, Josh. We got I'm in Georgia. As well. Josh in Georgia, huh? Yeah, where are you guys at? Uh, I am in Idaho. Oh, Idaho. Okay. All right. Good deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that I would like to talk to you about as a Christian, especially a preaching one. So uh, uh, I'm sure we'd have a good time. I love ARC. I've been playing it for years. I'm just, I'm getting to the point where it's so toxic, though, uh, that I, I just felt like if I could go play with some Christians, I could actually enjoy the game again. Well, this is a this is definitely a Christian server, but we welcome everyone. We don't allow toxic players. It's PVE only, and so we do ask everybody to respect everybody uh, here. But everybody's welcome. Don't have to be a Christian to play on the server, but you do have to abide by um, the idea that uh, you know we play 
uh, non PVP. And and yeah, if, you, if you're misbehaving and I get wind of it, then then we do ask you to find a different place to play. So right, well that's understandable. Sure. Well, I've never played PVP. Definitely strict about it. Yeah. What did you Mario. say? That was Mario. Go ahead, Mario. Peter's definitely strict about it. So. <laughs> okay. We, have, we have a lot of kids. We have a lot of kids who play on the server, and we try to keep a safe environment. Yep. Yeah. And I'm right. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is this the person who was on YouTube who said they wanted to join? I believe. Yeah. So what I did was I typed in uh, "Christians playing Ark." <laughs> that's what nice. I, that's what. I, yeah. And so guilty that, is charged. How, guilty is charged. Yeah. 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 So that's how I found you. What religion are you? I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. What 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 type of church? What's the what's the what's the uh, marquee say at your church? Uh, non denominational would be the one. It's Kootenai Community Church. I can send you our uh, website here. Uh, okay, you guys speak in tongues? Uh, no. Okay. No, we uh, no, we speak no. we speak in English. So uh, okay. Right. Unless yeah, that's the only tongue, huh? Okay. Well, I know, I mean, a, language. Yeah, I mean, we can learn other <laughs> languages. I, I've spoken some uh, Portuguese and Spanish, and and other Do habla like espanol. <laughs> I do. I do habla a little espanol. Uh, but we we really focus on the Word of God. Uh, Pastor Jim Osmond is our preacher and just a faithful man of God. And if you want to hear some amazing uh, uh, ex, expository preaching, he is phenomenal. I just sent you a text message on this with um the link to our church website you're happy to check out our statement of faith and then all of our stuff is on our kootenai community church if you like youtube stuff i'll send you our youtube link as well so here it is how how, how have you sent me this information i'm not very savvy I'm, I'm a bit of an old man but i'm not so i'm not very savvy dude how old are you please come on dude don't be like that how old i'm 44. oh god you're so mean so mean What's that? You're so that? mean. That's what mean. are you? Are you older? Are you older? You think? No, I didn't think so. I saw you. I didn't think so. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm 51. I'm 50. Are you 51? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am. Oh, good, um, good, good, good. So, anyways, I just texted you on the. Uh, you're on an iPhone or a phone interface right now, so it's yes. probably not going to pop up very easy. Um, but if you look on there, I can send you direct messages. I sent you a friend request. And I sent you uh, a link to the YouTube channel. I can drop those in the, the YouTube chat as well. If I'm not. By the way, yeah. I'm just I'm just giving you a hard time when I said you're so mean. Uh, it's one of those things. That I I got a I got a sense of humor like that. So when I'm when I'm being funny like that, it's important. Well, no, um, I mean, I old folks are fine with me now. Uh, I just told folks. a pastor that I still converse with. <laughs> uh, I told him the other day I don't trust a man that's not two thousand years old. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> So yeah. I had somebody just drop, uh, they wanted me to uh, wish somebody uh, a uh, happy birthday, but that's pretty rude, because uh, I know what you're doing there, Mr. Uh, that's. So we're going to just uh, report that and drop you out of here. Unwanted, what would be the right word? What? Uh, yeah. It's unwanted to wish a happy birthday? No, it's the name. It's a way to get me to swear. Oh. So they, they do it. It's pretty common. Uh, so, no, I'm not Jewish. Somebody said I'm Jewish. I'm not Jewish. Uh, there we go. But I won't time them out, but I am reporting them because that kind of stuff well, we just don't need to have happen. Uh, let me ask you, you this. No. Let me ask you this. I know I know my answer, but I'd like to ask you what you say. Sure. Uh, can a man lose his salvation? No, sir. Okay. You can't, you can't lose something that you did not procure. So right. it was procured by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you can overcome God, then you could lose your salvation. But obviously you can't overcome God, so that's not going to happen. He literally says he holds you in the palm of his hand. So if uh, if you're being held in the palm of our Lord and Savior's hand, uh, you ain't jumping out. Uh, it it but, also says that he's never lost one. Amen, amen. And it is an amazing thing to know uh, that we cannot no matter even if we wanted to we even if we want to stray out of the herd yeah exactly because here's the deal if you could lose your salvation you would it's that simple uh, <laughs> that's so, right yeah yeah so uh somebody on our youtube by the way thank you for being on youtube we uh do simulcast on youtube uh facebook and twitch and so we appreciate our youtube 
uh, people here here. And uh, the YouTube question is, how can Jesus be God when Mary took care of him? You know, you just asked one of the most mind-blowing questions uh, that that as a as a follower of Jesus Christ just humbles us so that God would become a man. And in all of those all of those intricacies that we think of in being human, God became that. So how? Because he's God and he did. Um, but how did he did he lower himself to to join in his creation and and be cared for by Mary? Like, like you think about that, your mind just goes, Boom. but that doesn't make it any less true. So understand when we think about God, he is three persons, one God. And, and it's, it's not a theory, it's reality. And it's a reality that once you get your head around the, the fundamental fact that God is bigger than you can understand, <laughs> then, then it makes, it actually makes complete sense. When you when you fundamentally can't say this, God is like what you can't. There, there is nothing like God. There's no analogy you can make. There's no description you can you can come up with that somehow summarizes God is like. No, He is like nothing else in creation. He is a triune being. We can describe Him with words. But, but we cannot make any sort of analogy or a picture or anything that depicts who our God is. He is beyond our comprehension. There is no other triune being. We are triune, right? But God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three persons, but one God. Triune. I'm just it blows it it blows our mind when we actually get our head around it. And and once you're once you're honest, you should say, yeah, who who should God be? He should be somebody we can't comprehend. He's God. He is outside of this creation. Um, you're saying without going to hell. You didn't really summarize that. So three gods in one God. No, three persons. That's what I said. You gotta you gotta use the right words, the words that he gave us. So God is a person in Jesus Christ. God is a person in the Holy Spirit, and God is a person in the Father. Okay, so you have, they could have a conversation with each other. They can be in the same uh, area and, and speak one to another. Um, but but there's only one God. That's why it's beyond our, our ability to really comprehend. We can describe it. We can acknowledge that it's true, but but we cannot fully comprehend it. It's, it's beyond our ability. But that doesn't make it any less true. And it is, it is a fundamental thing to understand, and that is how we can have our sins paid for, because the debt that we owe, the penalty that we owe to the Father was paid for by the Son. So the Son became uh, a man, and that man died on the cross 2,000 years ago, and that, that death on the cross wasn't just a death. He actually paid for our sins on the cross. God the Father shows up and pours out his wrath on God the Son, the wrath that, that we owed, that we were supposed to take. And, and Jesus took it all on the cross in the course of three hours. And then right before he died, he said three very, very important uh, things. He said, it is finished. Those are the last three words he said before he died. And what he was saying is the debt is paid. The debt we owe the Father, the, the righteous judge. And that debt is being all paid on the cross 2,000 years ago by the Son is, is, is what makes it possible for us to have salvation. And it is an amazing truth that, that we have to share with the world, to share with you, that, that Jesus Christ was born, lived a perfect life, and then died a righteous death, and in dying paid for our sins. But then he proved he was God by coming back from the dead. And, and that's the hope that we have. We have our hope in a risen Savior. So I hope, Jay, that you'll be thoughtful of this. It is the good news that as Christians, we are, we are able to share with a dying world. We have good news while the rest of the world has bad news to share. And that good news is, is that if you repent, turn from your sins, and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you can be saved 
from the wrath to come. And that repentance and that um, that putting your faith in him is not anything you, you, you're doing. You're actually giving up you doing anything. You're giving up your works. You're saying, I can't do it. I'm going to trust in the Savior. And I would encourage you, uh, Jay, to be thoughtful about that because your eternal salvation depends upon it. It is the good news that, that we are tasked to share. And somebody shared this with me 11 years ago when I was young like Josh here and I repented and put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and I was saved from the wrath that I deserved. And so I would encourage you, if you have any questions about that, Josh or Jay, please uh, feel free to ask because it's that's why I'm here. This, this game is fun. It's interesting and everything, but it's not what's important. You are what's important. I'm here because I love you and I want you to know the truth. I know we never met. I know I'm just talking to a webcam, but I know there's a living, breathing uh, person on the other side who needs to hear this good news, and that is why I'm here. And I'm grateful to God that he brought you here, that you'd be able to hear this good news. But now you have to ask the question. Right? I have to ask you a question. What are you going to do with this good news? Are you going to hear it and just blow it off? Or are you going to hear it and go, that's the best thing I've ever heard. That I am going to trust in and be saved from the wrath that I deserve. Uh, Jay says, eh, I'm not really interested to converting to Christianity. So I understand. Um, and it's not about converting to Christianity. It's about being saved from the wrath that you have earned. I'm sure at some point in your life, Jay, you've lied. One lie makes you a liar. All liars will have their place in the lake of fire that burns uh, with fire and brimstone for forever. Uh, that's just for one lie. And how many have you done? Here's the question. What are you going to say when you stand before God on judgment day? You're going to die. Everybody does. Uh, government statistic, 10 out of 10 people die. It's one of the only ones you can trust. And when you stand before God, what are you going to say? How are you going to justify yourself? You're going to have to say, well, I know you even use this silly game and this YouTube channel to have a, a person who was one of your followers proclaim the gospel to me, and it's a free gift. I know all I had to do was accept it, but I said, eh, I'm not really interested. You'll be interested then, and it will be too late. So, Jay, I hope you will reconsider, and if you have any questions about this good news, I'm here to answer them. That's my job. Uh, like I said, the game's interesting. We do have this server for people to play on. We're happy for Josh to come join us as well, but ultimately, we're here because I love you, and I don't want to. I don't want to see you go to that place me. called Hill. Hey. Say what? What? Hello. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Uh, hope you know if that is something when you die. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't he said, you. "How do you know there's something when you die?" He's asking, oh. "How do you know this?" Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So. We know that um, there's a God. We know that we, we can look at the creation. So we know there's a creator. But but what happens when we die? Yeah, we have, to, we have to look at his word. We have to look at what he's told us. And God has given us his word. And we can read it. And we can know exactly what happens uh, when we die. Plus, he's given us a conscience. We know we're going to be held accountable uh, for what we've done. So everybody's going to give an account for everything they've said, everything they've done, everything they've even thought. Okay. The desires of our heart, we're going to have to give an account, uh, to the creator and we're all going to be found guilty or we're going to be found in the, in the savior and know that we can be saved from the wrath to come and they're gone. Well, hopefully that was helpful. I would like to point out that um, if there really was nothing after we die, A, um, us Christians, we would be, I don't know, um, it, would, uh, it would be terribly sad in a way, because, uh, I mean, wow, uh, all that hope for nothing, and the other thing, um, if there really was nothing, then nothing really matters. I could uh, go over to my neighbor, uh, strangle him, and huh, so what? Well, I think it's interesting, too, when you see these, these mass uh, murderers and then they kill themselves after, they think they're going to escape justice. And that's why, yep. they, that's why they do these horrible atrocities, and then they put a bullet in their brain thinking, oh, ha, 
I've, I've gotten away with it. No, you haven't. You haven't gotten away with anything. Our God is good, and he is perfect. And you, every single sin from, the, from Adam to the end of time will be 100% accounted for by our perfect God. He knows every grain of sand. He knows every hair that's on our head. For mine, it's pretty easy to count them. Uh, but every single person will give an account for what they've done, and they will be held accountable, and that's important. All right, we got a question from Jay. He says, one question. Just one, just one. How come Islam is alive? I saw your message and I was curious. How is Islam alive? I haven't read the Quran yet, but I read, I read it, I read it the Bible, and the Bible didn't make any sense to you. Well, just because the Bible doesn't make any sense to you doesn't mean that it's not the truth. And the way that you know every other Quran or the Book of Mormon or whatever they are, every other one is a lie, is because we have the truth. Okay, this is the truth. There's 66 books, Old and New Testament. It is the word of God and it is closed. So when you have the truth and Jesus said, I am the way and the truth, no one else comes to the father except through me. Think about that. He says, I am the way, I am the light, I am the truth. No one else comes to the father except through me. There's one way to the father, just one. And that's Jesus Christ. And, and this is the word of God delivered to us so that we may know what is, what is um, required of us, what is going to happen when we die, what's going to happen in the future, what there's going to be a new earth. Um, all of these things are in his word, and he's given this to us so that we would know for a fact what the truth is. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, if this is the truth, that means everything else is a lie. doesn't matter what it is. I don't need to read every other lie to know what the truth is. All I need to know is the truth. And then you know what is true, everything else is a lie. So, for example, if we know that gravity is the truth, I don't need to hear a speculation on how gravity um, is not real, right? I'm standing on the ground. Right, I'm not floating up into the air. So I don't need to sit there and evaluate all the other lies about gravity not being true because I know what the truth is. So then everything else that you might might bring up is it's a lie. I don't need to spend time reading it. I don't need to delve into it, Quran or otherwise. Why? I have the truth. If you have the truth, you don't you don't need to worry about the lies. And that's the beauty of having God's word in your hand. And you have it. Just look up on the web. Read the book of John. Um, I'll, I'll even give you a link to it. There's a great link. This one is um, actually uh, ad-free called the Legacy Standard Bible. And this is the book of John. And I would recommend starting there and, and find out for yourself. Now, you said you've read the Bible. And here's a reality. I have too. I've read the Bible cover to cover from Genesis to Revelation. I think I'm up to nine times now. I'm not sure, eight or nine times. My daughter, who's 13, has read it uh, six times. Pretty impressive for a young lady of six, or of, of um, 13 years old. So I would recommend, oh, I love that name, Gaming With My Family. That is the way we should game. We should game with our family. The fact that people abandon uh, their children to gaming environments without them is, is very wrong. Uh, this is an environment where they should definitely be here together with our kids. And so when we think about um, the book of John, that is where I'd recommend you start. And Jay, here's my recommendation to you. Pray to God before you start. Ask him for help understanding his word. Because here's the reality. We are so steeped in our sin, we do not understand how broken our brain is. You, you don't. You were born into sin. We need the work of the Holy Spirit to help fix our stinking thinking. And so I'd encourage you to be thoughtful about that. Uh, she is fast. I've read the New Testament and then Genesis and I'm in Exodus now, but I go slow, slow, want to soak in as much as I can. That's not a bad way to go, but uh, but read it cover to cover. There's great plans. We read the Bible cover to cover once a year. So we're going to take a minute right now. We're going to pray uh, for Jay. Asked good questions, was willing to listen to the gospel, and now it's between uh, them and God. So Almighty God in heaven, I'm grateful for the opportunity to proclaim this good news. Grateful for those you brought here to hear it. I pray for Jay. Uh, Lord, um, they don't know you. 
Uh, they said they've read your word, but they didn't understand it. So obviously, um, it is so evident that they need your help, as we all do. So I pray you would do that miracle, that you'd give them that gift of faith, that they might repent and put that faith and trust in your son and be saved from the wrath of uh, your wrath that they have earned, Lord. And I pray that you give them the gift also of the Holy Spirit, that they might read your word and know you, that they'll, they could know what their future holds, that when they stand before you, they won't be seen as a guilty sinner deserving hell. Uh, they'll actually be seen as the very righteousness of your son, Jesus Christ, and be welcomed into the, into the eternal, into the heaven, into the new earth, to spend eternity um, with other believers, a multitude beyond counting, praising such a good and awesome king for saving wretched sinners like us. So I pray for Jay, Lord, please do that work that only you can do. You know exactly where they're at. You know exactly why they're here. And I pray you would help them. And I ask all this in Jesus Christ's name, my King and Savior. Amen. Hey, Jay, my dude. Ask, you, yeah. Could, Go ahead. Could you, could, you tell, could you tell me how you got saved? Yeah, sure. So um, we were in, uh, my wife and I were in Seattle. This is the abridged version. We were the most wretched of sinners. I lived 40 years of my life chasing after the things of the world. I was um, very, very immoral and, and doing everything I could to show what a creature of damnation I was. And um, through the, the providential hand of God, we ended up in basically nowhere Montana. And my wife ended up um, getting pregnant. And we started asking the questions of, well, what are we going to teach our kids about who God is? And um, started looking at, you know, different religions and picked up the Bible, started in Genesis. Uh, we read it with the study Bible, Holman Christian study Bible, and read from Genesis to Revelation. Took us three years, but about uh, the time we got through um, the first four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we found a small uh, Christian church, uh, less than 100 people, I think there were at the time. Uh, in the middle of uh, Trout Creek, Montana, and somebody there who is a, he's actually the pastor now, his name's Cody, faithful brother, uh, he shared the gospel with me, and through reading God's word and the proclamation of the gospel, I realized that uh, this is the truth, and uh, it set me free, and I repented and put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and then my wife, short thereafter, a couple months later, she repented too, put her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And we were saved uh, from the wrath that, that we had earned. And then through his hand um, in our lives and, and through the work that we did, it became very clear that I'm an evangelist. I'm grateful for that. And although we were in the middle of nowhere, Montana, I started asking the question, what can we do uh, to proclaim the gospel to more people? And I wondered, you know, can we use these silly video games that I used to be addicted to? Can we use these to be able to uh, connect with people all over the world and share the gospel? And the short answer is yes. Yes, we can. And uh, here we are on YouTube and sharing the gospel with, with Muslims and with unbelievers and on Twitch and on Facebook. And it is an amazing reality of how uh, this technology can be redeemed to proclaim this good news to people basically like a virtual gospel track. Uh, to people all over the world. And so I'm very, very thankful um, that he saved me and saved my wife and has redeemed us so that we can serve in our church, even just emptying the trash, which we're grateful for, and removing snow, which is an amazing blessing as well, and most importantly, to be able to proclaim this good news to anybody who he brings here to listen. So that's the short abridged story. Uh, there's a longer explanation on our Twitch channel that you can check out, uh, twitch.tv slash missionarygamer. If you want to hear more about it, and I think it's on our missionarygamer.com website as well. So thanks for asking, Josh. I appreciate that. Yeah, and how many years ago was that? Did you say it was 11? 11 years ago. I'm 51 years old. See, God knows that I'm not the, the sharpest uh, knife in the drawer. Uh, so he saved me on about my 40th birthday. So it gives me easy math. So I just subtract 40 <laughs> from wherever I'm at. So, uh, well, I... I think it's great. I, I, I think it's great when children are born again. And, and I think it's great when thieves on the cross are born again. I mean, it's just at any point in a man's life, uh, I, I, you know, God, God's wiser than us all. And he, and he chooses times appropriately. And, uh, 
but yeah, I just wanted to find that out. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's I actually use uh, the thief on the cross as our uh, logo because it is an example of what what we do uh, to contribute to our salvation. Uh, the thief on the cross. What did he do? Did he go to church? Nope. Did he get baptized? Nope. Did he uh, become a student and study years and and you know do various works? Nope. What did he do? He died. He died. That's what he did. He died. But right before he died, he repented and put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And through that repentance and faith and trust in Christ, he was saved. And and that's the entirety of what we bring to our salvation is. Uh, we bring our sin. Jesus Christ takes that sin and he gives us his righteousness. It's the great exchange. But the thief on the cross is just a just a wonderful picture of, of what it takes to be saved. And the answer is nothing. It, it, you just accept that free gift. And you do like me and, and realize that you're a wretched sinner and you need salvation. And that free gift is the best thing you've ever heard. Or you behave, unfortunately, like Josh. And you deny that free gift and you spit in God's face and say, I don't need it. And then when you stand before him, you will be held accountable. But I'm sorry, I said Josh. My apologies. I meant Jay. Um, you do like Jay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Josh. Please forgive me. Um, too many Jay, too many Jay names catch me up. Like I said, early, not early. Not, some Josh has done yeah, that. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not like I said, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I just got a big mouth and God uses it to uh, proclaim the gospel. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, so as far as merch, we don't quite have this merch out yet, uh, but it is something we're working on. We prototype these hats and we have shirts too, but they're not quite yet, um, what we're hoping for. So yeah, we're, we're hoping to get there some days. However, if you are interested in, um, our ministry and learning more about it, we do have a Patreon and it's patreon.com slash missionary gamer. Here's the link. And this supports the ARC, uh, server that we run and our ministry. And it's something we've been, uh, Slowly growing over time. And as far as I know, and I'm saying this as far as I know, we are one of the only uh, ministries that is actually supported uh, by a church and under uh, the authority of that church as well. And that's Kootenai Community Church. And we are grateful for their support. And it is a humbling honor to be put on their ministry page with uh, other ministries. That It's one of those things when you see yourself next to, uh, to other missionaries like who have gone to, you know places all over the world it is very very humbling uh the, i do not deserve to be next to justin peters and yet there i am and i uh, it's one of those things that just it humbles you and so um you want to check out some other faithful ministries uh justin peters is amazing and then uh the uh, chris and debbie are there i think he does repairing of aircraft and then Marty and Jeanette Wendell. These are just, just faithful saints. And Gordy and Nancy Hunt. Gordy is actually on our, the Missionary Gamers um, Ministry Board of, of Directors, which I am just grateful for. That is a 40 years in South America uh, proclaiming the gospel, which is pretty, absolutely amazing. And so my son's here. What's up, son? I was just Okay, so you had some questions. Okay. No. Thank you for taking care of Rachel. Well done. All right, so Josh, you will... Sorry. go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, you first. I was just gonna say, Josh, thank you for understanding. I had Jay on there, and so saying Jay and Josh, and uh, the reality is that um, keeping everybody's name straight, I do my best. But thanks for understanding. What do you got, Mario? I was wondering, uh, do you think uh, you will eventually then also ship the stuff here? Uh, we'll have them on a merch store that they'll ship wherever they, they need to go. So Wonderful. Um, do you have a merch site? That's what I was saying, Gaming uh, with Family. We will eventually have it. Eventually, just not yet. Uh, it'll be on missionarygamer.com. We're just, I want it to be good, high-quality stuff. And the first hats we did, I, I, I wasn't very happy with them. And still kind of finessing the logo. So it's something something we're working on. Uh, the shirts, um, I want them to be like this, where you can read them easily on stream. And so it's something I'm thoughtful about. I want them to be articles of clothing that faithfully proclaim the gospel. And I got Nathaniel and Twitch faithfully dropping um, Matthew 28, 18 through 19. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore 
and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. And you gotta you gotta add twenty. You gotta add Matthew twenty eight twenty because that's that's the important part there as well as teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Um, Josh, were you able to find the server? Uh-oh, did we lose Josh? No, he's muted. Oh, okay. Jet Setson dropped off, though. Well, maybe I'll come back. All right, let's get back to Why Are You Afraid? A a biblically sound podcast from... um, Sorry, sorry, I was muted. I was muted. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Lima Charlie, you're loud and clear. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, no, I just got home from work, and uh, I haven't sat down yet to my game, but... um, what was the name of that? Real, I was looking for a pen, and I, I can't find one. What was the name again? It's easy. You just search for ACC. A as an alpha. ACC C as, on unofficial. Yep, ACC. It'll come up to ARC Christian Camp. And I got okay. ACC in there for ARC Christian Camp. Or you can search, yeah, gonna, mission, you can search uh, Missionary Gamer, too. Either of those will work, and it will uh, it'll pop up. So, okay. I, I got the title as um I can actually give you the full title if you like, but you don't need it. I I put ACC in there just so I can find it fast, um because the favorite thing wasn't working for a while. So, but it's working now, which I'm thankful for. All right. Um. Uh oh. You know, I just realized. I think I left yeah. all those eggs back there to hatch. Uh oh. I'm gonna run back and we're gonna start the uh, stream back up. I wanna read Daniel three verses fifteen through eighteen. Now, if you are ready. At the moment, this is King Nebuchadnezzar speaking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, if you are ready, at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image I have made very well. But if you do not worship, uh, you will immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. It is the what God is there who can do. He's got his he's got his mic muted again. No, uh, but uh, you are playing the updated version, right? Yes, this is the new release um, with the uh, UV5, which is visually absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So it is definitely okay. All that. In the so when I when I typed in the ACC, um, that I did not get you on unofficial. All I got was karma and chaos. Um, uh, let me let me give you the the exact name. Give it right off our. Oh, it should have brought it up though. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean this is. Is it password know. protected? No, sir. Okay. So this is the exact name. Um, can you? If I send you messages now, are you getting? I don't know how to get them. Um, okay. Yeah, if you read it out to me though, I'm, I can type it in now. Oh, you're in the YouTube channel though. Uh, I am, and I'm, and I'm also in Discord, which is what I'm currently looking at on my screen is the Discord chat. So that's the name of it, and that's it. It's Discord not... on the mobile, or yeah, you can search Missionary Gamer. You could search Christian. Um, those are two things, but ACC is the easiest way. Um, but it's definitely on unofficial. Got to be on unofficial. Yeah, no session town. That's interesting. Okay. I don't know. I mean, oh, I just... oh, oh, oh. I might have it set to PvP. I do. I have it set to PvP. That's why. See, I thought oh. you said you didn't play PvP. No, I didn't say that. You did. No, I just thought oh, I've ever okay. played PvE in my life. Oh, you don't play PvE. I've never I played it. No. All right. Well, it's uh, it's definitely a. It's just uh, it's the same thing as regular arc. You just don't kill each other. <laughs> hey, but isn't there isn't there the ability to war if you like if you want to fight? Isn't there that option or not? Uh, not really. We uh we don't we don't allow for uh, PVP. So okay, you it, do not allow PVP. There's no one in this server. It says. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm here. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. Did you see that I joined? 
Um, if you're here, I can come in. Well, I can come in. I gotta get back to base first. Though, my character. What are your steady? What do you mean? What am I saying? You mean the, the oh, rates? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the rate. Is, it's all about two times, and we we adjust a couple other things. We try to keep it fun and interesting, but it's not it's not a um, it's not a PvP environment where you want to you know try to get up fast and then and battle each other. It's more of a enjoy the mechanics of the game and uh, do the different no, I things. That... Enjoy it. Uh, I've never tried it. Uh, I'm certainly not enjoying the PvP life uh, because I'm, I'm typically always solo. Uh, I joined a tribe, got kicked. Um, uh, this is the story of my life. So, <laughs> yeah, I get kicked on a regular. Uh, and it's typically over. Okay, so for instance, the last the last uh, team I was with, I've known this guy for, let's say, I guess nine years I've been playing ARC uh, on and mainly off, but on and off. And I joined in with him, and I noticed that him and his brothers were always saying they were gods and and. and uh, PvP gods and elite and all this braggadocious talk and I was like, you know what, man? So I let them have it a little bit about it, right? And then they kicked me. <laughs> that was over with. I didn't get another chance. But uh, but so then I've I've always ended up solo just because I don't want to listen to the banter in a in a tribe. However, in a PvP world, it's impossible to play solo. It's just it's just about impossible. Period. Well, I, I don't even know how you can... This game has so many mechanics to it, so much going on. I don't know how you can play it for PvP. So, but what we do is um, you can start your own tribe, uh, uh -huh. or you can join join our tribe if you like. We hook you up with some gear if you want, or you can go out and get it yourself. We try to help people out. A lot of people we get are new to the game, and so it's just confusing. So if you, if you play it for a while, you know if you have a pick and an axe and some initial armor, you're in some food uh you're in a, you're in a pretty good shape to enjoy the game but that could be a hard hard uh start off if you don't have at least a little bit of uh help if you don't know what you're doing uh so i we have try to help new players out a level of experience yeah if you know what you're doing then then you can jump right in but if uh if you want any help let us know we've got we have a community chest that we allow people to uh come and pick up stuff or drop stuff off if they want we give them if they want some eggs or something we have eggs and we even have uh uber uh pts that we hand out and then what we do is this is our this is a redo of, of the server uh, we used to have one on the old arc but this what we do is uh get everybody geared up and then we start doing cave runs and then we start doing boss battles and uh, we invite people to join if they want to come into the boss battles and such and oh, cool. all, just have fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, that sounds cool. Uh, did you see me say hi in the chat? Uh, let's see. Yes, I did. Okay, there so I'm going to back out and I'm going to make a proper name then. Uh, I just wanted to make sure well, I, I can. I can rename your character. Oh, yeah, I, I'll do it in just a sec here. Oh. Uh, okay, is, is Hebrew Hammer acceptable or no? Uh, we try to go by first names because we'll talk to you in that way, and it's kind of hard to say Hebrew Hammer. Uh, but okay. if you don't mind doing Josh, that, that would be appreciated. I, I do not. Yeah. All right. That was a pretty good one. get uh, the updated version in the next couple of weeks? I hope I will uh, still oh, be. Oh, you're going to join us, Mario? Oh, yay! Shoot. I get it. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. Because I, I don't have the game. updated version yet. <laughs> yeah, well, we've had... Um, I've been so impressed by it. They have done such a good job with this game. It is it is awesome. Oh, I'm sure, but i got to be uh, conscious on uh, what money is spent on, you know? <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. It's on sale right now, if I remember correctly. Should be, okay. yeah. So Josh is sufficient, or do I need my last name? No, no, no. Just your first name. We don't need last names. Just, okay. just think about it from the standpoint of hi, how you doing? Nice to meet you, Josh. You know. So yeah, I don't know why I've been saying other surnames. Okay, you so probably know. Often. How do you switch from local channel to um, global channel? Okay, you just hold down the. Well, I'm on console, so I couldn't explain that to a person on the computer. But uh, on console, uh, one second. Let me. 
I mean, I know how to do it. I just don't know. Remember exactly. Maybe sl- uh, slash and then abbreviation. Oh yeah, he's on computer. I can't help. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, global chat. Pedo. You know. I'm looking. Sorry, sir. What? Uh, Maybe slash and then abbreviation. Maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know on computer. I like I'm completely clueless on that. I'm uh, I'm I'm just uh, thinking because uh, right. the. Uh, Slash turns you to tribe, apparently. So if it's not slash. No, but uh, slash and another abbreviation. Like, I don't know, G or no. W or I don't know. No. Okay, so for me, I hold select. I go to chat mode, hit my right trigger. <laughs> it's not, it's just not helping you, but then I can scroll to global, tribe, local, and align. I just want, I always want mine on global, and at some point it got switched, and I don't know how to get it back. Looking it up. Is it, is it just us three talking right now? Uh, in the, in the Discord, yeah. Okay. There'll be more on, uh, later on in the day, when people start getting into more. I didn't enjoy this because you know you guys are able to build some pretty. I'm, I'm at someone's uh, abode here. Oh, there's a dude standing here. Uh, zombie, Josh. Yeah. Is my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you so mind? Do you mind being a dude? Because that's just awkward. Um, oh, am I a chick? Well, I'm. You know, you know why I'm a chick, right? Well, it's because they have smaller frames in the game, so they're a harder hit target. Yeah, you're not going to have to worry about any of that. Right, right, right. No, but that's just why I had it set to that. Hold on one second. Um, how do I switch? According to this wiki, uh, uh, you could go uh, simply just uh, enter, oh. and then you would be in global. No, I'm in tribe for some reason. Um, enter, enter. Hey, so, so what's what's my select for you, reckon? I'm sorry, what, what? Yeah, what? My, for me, it's hold select. What is it for you? What is what would select be for you? Like if you're not, like if you're on computer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, there's a couple of different options for me, um, but I use a controller too. Yeah. So. Is, is it okay if I'm black or do I need to be no, white? No, any color you want. I just hopefully you're. Okay. We have kids and stuff play, so if they're talking to Josh, the and, shit, yeah. that's confusing. So thank you. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Um. Let's see here. Slash will bring up enter escape. Escape forces the box closed. Oh bother. Somehow Ooh, I get into tribe mode. It says escape. Escape. That's not what I want. Somehow I'm stuck on try. I just want to be on floor. What happens if you, if you press enter twice? That just opens and closes it. Oh. Uh, let's see, I'll try searching. Oh, idea. Enter, press enter. Okay. And then uh, uh, go uh, tabulator. Next. It said tab underneath it. Okay. It All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> I think I want to change our tribe name to just MG Tribe. Manager. And to Josh? Yes, sir. Um. I know I'm not on the server, but uh, I would advise you to uh, play as the sex that you are. Right, yeah, that we were discussing that, right, yeah. Thanks, appreciate that. Appreciate the understanding. There we go. Alright, that's a little easier to read. Alright, now, where were we? Let me get my chat back up so I can see if I missed any messages. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you guys trying to help me out. And um, let's be about getting. Yep, all my guys are. Here. I had like, I had so many eggs here, it was crazy. I was trying to hatch, hatch another egg. Yeah, thanks, Mario. I really appreciate it. They're all gone. Oh well. Uh, let's see. These guys. These guys over here. And, uh, I guess my bird's getting all 
take a look. Now, how do I watch you play again? Is that that was on YouTube? Yeah. You can watch YouTube or Twitch. Um, I Twitch, but uh, I did try to sign into it. If you weren't hearing my my comments. Uh, yeah, I saw you on the YouTube one's not directly integrated, so I gotta make sure I bring it up. I appreciate that. We just added um, YouTube uh, streaming just a little bit ago. I'm gonna leave a uh, PT here for you that you're uh, you're more than welcome to uh, take. I'm gonna unclaim it so you can um, grab a PT because if you have a PT, you can get around a little easier. I found that PTs get you dead if you're not careful about it. Though. <laughs> Where are you then? Or where, where, I, I forgot where I spawned. Was that more? Uh, it's the it's the one in the middle, basically. Is that West Two or? Uh, I'm not sure right off the top of my head. Okay, okay. Didn't this game have a uh, a map? It does. It does. Let's grab this guy right here. You're only at a spawn though. Yeah, we're at one of the main spawn points. It's the uh, one to the east, I think. Is what call it. Can I get out of here? Alright, let's see. Why don't you just follow me on this? So how many kids have you got? I have got three with us here and one already in heaven. Oh. I walked you in there. You should be able to walk in. Are you are you close to the red orb? Yes. Yeah, we're right by the red orb. Okay, because I do see a building over there. Oh, I'm being. What am I? Okay, got it. I can't wait for cryoplasts to come back, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I know those are useful. Well, you get, you get your animals stuck. Well, you, stuff up to, stuff like you might be able to, when you get them stuck, oftentimes you can whistle them to a location, and that, that usually fixes it. That's what I tried doing, but it wasn't very happy about that idea. Alright, uh, don't follow. Yeah, we put uh, eggs and all kinds of stuff in the community chest if you want anything. Oh, wow, thank you. All right. Yeah, go check out the community chest. There's armor and um, all kinds of stuff. Okay, put back the cemetery pages. Anything besides the nice graphic overhaul that you enjoy? Um, they redid all the menus, so everything um, that you interact with is now updated. They redid the um, the mechanics of a lot of the way things worked and fixed a lot of bugs that I'm grateful for. Um, it's just, it's a well-polished current game. And so the, the overall... Um, the overall um, game that was always there is still here. It's very deep, and you've got the um, you've got the interactions that I appreciated, and the various levels of um, you know skill trees and stuff like that. What is this? Have you checked out the mods? Yeah, that was one of the things we just shut off. We were running the um, the mods for um, the turkey trials. And it was crashing the server, so we had to take it off. It Interesting. Kind of no, I like um, Solo Farmer or um, the AA Workbench. Have you tried yeah. any of those? No, we took we, we we shy away from doing the mods just because of the instability they cause. The game's got its own issues as it's on, on right now, 
And so the mods tend to be more controversial than helpful. And so we do the ones that are uh, official, at least we, we normally do. But then uh, this recent test really kind of blew up in our face because the server was down for a day. And it turns out it was the turkey trial mod, which I was a little bummed out about. So yeah. Uh -huh. The mods are slick. I've, I've I've played plenty of officials with the with those mods, and they're nice, man. Like like the Indie Forge, they have tiny ones. Oh, you probably know all this, but they've yeah. got like uh, the the solo farmer is excellent because like you you're 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 at your Anki can can just hit 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 while you're carrying it with the RG, you know. Yep. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. We keep it pretty vanilla because we try to be open for as many people as we can uh, but we do we'll, we'll run the official events and stuff but i think they're still working a lot of bugs out because uh we shouldn't be crashing on the, are you doing three mods. times on the weekend or or just straight up two times we're we're i've got in the um if you want to see all the settings we publish them in the discord under okay. the arc and there is a uh, sub channel uh, for settings, and I'll send you a um, a link to that. Let's see. Let's see. What 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 is your aversion with the uh, PvP mode? What, how come you never chose that? Just wondering. Okay, so understand that for me, this is a, a ministry, and it's uh -huh. part of our our endeavor to proclaim the gospel uh, using gaming, yeah. and also to disciple. And that's kind of hard, kind of hard to share the gospel with players when you're when you've killed them. So that's when you dead them. Yeah. So that's been the primary reason. Uh, it's a testimony to us as well when we do play PvP games, uh, and I do. I play uh, DayZ, for example, and Fortnite, but we play them without without killing anybody, and it tends to spark a whole bunch of interesting conversations with people when they're like, "How do you play these games and, and not?" Go about, um, you know, being toxic or um, getting into the whole hoopla of the PvP, and that then brings us around to the gospel and talking to people about why we're here and that we want to bless people and not necessarily kill the virtual characters. We want to proclaim the gospel to their real characters, and that's been it's been really interesting to see the type of conversations that develop from that. I've actually, funny enough, I've won uh, the game of uh, Fortnite. I've won the battle royales without without ever terminating a, a player you get a you get a achievement it's called pacifist <laughs> nice that's awesome yeah i've never heard of that i have i have done exactly what you're saying it's been years ago on fortnite that i won uh without getting a kill so i probably have that uh the guy actually killed himself at the end uh yeah. he went out of the storm on accident with a uh he was some sort of character. I, I can't remember what you could turn into, but basically you could turn into some character. And he had that, and it was very overpowered, but he accidentally threw himself out, out into the storm, and I won. I couldn't even believe it. I'm sure I recorded it. Oh, you live stream too? Uh, no, I just mean for my own personal on the Xbox. You can, you can capture uh, videos and things. Gotcha. Please be advised, uh, if you ever stream, let other people know. No, oh, no, I've never streamed, uh, never gotten into that. It's a thing, but we do it primarily for the opportunity to interact with more people. Like I was sharing the gospel with Jay earlier and uh, the people who uh, we've met through YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that, they come in thinking that they're gonna be seeing a game and instead they end up hearing the gospel hopeful that we will see them in the age to come because as Nathaniel just did we love proclaiming the gospel because gospel means good news the bad news is we've all sinned and deserve the wrath to come but Jesus the Messiah died for our sins was buried and then raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and right now is seated at the father's right hand Jesus said I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It is the best 
news ever. And that's really why we're here. The game's fun and interesting, but we're really here to talk about your eternal destiny. So if you have any questions, like uh, Jay did earlier, uh, let us know. We're happy to talk to you about what you might be wondering. Jay's question was legitimate. Why Why is uh, the Quran not true? And the reality is, uh, as you have these questions, we're happy to talk about them. It is, uh, it's a wonderful thing to know that we have the truth to share. And you can know for a, a, a solid 100% surety where you're going when you die. And we have the truth to offer to that point. And we are the only ones who have the truth to offer that. Christians are it. Anybody else, if you ever dig into it and you ever really question them and ask them, what can I do to be saved? They're going to answer with, well, maybe and possibly and you can hope possibly that it might do no no we need we we don't have a maybe god we have a 100 percent certain god and he has made promises and if you've ever heard the statement that uh that god can do anything that's a lie there are things that god cannot do and it's a good thing that he can't do those things for example he can't duplicate himself there's only one god he can't make another one and the other thing is, he cannot lie, which means he can't break his promises. So when God says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's a promise from living God. So if you, if you admit that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You basically repent, turn from your evil, and put your faith and trust in his son that he he lived that perfect life. He died on that cross for you, paying for your sins. He was buried and he came back from the dead. Right now, seated at the Father's right hand. You you put your faith and trust in that, and you have 100% assurance that you will be saved. That on the day that you die, you'll be welcomed into heaven as the son of the living God. Because when he looks at you, he's not going to see a guilty sinner deserving hell and wrath. Because that man died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Instead, he looks at you and he sees the very righteousness of his son. Because it's a gift. He gives it to you and it's free. You can't earn it. And it shows off God's grace and mercy. Any other religion, they want to show off God as a corrupt judge. That he says, don't do these things, but ah, uh, since you uh, martyred yourself or since you prayed 20 Hail Marys or since you did some sort of work, you can bribe me. And I'm just going to look the other way and let you into heaven, even though I kind of said I wouldn't do that. That's a bad judge. That's a corrupt judge. That's not the judge of the universe. The judge of the universe said what he said. He means it, and he backs it up 100%. And so you can know for a fact where you're going when you die. And if you don't know his son, then you can actually know for a fact 100% that you are going to hell. It's your only two options. Well yeah, I realize you guys are very. I realize you got you guys are very um, uh, gospel oriented. Do you, do you also talk about theology at times or not? Oh, we love talking about theology. Love it, love it. So any chance we can get into that, we love talking about that as well. Um, I am not a. Um, just to be clear, I'm I'm an evangelist, so I'm I'm not a theologian. I'm not a scribe. I'm not one of those people who uh, has sort of a deep eschatology talks and stuff like that. But if it's in scripture, then I want to talk about it. Everyone's a theologian. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point, Mario. Yes. I love love talking about scripture. Uh, enjoy it very much. But sometimes the answers I have is, I don't know, but I know where to go to get it. And that's in the word of God. Quicker. <sighs> that, is, that is very odd. I got to... I got a fish literally just sticking out of the... Okay, there you go. <laughs> well, I think I think we ought to maybe... I've got some crazy questions. Maybe we ought to let our... Like, crazy questions? Yeah. Go with your crazy yeah. questions. Let's hear one. What do you got? Oh, you want to hear one? Give me a crazy okay. question. Go right ahead. What, 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 would, what would the letter to your church in Revelation sound like? Pardon me? Uh, okay, yeah, so that's, there's... That's not a... If you answer me like a, a biblical question, like I can go there, but I, I can't. I guess, like, I guess what I'm saying is, I guess what I'm saying is, there's there's seven churches in Revelations. 
Mm-hmm. Which one are you? Which one is your church? Um, because I, I reckon, know. I reckon that those churches are going to be, and always were going to be, the examples for all churches that might exist. Do you agree with that, or? Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily ascribe to that because they're examples of what not to do. Um, every single one of them, uh, he brings up um, that which he's not happy about with them. No, uh, sir. He, even the one where he says, uh, you, you know, not all you, of them. Which one? Which one doesn't he say about all of them? Uh, there's that he's two. Got a problem with them? There's two. There's two that are not. that are not chastised for anything. Really? Which ones are those? I don't remember. Maybe Laodiceans. I don't remember. I think they were bad. But, no, 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 uh, no. La- Laodicea is the very bad one. <laughs> yeah, I think they were the bad ones. I think they were the bad ones. But the, no, there's two that are not. If you check on that, but. Let me um, look okay, it up. so we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about that here. one later then. Yeah, if you if you want to tell us the churches, uh, we're happy to look them up. If you got, I love questions that um, actually have. Um, have you ever reference have back you ever got a good salvation? We all do. Yeah, of course I have. Um, but that's the good news is even though we doubt, that doesn't change our salvation. And so tell me when, about how long did that last? Um. I don't even know. I, I could I assume I did at some point. Um, oh, you don't remember it? Not really. I'm just assu- I'm. We are as Christians. We are capable of any number of, of failures on our behalf, and I just assume I've done them all. I've lied um, being a Christian, and I'm I'm I was ashamed of that. I couldn't believe it came out of my mouth when I did it, and I've I've, I've gotten angry, and I've and I've even. Um, um, had those moments where I've, I've looked back and I'm like, I cannot believe I behaved like that. But that's the reality is uh, I'm still stuck in this sinful flesh. So I'm, I'm very thoughtful of that. And I and I do not in any way, shape, or form uh, raise myself up saying I'm perfect because I ain't. So. Same here. Same yeah. here. See, I, I like it. If you want to go, uh, if you want to go fun, fun questions, just like uh, sanctified speculation questions. I like this one. Um, what do you think about Adam and Eve? Are they going to be in heaven, or, or are they in hell? Adam and Eve are in heaven. Interesting. Okay, what's your what's your biblical foundation? For? Only that 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 Adam walked with God. Well, that was that was before before they fell, right? Well, yes, yes, but there was no indicators with the judgment that they had that they had walked that they had fallen from that walk that they had fallen from from that grace. Uh, they, in 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 my opinion, uh, Adam was probably a far better man than I. Uh, I would have. I would say that Eve was was probably even better than my wife. Uh, I I just think that that um, that they did the thing that they were not supposed to do, which we all do, as you pointed out. Um, the if 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 the Lord was known at that point, like the coming of the Lord was known at that point, I reckon they would look forward to look looked forward to that. But but I don't think that was even necessary for Adam and Eve because they walked in person with God. Um, so I think they were his and they were, they were required to do the one thing to, to resist the one thing. And, and they failed in that and, and they received to them the, the, uh, the, um, the, the death and the, the hard work, the sweat of the brow, all that. Uh, but all men have this. And I reckon that that Adam uh, was God's from the beginning. I don't think a lot of people can obviously say that unless you're sort of a pre, what's the word, predestination sort of guy. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely predestination, but I, but as I get older, I lean toward that more often than not. Like uh, my mind has changed on that some, um, just only because of how bad I am. In other words. I, I just with predestination it it nothing de- is dependent upon me yep. um, and without predestination um, you're responsible then, for something yep. 
I am responsible for some of it, uh, at least the choice of it. But I don't, I don't reckon that that I'm able to make good choices because I'm bad. Um, so the more I learn of how destitute I was and still am, save for the uh, my salvation in, in Christ, my, my faith in Christ, and that I have chosen Him as Lord. He is mine, and I'm His. But uh, but 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 how? But how? So I, you know, I come back to, I'm starting to lean toward. Um, he did it all. He did. Amen to that. Yeah. From Nothing from the foundation of the earth. Only two fi cross cycling. Exactly. Well said, Mario. Well, what I'm. What do you I'm say a... about predestination? Oh, I mean, it's obvious. That's what God says. He says our names were written in the book of life before creation even began. So if he wrote our names in the book, uh, and it was before everything began, then uh, and nothing surprises God. He doesn't learn anything. Uh, he knew exactly what was going to happen when he set everything in motion. Uh, it's been a plan A since the beginning. And so in that, in his divine sovereignty, I am at ease because I am assured that uh, that my name is in that book and was written in the book. Um, and. And I am saved because of his, his finished work. I have played no part other than to accept what he had already uh, designated as being uh, reality. And I'm just catching up to his sovereign will. But as far as Adam and Eve, I, I do want to uh, back that up that um, from my perspective, scripturally, um, if anyone is in hell, uh, you can be assured that Adam is. And because from him, all sin, all death, all cancer, all murder, what did all you just rape, say? everything what, hold came on, from what Adam. What did you just say? Did you hold on? Did you just say Adam's in hell? Oh yeah, yeah, Adam and Eve both. So the reality is that from him everything came. All evil is in the world because of Adam's sin. So in Adam, all man fell, and so for him. Uh, as uh, as he is depicted in scripture clearly there was never any note of repentance never any note of um, him coming to God and, and asking for forgiveness never any note in any of the scriptural aspects in the New Testament as well it talks about the heroes of the faith as he ever noted other than to be the first Adam who failed and he is juxtaposed against the second Adam that is Christ so he is the argument of the lesser to the argument of the greater, which is Christ. So in Adam, okay. all men fell, and in okay. Christ, yeah, let me all ask man you is this. restored. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this though: um, Did you come up? Did you come to that conclusion on your own? Yeah, from Scripture. Okay, so no man ever said that to you. No, I talked to my pastor about it. I, I wanted to understand if what I thought was true, and he agreed completely. Um, it is something when we look at Scripture. There is no record ever of Adam repenting, none. In fact, when God challenges him, he blames Eve. And when he challenges Eve, Eve blames the serpent. Um, so when you look at scripture, that's what we have to go with, is the word of God. There is no evidence at all that Adam was ever redeemed, ever. And, and it makes sense because if everything started with him, how could anybody be in hell uh, if Adam himself wasn't? Uh, because of his defiance and rebellion against God. It literally started with him. He's our federal head. He was in charge. He was the man who had the authority. And because of his uh, rebellion against God, all of mankind is, is in sin uh, against its creator. And so he is literally responsible for, for everything. Uh, and it's it's a horrifying well, reality. I know, but what, but it's I think terrible. what I think what I think what you're ignoring though is that is that if you would have been in the same situation, you would have done the same thing. Oh, I agree completely. Yeah, but no, how can you all. ignore that? In other words, in other words, not. well, hold on, hold on. So, so what I'm saying to you is is that if if Adam was going to go to hell from the very beginning, then then Adam never belonged to God. I I, I don't. I see. For me, for me, Adam belonged to God, um, and he, when he, when he did what he did, he did separate himself from God. But uh, we're all separated from God because of sin, except through Christ. And, and oh, I believe. agree. 
He had, and believed they had everything they needed to be saved. They did. God gave them in Genesis 3 uh, the reality of what's going to happen. There would be um, from, from the seed of Eve. Um, there would be the, the opportunity for uh, the Savior, not the opportunity, there would be the Savior. And they could have repented and, and put their faith and trust in that truth, but they didn't. There's no record of it, um, and they will, not, they will not be there. Now, this is, this is the good news about sanctified speculation. It's, this is not a primary uh, issue. This is not even a secondary or a tertiary issue. This is just sanctified speculation. We're just talking about... Um, that which we look at God's word and make as a judgment from it. And if you think about Adam and Eve, if they were to be in heaven, it would be the redemption story that would bring glory to God because it would it would be yet another example of someone, someone who deserved hell, who God, through his work uh, on the cross and their repentance, putting their faith and trust in that work, would be saved. And there's countless examples of that. And yet, if you look to, for example, Saul and David as another example. Saul and David were both sinners. David, you could make the argument, was a bigger, more prolific sinner than Saul in the horrible things that David did. And yet, David is described as a man after God's own heart. Why? Because when both of those men were challenged with their sin, Saul, like Adam, had nothing but excuses always had a reason why he had uh, done that which was sinful before the Lord. However, when David was was challenged with his uh, rebuke with his sin, what did he do? Against the Lord alone have I sinned. And he immediately repented. And that's, that is a fundamental important part about our salvation is, is repentance. We have to repent of our sin. We have to turn from it and we put our faith and trust in God, not in ourselves, not in our own works, not in our excuses, but in the finished work of Christ on the cross. And of course, David was looking forward. We look back. Um, but it's it's a very important thing to understand that a man after God's own heart admits immediately, I have sinned against you. And there's no record of that with Adam or Eve. Uh, in fact, it's the exact opposite. They had excuses. Well, I've, the woman I've, you gave me. Adam tried to impugn God. The woman you gave me. I mean that's just that's just classic. Blame the woman. Wait, hold you know? on a second. Hold on a second. Or do you Man, think that Adam? Do you think that Adam did not uh, assess the matter correctly? Which matter are you talking about? Sorry. The, the, the matter of the matter of the temptation and and the way oh, that he knew, ex he knew exactly what he was doing. Totally. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. The, yeah. Hold but, on. Mar but, Mario would like so, to say something. Why? Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, hold on. Mar Mario's been very why? faithful in listening. So Mario, go ahead. What do you, What would you like to add? I, I just wanted to say, um, I uh, don't want to argue with you or something, but I could imagine uh, that both of them are saved because A, um, God killed uh, two animals to cover their shame, so to speak. I see this as some sort of um, bloody sacrifice uh, foreshadowing Christ. Anyway. I agree yeah, I like that. And... I know uh, we don't read everything in the Bible, because, uh, I mean, what uh, did Adam and Eve do for the next... How many years? Because uh, we don't even know how long they were in the garden. So, um... I've heard, I've heard some uh, people say, uh, what if they uh, had been uh, there uh, just a few days or uh, just a few years and so on and so forth. Adam and Eve, uh, or let's say uh, Adam, because uh, with Eve uh, we don't know, but uh, Adam lived for more than 900 more years after this whole thing, and then he died. So, hey, hey Mario, was, uh, Mario, that's a great point, and I want to interrupt you because we have somebody in the chat in Harlem asking a great question. Their question is, what's a Christian? That is a phenomenal question. I love that question. I'm going to give you my answer first, but then I'm going to back it up with John MacArthur's answer, because obviously it's John MacArthur and he just trumped me big time. But my, I would always say it like this. A Christian is a follower of Jesus Christ. Full stop. That's a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. John MacArthur went up me on it. And John MacArthur said, a Christian is somebody indwelt by the spirit of the living God. 
Someone who is actually indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That's a Christian. Which, you can't argue with John. But, it's still right to say a Christian is a follower of Jesus Christ. So that's a that's a great, great question, Harlem. It is amazing how many people I ask that question to, and they can't answer it. They proclaim to be a Christian, and you say, great, what makes a Christian a Christian? And they're like, uh, I go to church. And it's like, sorry, uh, that's not what makes a Christian a Christian. I believe there's a God. Nope, that's not what makes a Christian a Christian. Fundamentally, a Christian is from Christ. That's why it's Christian. Like you're an American, you're from America. If you're a Canadian, you're from Canada. If you're a German, you're from Germany. That no, doesn't work. So, but the point is, if you're a Christian, you're from Christ. Jesus Christ, that Christ means Messiah. It's not his last name. It's Jesus Christ. Being a Christian is being of the Messiah. You are you are making very clear that you are 100% his follower. You, you believe in him and in him alone. A, a Christian has to name the name of Jesus Christ. And if they don't, then uh, then they need to check their salvation. A lot of times they just haven't thought it all the way out. There's that aspect as well. But I like John MacArthur too. He makes it very clear. A Christian is somebody who's indwelt by the very spirit of the living God. Because that's what happens when you repent of your sins. You put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit seals you. You're indwelt by the very spirit of God. You're made a new creation in Christ. And it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. To be brought from death to life, to know that um, you have you have a helper who helps uh, fix your stinking thinking, and that through His Word uh, you can then correctly understand uh, the wisdom of God and, and apply it to your life. So, uh, Harlem Z, that's a that's a great question. Really, really appreciate you answering that. And Mario, thank you for being understanding as I I addressed um, Harlem's uh, question. And Harlem, it goes back to the gospel. And I just dropped that in there. And I even have a visual aid in art uh, for the gospel. So we're going to run over to the visual aid right here. One second. Wait for it. It's, it it'll be worth it. You know, something on the screen. Everybody always likes the eye candy. Wait for it. Just going to run over. I need to move this thing a little closer. Hold on. We're almost there. Hopefully I don't get tired out going over there. Bring some water on the way. All right. Here we go. Bam. All right. Gospel means good news. The bad news is we've all sinned and deserve the wrath to come. It's not just bad news. It's like the worst news. The worst news ever. You can't get any worse than deserving the wrath of God. But there's good news. And the good news is, is that Jesus, the Messiah, died for our sins, was buried, and then raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and right now is seated at the Father's right hand. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And that's what a Christian is. A Christian is somebody who has repented. They've turned from their sins. They've forsaken them. They don't want him anymore. And they put their faith and trust in this good news that I just shared with you. Thank you, uh, Harlan, for asking that. That was a, a great question. Okay, now I did uh, cut off. Um, Mario, did you want to finish uh, your thoughts on that, Mario? I just uh, wanted to say uh, that uh, I would say, uh, li like I said there, uh, with the uh, animals that uh, God killed uh, to cover the shame, uh, that this was uh, something foreshadowed in Christ. And agree. I agree with you there. It was definitely a foreshadow of Christ. You're exactly right. Well, we don't know uh, what all transpired in all this um, rest of the time that Adam and Eve uh, still lived. So I would say yes, for sure. Uh, death and uh, all the nastiness uh, came into creation through their sin. But um, they were promised the, uh, this uh, the, 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 the seed will make the, uh, the atonement, uh, uh, it will make all things nice again, for the lack of better um, phrasing. So, if Abraham got some promise from God, and he believed God, even though he was a sinner, and 
got saved by trusting God there. Why isn't that they could have gotten saved after well, God? So gave just them for record, heart? just for record, you said you changed the scenario a little bit. You say, why couldn't they have? I never said they couldn't have. I I, I agree completely, hundred percent. If they had have repented and put their faith and trust in God, in that promise that He made very clearly through the seed of Eve, if they had have done that, totally, totally they would have been saved. My my point is based upon Scripture, they didn't. Um, and, yeah, yeah, but like but like Mario said, it was done for them. The same, the same. The, in my opinion, it, it's the same as 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 that's been done. That's been done for us. The, the sacrifice was made. The predestination, the predestination was determined before the foundation of the earth. So all of this was done for them. Uh, with you know, I, I don't think that they were unconsenting with for for the sacrifices. I reckon they probably were were appreciative of this because they were in hiding uh, because they knew that their sins uh, were upon them. So they were in hiding from God. And and I think that what happened. Uh, as a result of this, that they were able to continue to walk with God. I've never, I've never even considered the matter. I never thought that that Adam, I've never had a man say this to me that that Adam was in hell. And it's just uh, like I said, it's, it's sanctified speculation. It's yeah, funny because yeah, we, I've, really, I've, I've, we really, we really have. have an, uh, if I could just finish, reaction. what I was saying was is just that I, um, I never came to that conclusion on my own. You know, uh, I, I've never thought that that Adam was in hell. In fact. I, I think that Adam's better than me and that he'll have a great spot in heaven above me. <laughs> so uh, now, and I also think that Adam nailed it when, when he laid down what happened. God didn't rebuke him for what he said. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can say that he might have, but it's not written. Uh, he, what he said was, is that the woman that you gave me brought it to me. He was correct in that. I don't think I think it's a little bit presumptuous to assume that that meant that he had a bad heart in the matter. I think that all he said was the woman that you gave me brought it to me, and so I was tempted. But God did. Uh, Adam did it knowingly, but Eve did it unknowingly, and that is why Eve took a lower position in the in the marriage afterwards uh, because of that, because she was easily fooled, and Adam was not fooled. So uh, being fooled is a is a tricky thing. Uh, that and that's why women are not, not allowed to even ask questions in church because they're more easily fooled than men. So I don't I don't think Adam was trying to point blame necessarily on anyone. I, what I think is that uh, is that Adam was just stating what happened. The woman that he had and that was his woman, his, his flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, came to him with with this thing and said, "Let's eat." And so he did eat, but he knew what he was doing was wrong. Whereas. He was tricked and, and, and did not know. Well, it, it, I, is, uh, it is interesting to me that as I've asked this question uh, to believers, it is something that people have a very hard time with. And I did, I did too, just for record. And I can't really put my finger on why. It's just sad. That's, the, that's I think, fundamentally one of the biggest aspects about it. It's just a sad, sad tale because here's, here's God's crowning achievement his crowning creation man he puts man and woman on the earth he gives them everything they have no wants every want need and desire they have fulfilled and what do they do they rebel and it's just a sad story yeah i know but you and i would have done the same yes oh i agree completely yeah doesn't make any less sad just sad story. and i would say uh, that uh at least from my reading i see adam Blaming God in some way there. It was oh. the woman you gave me. Yeah. Oh, um. Or blamed him. Yeah. Instead of taking uh, responsibility for it, instead of repenting, right then and there and saying, "Oh Lord, you're right. I have, I have done a terrible thing. Please forgive me." Instead, what does he do? He impugns the character of God, and and that's fundamentally. What do you, um, I don't know. What do you mean? Huh? He impugns the character. Mean? The woman you gave me, he blames God for his actions. Like somehow it was God's fault for giving him this woman. I, I don't read it that way. Okay. I, I never have. Uh, I could I, maybe I could be tempted to, but the way the way I read it is just God says, "What have you done?" Right. So and then he lays out what's happened. He, he gives him the whole the whole story. 
He's saying the woman that you gave me, I guess she was probably pretty fresh to the scene. And and he says the woman that you gave me has brought me. I don't I don't think God I don't think that Adam was being a dog there. I think that Adam was just telling the story as it happened. And I don't think that he was that he was blaming God. Uh, I, if if I thought that, I don't think he would have ran from God uh, because that would have been a he would have been a, a proud sort. Uh, I, I think it's more I think it's more that uh, he was just telling the story of what happened. And it, we can read into that and say, well, when you say, you know, it's the woman you gave me, you know, it's all your fault. Well, he didn't say that. Um, so we have to read into that, you know, but I've never read that. I've never read into that like that. I've never heard that until just now. I would okay. never, I, I'll never be changed on that. I don't think Adam's going to hell. Okay. Well, that's why I say it's, it's an interesting sanctified speculation story. Doesn't affect our salvation. It's not a primary issue. It's just something to, to sort of uh, talk about and look at Scripture and say, okay, what does Scripture say, and and how how do we read uh, what Scripture does say and what Scripture doesn't say? And I have it's, another it's, crazy. It's just one that's fun. I have uh, another crazy question. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what what do you think about? The Christian and American flag that are that are in churches. What do you think about those? You, that's. Um, do you mean? Do I think it's a good thing that they have flags in churches? Or do I think it's a bad thing? Or what? Do you, what's your question? Well, yeah. I mean, do, do you think it's do you think it's a good thing? Um, I don't think flags have any place in the church, personally. But there's no. Have you, there's no. Have you, uh, I mean, have you? In other words. Like before now, have you considered it? Like I've never considered it was Adam in hell, but have you ever considered it? Is it okay for a for a flag? Well, yeah, no, we've we've had those conversations. We don't we don't have a flag, for example, in our church. There's no flag. There's no or, no ornamentation. They don't even allow uh, lights, which I think is is a good thing because that can get out of hand as well. But ultimately, our our gaze and our focus should be pointed to. Uh, our Lord and Savior, our King, and, and Him and Him alone, not, uh, not anything else well, in our, specifically in our place of I'm a, I'm a Baptist, so I've, I've, been, I've been raised in this, so to speak, not by my parents. I, my parents didn't take to church, but I've been in church for so long that, uh, and I started out a Baptist, um, and I just, started, I just started noticing uh, at some point that um well oh oh i know where it started i know where it started uh i was in church and we st stood up to say the pledge of allegiance and i felt weird i felt weird putting my hand across my heart and pledging allegiance to a country in the group in, in the in, in the body of believers i felt strange doing that so i didn't do it i, I didn't do it and i could have left it at that but the pastor called me into his office and Are you kidding? Whoa, said, whoa, whoa. Uh, the pastor called you into his office on it? Yeah, and I love the guy, and I'll see him in heaven. Wow. That's crazy. Um, One, one question there, uh, Sorry. please. Uh, Sorry. Since uh, possibly my English is failing me there, but uh, you said your church doesn't allow for lights. Uh, what do you mean? With, like, Christmas lights or, or um, adding adding different lighting scenes and stuff like that. But I'm, oh, I want to okay. I want to give um, deference to uh, to Josh to finish the story. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry, yeah, my phone rang. Uh, but anyway, um, so he called me into his office. Uh, Dan Reed was his name, and uh, he said, Josh, uh, we've had tail or we've had talk of that uh, from from some of the parishioners or, or the uh, congregants that uh, that you're not you're not uh, saying the pledge. And uh, is there any reason why? And I said, well, I just, I don't feel like that's right to do, Pastor. And he said, well, John, if you don't mind, when they, when we do the pledge, would you mind just going to the outside of the, in the, in the, in the, in the um, you know, the, what do you call it when you walk in? Uh, the foyer. Thank you. Yeah. If you go out in the foyer there uh, during that time, so as not to offend anyone. And I agreed with that. I didn't have any problem with that. Uh, wow. But but years later, you know, I see a problem with it. I, I yeah, see, I, would uh, say. I see an ugliness there. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Sorry that happened to you, man. Well, it's no bother. Hey, uh, so would you call yourself a proud American or no? 
It's an interesting question. Um, I am an American, and I don't want to be proud about anything other than my king. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has served in the U.S. Armed Forces for eight years, um, and I, I defended my uh, my country um, and and would have would have laid down my life for it this is before I was saved. And I've been many things in my life. I've been um, you know, a military man. I've been a cop. I've been a taxi cab driver. I've been a CEO and entrepreneur. I've been uh, been many things, uh, but now I'm a Christian. And that's it. That's the last identity I'll ever, I'll ever have, and it's an identity that I am grateful for, and I will have for eternity. And so, as of this time, that if you ask me what I am, I am a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. You allow your children to marry, marry interracially? Uh, yeah, racial. There is only one race, so there's the human race. I don't, I don't have any. Um, any other um, perspective on that? Um, God made one man. Uh, we're all different shades of brown, so that's not really um, something that I'm concerned about. The issue is, would I would I condone a marriage where they were going to marry somebody if they're a professing believer, somebody who's not a believer? Then I would definitely say no. Uh, that that would not be something that I would support. Uh, that's what God's word makes it very clear. We should not be unequally yoked. And that is that is my biggest concern for my kids is that and I pray for them regularly on it for that person someday they will marry that they will be a faithful believer and that um, they will uh, enjoy the blessings that come from being in a right covenant with um, another believer and with their God. Very good. Yeah. No. I just I know I know there's a. Uh... I don't know. There's such a good old boy system in the in the uh, law enforcement, and I think the KKK presence is very real there. Uh, so that's why I asked that. No, I never saw that in law enforcement. You did not? No, sir. I was I was a military cop for eight years and a civilian cop for two years, and I have close ties. We have many uh, cops in our church, and still uh, still work directly with the sheriff's department and stuff like that anytime I have the opportunity and I have never ever ever saw any affiliation with the KKK now as that said is there some places where that might happen of course but I, I personally never seen that. it may be more prevalent here I would say uh, in the southern state okay we'll see that in a little bit buddy oh. The way I would say it, uh, there's unfortunately um, some evil people everywhere. You can find them in church, you can find them at the police, you can find them in the field of IT. <laughs> yeah. We I, have been, I have been surprised as of late seeing some of the behavior on the news of law enforcement um, in, in relationship to some of the... Um, riots and stuff like that. I've seen behavior that if I if it had to happen when I was in uh, would have been uh, you would have been the subject to some very serious discipline. So I've been surprised about that as late. But you got to remember, I finished up my military tour in '98, so I've been out for a while. Cause I'm an old guy. You're well, not old. <laughs> You're just a few years older than I am. Exactly. Well, somebody I'm not naming any names. It might be Josh. So since I'm about being old, you not even. Not even above 45 yet. Give me a break. <laughs> well, you know, I do. Here's the thing. I don't. I don't feel. I don't feel 28 anymore. That's for sure. Uh, I, it's. I've just been. I've had some health issues lately, so I. I do feel a bit old. But. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I don't. I. I think the hoary head is. 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 Uh, is just right there with children. I think that such is the kingdom. Uh, and so I don't have any problems with older folks. You either you either get older, or die young, don't you? <laughs> there's that. There's that for sure. Well, good conversation all the way around. Did you get on the server, by the way? Were you able to come back and log in and get your character squared away? I am and did, and I've just been talking so much and listening so much that I'm just literally walking around picking up berries uh, there you go. And, and throwing out stone here and there so I can keep walking. <laughs> yeah, like I said, if you need anything, we have this community chest here. It's got it's got a lot of good crossbows, armor, um, eggs for animals, fertilizer, weapon, you know, anything you need. There's food in the barbecue. 
all kinds of hatchets and high level uh, stuff. I gotta get a grinder. We actually have too much stuff. I need to start grinding it up. So don't hesitate to grab some stuff. Oh, we got medical brew too in the um, uh, refrigerator. Make sure to grab um, some that. Uh, silly game related question. Yeah. Any idea how long uh, you will be playing this in general? Oh, you mean longevity wise? Oh, this is a long term investment for us. Okay. Now, uh, uh, just asking because uh, I, uh, I do remember that uh, when uh, you still played the original one, the first one, yeah, I that, uh, yeah, got that was there something... for two short rounds, like uh, yeah. I think uh, a couple of hours maybe, tops. Yep. And uh, then I unfortunately uh, had to leave, and uh, you later then moved on because you had to. Yeah, that um. was. We're, we're definitely avoiding that scenario that happened. We had to shut it down because of some uh, misbehavior, and that's one of the reasons why we're being very thoughtful about different settings on the server and stuff like that. And we are also understanding too that we have to have different games to accomplish different things. So Ark is more of a discipleship and sort of this type of interaction environment. And DayZ and uh, Fallout 76 and Fortnite are more of the evangelistic uh, areas where we can just meet mm -hmm. somebody and sort of do more of the open air preaching. But um, having different games for different uh, investments, plus my kids now are also invested in this as well. And so we're gonna be finishing out um, each of the maps. And the only question is once we finish a map, we'll. I, I'm, I'm just not sure how long or if we'll keep them all online just in terms of cost. But the intention is to actually fully finish all three bosses and all three boss levels and uh, the final fight completely and then move on to the next map as they come out. But we have, it'll be years. There's so much in this game. Like you can't okay. just, you can't just jump into it and think, oh, it's, you know, Gonna play through it in a couple hours. That's for sure. All right. My uh, my phone has my phone. Oh, Sorry, you. No, yeah, I was gonna say my phone's gonna die. So what I'd like to do is try to connect on to this talk on my Xbox through the um, through the Discord app that they've got now. Oh, they got you know, a Discord app. That. Nice. That sounds pretty. Cool. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I just don't know if. Um, I think just because I've added it here, though, I, it should be available and on display now. Uh, but they don't have a full app app there. They just have, like, when you've added, then you can go in and, and go into voice chat and things like that. I'm going to check that real quick. Maybe it's a bit like to I, be I just oh, realized I, I got to expand this person. So give me one second. Uh, spam. You know where my headset is, Emma? You were on the server. Yeah. yeah, here it is. I'm going to join in on this, and I'm going to hang up when I do. Okay. So, Mario, yeah, I would in, I would encourage you that um, we'll be on this for, you know, it's going to be years, so. All right. And as you know, you are always welcome. Thank you. And I had uh, I had to ask because um, no, as you know you. I don't really have that much money and unfortunately I still don't have a job with regular working hours and regular payments so I'm I'm suffering the same thing dude I even got hired and I still haven't started working so I'm just I'm just trusting the Lord and knowing that I serve at His good pleasure and we'll see uh, what He has in store for sure. Can you hear yeah, we had our house in the market. Yeah, we can hear you, uh, Josh. You're sounding uh, Damon Charlie. Here. Yeah, I wish PlayStation had a Discord app because um, they uh, it they actually no they actually well last time I looked they uh, they didn't allow for you to use uh, Discord. They wanted you to use the PlayStation uh, integration. Oh, so, yeah, it's a little disappointing. The proximity chat in game is much better. Like they knocked out of the park now, uh, but it's still proximity. You can't have a little chat, which is kind of a bummer. Gotcha. At least voice chat. 
And side question there, uh, have I uh, told question. you about the... Yeah, uh, let's say it like this, uh, about the other income uh, that I uh, got to... Uh, I got started uh, to get a couple of weeks ago, I'm trying to um, remember. I don't remember you telling me about it. If, is it something you want to share on stream or what's your I thoughts? can totally share it on stream. <laughs> okay, what's up? I, uh, I'm now uh, also uh, doing a little bit of chauffeuring around really? for some money. Praise God for that. Yep. Uh, Mario, uh, yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer to uh, Josh. He had a question. What's your question, Josh? I thought Josh had a question. Maybe I misunderstood. Oh, he's still muted. Well, he's not. He's not. He uh, he was on his PlayStation app. I think he switched over to. Nah, Xbox app. Right, Xbox app. Yeah. Yep, but uh, he's currently muted. So yeah. I don't. Did we have to enable him again? I thought. Um... No, no. It's uh, it's it's his site. Yeah, it's not I know. But site. You gotta um. Did he log in with the same account? Yeah, he did. So we should be good. He did, yeah. Yeah, he should be good. We'll see what happens. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to punch you there, bird. No, because... Uh, um... Where are we at? It is... Welcome back, Josh. Josh back? There he is. Hey, right. can you hear me? Okay, sorry. My, my my wife was asking me about that Adam and Eve thing there real quick. We, we've never talked about that before. Yeah, it's, it's just a great it's a great place to look and do... I encourage you to do uh, some reading of uh, the book of Genesis and... Uh, Mate, I've read hand. the Bible through so many times. I'll never come to the conclusion that, that okay. Adam's in hell. How many times you read I'll the never... Bible, cover to cover? How many times? Not as I I don't know, but because I'm so bored with certain parts of it. But uh, you're uh, man, you got bored with the Bible? Oh yes. So oh, and I will today, as a matter of fact. I mean, if you wanna if you wanna take me and and start uh, have me read the book of what is it? Uh, is it Leviticus that gets into all the all the details of the of the sacrifices and things? Oh uh, man, if the you want to understand if you want to understand the book of Hebrews, you have to understand the book of Leviticus. Yeah, well, I I, I feel like I have an understanding of the book of Hebrews, but uh, of Hebrew, but I I, uh, I I I I'm still bored with the uh, the technical side of uh, of the, uh, the, law, the 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 Levitical law. So do you read the Bible every single day without fail? No way. No? Not even close, no. Um, but do I consider the Word of God every day without fail? Um, that word, if I hit in my heart, that I might not sin against you. So, like, in other words, I've I have memorized, so I've been a Christian a lot longer than you. I've I've memorized a lot of the Bible, uh, which is constantly brought to my attention. Um, That's a good thing for sure. And, yeah, and so I can, I I go through. Um, I'm well. The Lord teaches me through the the verses that I have memorized. Um, now, I haven't. I haven't read the Bible, like actually, no, it wasn't that long ago actually, but as far as like steadily reading, no, I haven't done that in, I don't know how long, maybe, maybe a couple of years. Uh, you, you say you're, like, uh, you're familiar with, uh, with scripture, so uh, what yeah. in scripture is the most epic battle that ever took place? The most epic battle that yep. ever took place? Do you yep. mean between men? Well, I mean, it definitely involved men, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, involved uh, men, technically. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's going to be up to up to debate or up, up someone's personal preferences, I'd say. But um, for me, you know, the first thing that, that pops into my mind um would be either David and Goliath or Joshua, the Battle of Jericho, or okay. I mean, places like you know scenes like that. 
uh, would be some of the most epic battles. Um, I am a very big fan of David. I love David. Um, I know David was a dog, but I can relate to that. Uh, the things that he did, and he even called himself a dog, I think, at one point. Um, and so, so I understand. I feel like I feel like I understand David a little bit. Uh, not that not that I'm as good as David. I think David far surpasses me in in uh, in, in righteousness. But um, but yeah, I'm, I, I love David. Uh, what what is your what do you think is the most epic battle? I, I think the, the most epic battle was between Jesus Christ and Satan in the wilderness. Um, it was when um, Satan uh, was attempting to tempt uh, Jesus and cause him to sin against God in the same way that, that Adam uh, and Eve were tempted to sin against God. Where Adam failed, Jesus succeeded. And in the battle, it was, again, Satan trying to twist, uh, did God really say kind of thing. And I think it's very important to understand how Jesus won that battle. And if you remember, he was starving. He was thirsty, you know, 40 days in the wilderness. And Satan's just laying into him hard. And Satan says, hey, why don't you uh, turn some of these uh, stones into bread? And do you remember what Jesus said to him? Yeah, he said, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that come, proceeded from the mouth of God or something like that, I think. Exactly. No, you nailed it. Every word that comes from the mouth of God. And what, in that moment, uh, we know that every day we need to eat food. Like, I'm assuming today you've eaten some food, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. But what Jesus was doing is he was elevating the word of God to be even more important than our daily bread. You know, you got to eat every day. But he was making it very clear, you need the word of God even more so every single day. And so that is a, a great encouragement for us that in through the reading of the word of God, uh, God does that work in our brain. He fixes our stinking thinking and he helps us to be more like his son. And through it, through the faithful application of the word of God of every, to every aspect of our life, we can, we can do that which is pleasing uh, to our father in heaven. We can uh, do our very best to avoid sin and temptation. And we can know that through the same way that Jesus Christ defeated uh, Satan uh, in the wilderness, that we can we can stand firm against those fiery darts uh, that he sends to us. And so that, that battle was won uh, through the word of God. And so I, I make the, the, the statement the same way that Ray Comfort does, that as, as a follower of Jesus Christ to be, to be healthy, to be well fed spiritually, we need to be in the Word of God every single day uh, without fail. And so I, I would encourage you uh, to be thoughtful about that, but ultimately that's between, uh, between you and God. But it is something that I encourage anybody who wants to, uh, to walk in a way uh, that makes us more and more like His Son. And less what and less verse like would you give me to back that up? I just gave it to you. The one Sorry, you give it to me again. The, the oh. man does not live by bread alone, but every word no, that comes I, from the mouth of God. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean the routine that you just laid out. What what verse do you have for that routine? That's the one. Well, okay, but I know the word of God, right? And I live by it. But I'm saying, like, okay. like as far as daily reading of every day, do you have a good well, verse about, for that? That, that? That's the one. Man does not live by bread alone. Why do you need you need bread every single daily day? Daily bread, you're saying, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, man, man does not live by bread alone, but by right. every word that comes from the mouth of God. So here Jesus is saying, you know you need bread every day. How much more yeah. so do you need the word of God every day? How would a prisoner read their Bible daily? In other words, like that's so one of the I guess things that's the most coveted coveted thing in prison is the word of God. Have you ever read um, the Hiding Place, uh, the story of Corey Tinnenbaum? and uh, their Nazi uh, incarceration during uh, World War II? Were they without the scriptures? No, the exact opposite. Um, they were smuggled in uh, a very small uh, New Testament uh, Bible that was the most precious thing they had. They hid it, uh, they preached from it, and it was something uh, that when even uh, Corey left uh, prison, uh, she was able to pass off to another uh, prisoner who wasn't able to be released. And it was something that um, has always been 
the most profound uh, of value for any uh, follower of Jesus Christ and, and other people too who come to Christ in prison as well uh, is the Word of God. There's one really, really great story about uh, somebody who was in the, the Japanese internment camps who was um, made to clean the latrines and during cleaning the latrines found in the, the refuse paper scraps that were actually of the New Testament and uh, turned in later on that it was one of the prison guards was actually whipping up the Bible and wiping himself with it and throwing it away in the toilet and this prisoner through cleaning the toilets which was the worst job that you could have was actually blessed with the Word of God he cleaned them off and he restored them and was able to be fed daily uh, through God's Word and so it is the most precious thing that we have in our physical existence on earth is the physical word of God in our hand. And as you very properly noted, to write that word on our hearts through memorization is a very, very important aspect of the law. Yeah, it says write the words upon the tablets of your heart. So so what I'm thinking is, is, is does a man need to read the Bible every day? Well, there's no doubt if he's a young Christian, he needs to read it every day. Could a, could a seasoned Christian gain from reading every day, I said, no way you can lose. Uh, so, so, to, but to require it of another man, I think would be a whole other situation. Now, I was, I uh, was, yeah, I'm not, I'm not requiring it of you. I'm, I'm not I'm, saying I'm you not are. Sure. I'm just saying that that may be a requirement of of some people that uh, that don't fully understand what's going on. But, but what I'm saying is, is like, uh, what do you? Let me. I was wanting to ask you. What do you think about the first? miracle of Christ. What do you think about it? Uh, water into wine? Yes, sir. I think he did it. I'm, I'm not sure what... Do you want to... It's kind of open-ended. Do you have a specific question about it? Did, did it happen? Was it, or? was it Was it? real wine? Of course it was real wine. Was it alcoholic? Yes, that's wine. It has alcohol in it. Well, I submit to you that many men say that it would not have been wine because wine is thin. Uh, alcohol is sin. So, I mean, this is the Baptist stance uh, yeah, that, I, that, that I, drinking is sin. So, um, yeah, so you why would. Don't, I don't what, that. Uh, why would alcohol be a sin? Well, the Baptist man would say that anything. Well, the 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 the, the very the the thing that they fall back on last would be this: that you have to flee the appearance of evil. So they they put that under the category of of evil. So. Um, now, there's no, there's, in my opinion, there's no reason behind this. Okay, uh, so you're, you're just throwing it out there as a, as a strong man. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm strong. I, I, I do think that, um, that, uh, that, that there are men that are weak in the faith, and I, but I don't think there's churches designed for them. In other words, um, I've, I've, I've wondered for some time, was the Baptist church for the person of weaker faith, uh, that had less faith? Um, and was that designed for them? Did they need that because they were perhaps run off by by Christians that were stronger in faith? And, and but I've come to the conclusion that's not real. Uh, that uh, that there's just a fallacy there, and uh, and and it's not needed, and, and it needs to be fixed. But um, I just I, wondered what you thought about about alcohol and what it is. Well, it's, it's an interesting statement because you have to realize I've been a drunkard since I was 13. So my mother was a, a rampant alcoholic, still is to this day, and um, with a father who's a murderer and a child molester, it's something for me that was a very profound part of my, my life and my, my uh, identity for, since, like I said, 13 years old. And, um, and you, still today, didn't, you still never came to the conclusion through all that that that, 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 that was not alcoholic wine. I mean, in other you know, words, like, like the Baptist it, it I yeah, know it's alcohol is mine, um, but my point I'm getting at is I don't I don't think alcohol uh, unto itself is the issue. It's it's always been and always will be what you do with God's good gifts that's the issue. There's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine. Uh, the issue is, and Scripture makes it very clear: do not get drunk. On, on so you're not to get drunk. Be uh, not drunken you know. with wine wherein is excess. Exactly. So, Besides, yeah. if alcohol was a sin, then Jesus would have sinned. Yeah, exactly. Jesus, well, they would have, uh, they would have they would have said it was it was non-alcoholic wine that he was drinking. They would also start then, to pull out. They would they, they would tell you that. Then scripture would have said grape juice. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I've I've tried to point that out uh, to a few to a few people, but uh, it's not well received. It's not well received. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I was just wondering where where, where you fell on that one. Yep, that's where I fall. It's it's one of those things where when we when we look at the good gifts of God uh, from from any of the good gifts, they can always be abused. So when we think of the the wonderment of being able to um, to work and be able to earn money, it's a it's a good gift that you can then use that money to, to bless the church and provide for your family and to buy the things that you want. Well, then what do people do? They worship money. You cannot love money and love God. You cannot serve money and serve God. And so another good gift from God, alcohol. Another good gift from God, sex. Another good gift from God, um, the, the drugs that we have. All of these gifts from God can be used rightly, um, and, and they're very helpful, and they're a blessing. Or they can be abused, and at which then they're, they're a sin. But that doesn't impugn the gift. It impugns the person who's using that gift inappropriately. And so right now, I don't drink any, and nor does my wife. And yet, for us, we don't we don't have any issue with somebody having a glass of wine or a beer or something like that. But we know you shouldn't get drunk. Why? Well, because that's what Scripture says: do not do not um, get drunk and do not be a drunkard. In fact, it makes that very clear as well. And so that's where you got to look at Scripture and say, okay, what is it? What is it commanding? Don't get drunk. It doesn't say don't have a glass of wine. And so those are very good things to know and be thoughtful about. In fact, Timothy's told. Timothy's told to never drink water, but drink wine for yeah, the stomach's sake, and not often yep. infirmities. So yeah, I mean, it's it, to me, it's like it blows my mind because it's it's all it's all I preached I have preached against alcohol in my life, like I went along with it, um, and I was a product of that of that of that thinking, but I've come to realize that that's foolish. Um, yeah, and uh, and and also it's legalism. Um, and, 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 uh, there's no point in, in any man, uh, following another man's rules, uh, unless they are in the scriptures. Exactly. We are, we are always to defer to scriptures. In fact, tonight, that's what I have to teach at Adventure Club. Um, and now, uh, did I hear correctly? You got some little ones? Yes, I have four daughters. All right. Uh, I always am thankful for fathers who are, are fathers and they're raising their children um, and that's because I was um, abandoned by my father and a lot of the people that um, God brings to me in this ministry are young men whose fathers have abandoned them. And so Isn't hats off all. to you yeah. for, um, for being there and being a faithful dad. And I would encourage you, if you haven't found it already and you aren't involved in it already, there's a program put out by Grace to You called Adventure Club. And it's a theologically, doctrinally sound um, teaching that is church designed to be a community outreach as well, but it's very kid focused to teach them uh, good doctrine. And tonight it's gonna be on the authority of scripture. So I get to teach on that and it's gonna be a very exciting opportunity to tell the kids that scripture is always the authority. It's not about men. It's not about um, our opinions. It's not about our, um, what do you call it? Um, habits or our traditions. It's it always comes back to the word of God. Yeah, and any time you leave that, you end up with uh, something like the Mormons, or you end up with a Jehovah's Witness, or you end up with a uh, an Islamist. You know, all these, all these uh, you cults can, that follow you can, after men. But I think you can also end up with what you just talked about a little bit ago, which is a pastor Legalism. who would pull you in because you had uh, oh, you put your yeah. hand over your heart for the that that's that is to me an egregious. Uh, error that um, has has no place in, in a you know a biblically sound church and uh, horrifies me that you would have experienced that. Uh, well, I, I still I still love I still love oh, Dan and, and, yeah. and so does God. But you know the the thing of it is is is, is and this is what happens oftentimes is and this is what I asked you did you hear that from a man because exactly. what happens oftentimes is. We hear things from people that we love and that we trust and that we uh, respect and that we just assume uh, have all the correct answers. If they have an answer, we'll assume it's correct. But the, but the problem with that, of course, is that 
if it ever if it ever uh, deviates from scripture, then it's just to be denied. And I've learned that though only only lately, really, in the last several years, is that I just don't want it if it's not the scriptures. I told somebody recently, I don't trust a man that's not two thousand years old. So yeah, I mean, if he wasn't, if it's not in the scriptures written two thousand years ago, twenty two thousand twenty three years ago, whatever it was, I, I'm I'm not I'm not interested in it. Uh, it it might make me laugh. It might entertain me, but it, but it's definitely not something I'm going to make my religion yeah, or my I'm, service I'm curious, to so God. Mario is dropping a statement. He said um, that Jesus's first miracle was not turning water into wine. So I'm curious, Mario, would you like to back that up with some scripture? <laughs> what do you got? What about creation? Well, well I'm on about, about the yeah. Lord when He was yeah. here. Yeah, with no, His the first incarnation. Miracle. Okay. Nice, Just making nice. sure. Yeah, when when we when we're talking about Jesus, the Messiah, uh, Jesus was born two thousand years ago. So Jesus, the man, did not exist uh, during creation. Um, the Son of God did, to be clear. Uh, but Jesus yep. came into existence. God joined Himself with His creation two thousand years ago, and so the first miracle of Jesus. Uh, was uh, the turning of water into wine. I told a pastor That's that two Sundays ago. I told a pastor that two days, two Sundays ago. No, maybe three Sundays ago. And he said, now listen to this. This, this taught me something about the Baptist man. I said, uh, Jesus turned water into wine. He said, you can't turn water into fermented wine. <laughs> That's what he said. And my wife was like, what did he just say? Right? She didn't say that. <laughs> But, but here's the thing. Here's what that showed me. The brethren that are weak in the faith. I, you know what I always thought? I thought that meant, well, they're just weak. They're, they're always going to be weak. But, it, but it's not what it means. It means very particularly the faith. In other words, what is God capable of? Right? So how could a man, how could a man believe that Christ could, what, baby? That Christ could raise someone from the dead, but not believe that he could ferment water? And turn it into grape, fermented grape juice. How, how could he believe that? Well, it's because he's weak in the faith, the actual faith of who God is and what he's capable of. So it's not and, and, and by the way, they are accepted. So I don't I don't I don't really judge them because they're gods and that's for him to judge. Uh, but they're accepted and I'll see these folks again in heaven. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And they'll 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 be with him and in him. So um but it has made it a bit tough for me as a Baptist to be a Baptist anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's I, why I, just... I, I make it very clear. I'm a Christian. I'm not, I'm not subscribed to any uh, designation like that. And Paul made that clear too. You know, when we look at scripture, Paul made it clear. Are you, are you a Paul? Are you, a, I think it was Aphrodite or um, I forget the other uh, people he named. Uh, Apollo, Barnabas, yeah. Peter, yep. etc. So yep. we have this desire to want to subset into these areas, and I don't think Scripture backs that up. In fact, we are to be unified in uh, who we are, not not trying to parse ourselves out. And what should parse us out is what we believe, and I think what people inappropriately do is try to take a short road to 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 qualify what somebody believes by saying well are you a x are you a baptist or are you a calvinist or are you a you name it they'll put that and the more important thing is to say well what do you believe you know and that's one of the things my pastor taught me early on when somebody hits him up and says you know are you a calvinist his response is well you you explain to me what a calvinist is and i'll tell you if i am one Right. And, and it's a great, great response because many times they don't even know what they're saying. They don't they don't understand why why being uh, labeled as a Calvinist is, is what's it actually derived from. They just know it's derogatory. And and so as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, that's that's enough on its own to alienate uh, a world that's chasing after anything that's against Christ. And I'll stand firmly with Christ, even if I stand alone. Uh, because when you're standing with a God, you're not standing alone. Uh, with that said, though, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break and be right back. Hello. And while we will I'm doing hold that, the fort. Thanks. I appreciate that, Mario. I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep playing the uh, Are You Afraid um, podcast while I'm away at the bathroom.
deliver you out of my hands. Yo, Mario, where are you? Jadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver to deliver us from the fiery furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Now that was Daniel 3, verses 15 through 18. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Our God will deliver us from this flaming furnace, but even if he does not, we, will, we still are not going to worship you or your golden image. You see, Omaha, that's the kind of sanctification and spiritual maturity that every professing believer in Christ should aspire to, to attain. Mm -hmm. To be so secure, to be so secure in our belief and trust in God and in his character that we can say, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if he does not answer my prayer or resolve this situation or circumstance in the manner that I would like, I'm still going to refrain I'm still going to remain faithful to him and trust him nonetheless so that my heart and mind are at peace with any and all circumstances because I have the peace of God, which scripture says in Philippians 4, 7, surpasses all human mm -hmm. comprehension and understanding. Yeah. So that's what we want to be. We want to get, we want God to bring us to a place in our sanctification and maturity that we can say just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Yes, Lord, I want you to deliver me. I want you to resolve the situation. But even if you don't, mm. that's what Until we want to get to. Until I was Absolutely. a young now, adult, I... and uh, I got uh, shared the gospel and uh, proper biblical truth through the internet on oh, some really? websites that unfortunately no longer exist. But uh, the guy that uh, originally shared the gospel with me, as well as some proper truth and uh, that I sat in uh, Bible studies with, uh, just virtually and stuff. Um, that guy uh, still does uh, Bible studies uh, online and I still get to um, tune in there. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, I appreciate that. I was waiting for the shoe to drop and go, he's not doing something anymore. I'm like, no, but that was a happy ending, so yay. By the way, um, Treckle just joined, Treckle's Tim. Uh, faithful brother, um, closer to your side of the coast uh, than this side, um, but he's got his mic on you for some reason. So welcome, Tim. How do you hold Tim? <laughs> Hello, how's it going, guys? Tim's another hey, evangelist. Uh, Tim, we have a new art uh, survivor, uh, aka Christian, and his name is Josh. That's Hebrews Hammer, and. Uh, uh, we've, been we've been having a wonderful conversation about theology and some fun sanctified speculation conversations. Yeah, good day. Very good. So to, so, uh, to, ma uh, to make it short, I would say um, it was about uh, 16, 17 uh, years ago since I first heard uh, some proper biblical truth. Yeah, and I don't. Uh, I can't pinpoint at a, a time like, okay, this is when I started getting it, believing it, trusting it. Because um, um, especially uh, back then, uh, I was heavily depressed. Uh, I was uh, going uh, through some uh, terrible things, uh, and uh, I was uh, grieving. Because uh, back then I had uh, lost my significant other. Oh. Um. So. So some of it, uh, unfortunately, is still uh, quite the fog there. When uh, thinking back uh, to that, uh, but the only clear times is uh, basically uh, when I got in touch there uh, with these people who shared the gospel with me and. Uh, the Bible studies. They used okay. uh, material from Spurgeon, which I yes. found very great. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Spurgeon. But, yep. Uh, Spurgeon. I, I've read a lot. I've read a lot of his stuff. Interesting. Oh. Uh, uh. So if you died today, you'd go to heaven? Yes or no? Yes, I would. And what do you but, base uh, that on entirely? I mean, uh, what do you base that on? On nothing that I c uh, could have done. It's all of Christ. There you go. Well, 
That's, that's I'm the same <laughs> answer. I mean, it's it's him and him alone. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, mate. I'll tell you. I don't know. I think about I think about that one fellow that the Lord loved. He just looked at him. He just loved him. And and uh, uh, he said, "What must I do to 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 go to heaven?" Basically, and and he said, uh, "Honor thy father and thy mother." And then he said, uh, uh, "I can't remember all the actual things he told him to do." Uh, boy, this true Don's really giving me a hard time. Oh, he slept me. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm dead. Uh, Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, "I've done all this." And, youth, and, and, and he said, "Okay, just sell all that you have and follow me." And, and and he walked away sad, yep. uh, because uh, because he loved this world. I've got a question, another question. Uh, what do you guys think about hating your lives? Sin. Is hating your life a sin? Well, I, I think it's it's an important qualification you need to make with that. Is what in comparison to what and what part of your life? Are we talking about your Christian life? life in Christ that we have, of course we're not to hate that, but are we to love our life more than we love our king? Of course not. Okay, so you quantify that. Yeah, you have to. I mean, like, to Okay, say, so you're saying, you're saying the word hate is not actually hate. No, I know the word what hate means. I'm talking, right. when you, I'm, t I'm talking about quantifying when you say answer. your life. Yeah, when you're talking about your life, what life are you talking about? Because we, we have new life. I'm, I'm just referring. I'm just. I'm just referring to the the man that is alive because there's breath in his lungs and his heart is beating. Look, the sinful man that, that I was. Paper, yeah. That yes. I mean, you, what joy do you have in your life when you don't know what Jesus is? Yeah. And there's also the hate. There's also the hating the sinful flesh. I hate my sinful flesh. Okay. Uh, want nothing to do with it but the life that i have in christ love that do i love you, my physical life more than than my king would i would i try to hold on to my life no, no that's okay not, that's not what so would you would, would you also quantify when the lord said that anyone that doesn't hate his life is not worthy to be my disciple would you quantify that for me? yeah it's talking about wanting to hold on to the things of this world your life your belongings the guy the rich young ruler who walked off, right? He loved his life, loved his stuff more than the opportunity to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It is, it is a, it is a desire to hold on to that which is here, that which is the physical, instead of uh, wanting that which is the, the eternal, which is our King. And so, when you think about loving your life, uh, it doesn't just talk about your life either. It talks about your loved ones as well. If you, if you love, I was your, about to get there. Yeah. Your, to hate your your, 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 parents. your parents, your wife, yeah. your children. Now, are we to hate them? No, it's in comparison <laughs> to our love to Christ. Yeah, so, looking at how much we love our love Christ, and I, Lord. yeah, I ran into that exact issue because um, when I was early on being uh, in my uh, after being saved, I was witnessing to the guy who was a very uh, big part of my life growing up. He was in bat uh, he was either demonic or closely aligned uh, with the demonic, uh, just based upon the outcome of, of everything that happened. But through that process, I loved him. Um, but when I started talking to him about my faith in Christ and started telling him what it was worth to me, the conversation came up of, um, well, if, if somebody came into my house and put a gun to my head and told me to denounce Christ or they were going to shoot me, I would say, well, then you're going to have to shoot me. Because I'm not denouncing Christ, and he said, "Well, you're insane. So you're crazy." And I said, "Well, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to denounce my Savior, no matter what." And then he said, "Well, what if they put the gun to your wife's head?" I said, "Then, then they are going to sin grievously uh, that I have no control over, because I am not denying my Savior, no matter what. I love Him more than anything else." And his statement basically was, "Well, then you must hate your wife." Biblically speaking, you're accurate. Reality? Of course not. I love my wife like, like, I want to love my wife like Christ loved the church. I want to give up everything for her. Do I do it perfectly? Of course not. But I love my wife. I am grateful for her. But compared to Christ, to the outside world, it looks like hate. If, if I would not, you know, do anything 
to why to couldn't stop it, that kind of thing happen? Why couldn't it just mean hate your life? Because you have to have Instead a comparison. Of, it, well, uh, because what I'm saying is, is like it doesn't say to it doesn't it does say what's, that. What's the verse? Throw, throw the verse. What's the verse number? I don't know. I thought you had all this memorized. You don't even like. I just quoted it without without a without a Bible, but right, I don't so know the verse. Anyone right. who doesn't you, did you know hate did you know that verses their... were not in the Bible until recently? Oh yeah. Yeah, but it's still an easy way to help us refer to things. Because the this year is very important, right? All right, so we got uh, John twelve twenty five. John twelve twenty five. So now let's look at it uh, in context. So pull that up, bring it over here, throw it up there. Everybody sees it on the screen. Them. Zoom yeah. in. All right, John <laughs> twenty. Oops, I got the first numbers turned off. One second. Makes it easier to find it. All right. So John twenty. You know that technology right. stuff. I'm just I'm sitting here in with my Bible in hand. And I've already got it open. Oh well, I guess you're more righteous than I. <laughs> <laughs> and All I. Right. So so we're starting off with a now, and he's talking to the Pharisees. So the Pharisees said to one another. Yeah, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. So this is the Pharisees talking, then it switches context. It says, now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. These came then, uh, these then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Okay, so these are Greeks wishing to see Jesus, talking to Philip. Philip came and told Andrew. So these are now the apostles having an internal discussion. Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. All right, now they're talking to Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it. And he who hates his life in this world, and I don't remember you saying those words, in this world, will keep it to life eternal. If anyone well, serves I'm not me from that version. Oh, he must also follow me, and where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So in full context, um, this is Jesus talking about what's gonna happen uh to That's him not the verse on, I'm talking about. The verse I'm talking about says that any man that is not willing to hate his life is not worthy to be my disciple. That's the verse I'm on about. Okay. Do you want to you want to look it up and tell me what it is, and I'll pull it up. I'll have to uh, go get a phone. Okay. I'll wait for you. Why? Real, real Didn't you say you have it uh, right here? <laughs> I, I don't know the. I don't know. I, he's asking for the actual uh, address, oh, and I don't yeah. know it. I said the same thing, Mario. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> where's my phone? Uh, sorry. It's okay. Honey, where's my I, phone? I said the same thing. I said the same thing. Yes. Hey, I don't know. I can't find it. Babe, By the way, uh, Tim, how are you doing today? Uh, I enjoy it. All right. I think. I mean, I did a lot of running around today. I got fiber optic finally. Oh, you got fiber? Wow. Oh, dude, isn't fiber awesome? Only after four months. Can you just come drill a hole in my house so I can do my schooling stuff for my children easier instead of running 100-foot cords to my back room? And so now dude. they finally came and installed fiber, and they said, it's all free. We're not charging you anything. Are you anything. serious? <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like a blessing from the living God. Yeah. Send them over to my place next, please. Yeah, sure. You know, I, I would rat. I'm not going to complain because I said I'm like. Yeah, let's not. We aren't to be complainers. We are to be thankful. Hey, now, we just um, we just I... read the verse about the nine and the one, and Tim got the reference. So we are to be the one. We are not to be like the nine. The nine lepers, who once they were healed, just left Walked and went and, and were unthankful, and as compared to the. One that came back, who was a Samaritan, who was thank you. Here it is. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know. All I ask is uh, for for the uh, for those guys to come here. That's okay. all. Because all right. <laughs> we, we got the reference. Had the job for we, me. <laughs> we got the reference coming. Go with the reference. Fourteen. Yeah. I don't know what verse he's going to say. It. Go ahead. 
I, did, which one were you guys quoting? I'm sorry. John 12. Okay, this is, this is 14, right? Yeah, this is Luke 14 and 26. Yeah, All right, Luke 14 26. It says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. That's so the one I was referring to then. Yeah. Okay. It must have been. It must have been, yeah. Yeah. So, so this is this is a very clear um, talking about um, as in comparison to our love for Christ, uh, the world would count everything else as hate, and we're not we're not concerned about what the world says, but we're concerned about how much we are to love Christ. We are to love Him more than our wives or our sisters or our brothers or even our own lives, and anything right. we put above Christ um, is wrong. So. Well, oh, what what I nice. find yeah. though, what I find though, and this is what I think I'm finding, is that most people are very glad to be here, um, and not only that, but they're but they're very happy to be in America, um, and and count their blessings every day, and thank God for America. And uh, um, this is where I've gotten the sour taste from is uh, is that Christians these days are very happy with their lives. Uh, because they have great lives I mean, in comparison to, there's that word again, in comparison to the rest of the world. Um, but you find that with, with Paul, he was ready to leave. He didn't want to be here anymore. Um, but he found that it was more profitable for him to be here for the church. You're exactly so, right. And I got I to interrupt you there because we just got a raid from Matchbox Oreo. And I appreciate that raid from Matchbox Oreo. And anybody who knows this channel knows we appreciate raids and we appreciate any reason because it gives us an opportunity to talk about the gospel because gospel means good news now if you got good news in one hand you know you're going to have bad news in the other and the bad news is we've all sinned and we deserve the wrath to come but i did say there was good news and thank god for the butts in the bible but jesus the messiah died for our sins was buried and then raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and right now is seated at the Father's right hand. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Now think about it. He literally said he's the truth. No man ever spoke like this man. Why? Well, because he's God himself. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That's where everything starts, right here, right now, with repentance and believing in the gospel. And then the word of God is going to be made clear to you by the inner working of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're talking about today with some faithful brothers talking about the word of God. And we're grateful for the raid, Matchbox, Oreo, even a raid of one. We are grateful for that. So thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I'm off my game listening to this conversation. I know, Nathaniel. What's going on, man? Come on. So hard to find good help these ways, these days. All right, sorry about that. Go right ahead there. Um, Who did I interrupt? Was it Mario or Josh? I think it was Josh. Josh, good question. I think, I think Mario wants to say something, yeah. Uh, good question for you, Josh. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Mario. No, 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 no. Uh, I, no, I it was you. Idea. It was you. Oh, well, oh, well, it was what, you. Uh, I would have wanted to say, so uh, go ahead. Uh, have you ever done any evangelism, Josh? By that, do you, okay, so not as a career, um, but I have led souls to Christ. Okay, I don't know what a career evangelist is, but... Um, um, it's someone that I would consider someone that picks up and leaves their home, and they go to a faraway place or another place that is not their own, and then they preach the gospel there in order to see people come to Christ. Oh, it's okay. a missionary. Yeah. So, um, do you you go out on the streets and you share the gospel? You proclaim the gospel on the streets? I certainly have done that. I've done it on uh, I've done it on uh, subways as well, uh, from car to car in Chicago uh, when I was in seminary. That'd be a good place um, but, to share the gospel. That'd be a good place to meet people. Get them on the cars. There's, yeah. There's some there's some interesting stories about that. But anyway. Um, but so, yeah, um, I've only personally led um, maybe six, maybe six people to the Lord in my life. So I got a question: How many people have you saved? You said 
How many people have you saved, you said? I've never saved anyone. I didn't oh, say okay. that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice try there, Tim. Come on, man. Play nice. <laughs> Um, well, now, you said something about most Christians are happy and this and that and the other, and it's just interesting because um, when I talk to people out here, when you get down to the the bottom of it, you know, you kind of find out that, you know, I don't know, in a sense, because then it's like, oh, you're a good person. Oh, yeah, I'm a great person. And you find out, no, you're a dirty, rotten sinner. And, and uh, you know, they just kind of play it off as, oh, you know, my life's good. But there's a lot of people I've talked to where it's just like, you know, life actually does kind of suck. And yes, I, I do hide behind the veil of Christianity. And, um, you know, so of course I'm going to say life's good because that's what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. Hey, um, Tim, I, I do yeah. want to throw this out there because you didn't hear the earlier conversation. And I know um, just for some context, Josh, that Tim's had some pretty poor treatment um, from quote unquote churches he's gone to. Um, but I was going to share this story that Josh shared with us earlier, Tim. Tim, he got called into the pastor's office for not um, pledging to the flag, pledging allegiance to the flag. Wow. Yeah. So, so here's somebody you can commiserate a little bit about how. Uh, now, this was he, he he he's saying it's a faithful brother that just is off the mark, um, and I'm hoping Tim's had some pretty horrendous stuff uh, happen to him over the years as well, uh, and I I'm hopeful that. For the majority of them, they were just brothers who were off their mark, but some of them I know for a fact based upon the stories. They are false, false believers, because um, you just can't treat a fellow brother that way that he's been treated. But it's just, it's interesting that um, you guys have had some really, really horrific uh, treatment by people who claim to know our king. And I am, I am for one, and just I'm just aghast at that. Uh, so yeah, so just thought I'd share that because it was a story that you didn't hear when uh, Josh first joined us earlier. Well, I've also okay. I've also experienced uh, treatment that was excellent in churches when I had fancy cars and fancy clothes, oh. and then and then when that when that went away, and then I have experienced a different a different um, acceptance level. So yeah. I've, I've seen I've seen a lot of different things in churches, but. Uh, if you're not if you're not riding a real nice looking horse, that says a lot about you. So uh, to them, to to, to, to to some of these folks, um, I, and don't get me wrong, I'm a person just like they are. In other words, if I see a man in a suit, I'm probably pretty sure he's not going to stick a gun in my face. Um, if I see a man in a brand new, sorry. Oh right, <laughs> but but if, but if I but if I see a man uh, in a fine car, I can probably be sure that he's not going to steal my car. Um, and and so I understand I understand where it comes from, but I think it's very worldly um, mindsets. And I think it's also well, that's enough said. It's worldly. So what it is is it's a it's a placement of value. Well, the eyes and what the eyes look at and what the eyes desire. Most people's eyes desire a man in a suit. That's why the preacher says, I gotta wear a suit, man. I don't wanna wear a suit, but I gotta wear a suit. What he's talking about is he's talking about for the other people's eyes because if their eyes don't get what they want, then they will not comply or they will not be there for it. You see what I mean? So a lot of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. It's all prevalent, and I find it very prevalent in the Baptist churches um, where, I, where that I've been a part of over my lifetime. And, and I'll tell you what, I've, I've gone looking for a church that, uh, a Baptist church, I should say, uh, that uh, doesn't share all these same things, but they all share the same nonsense, in my opinion. Uh, so I don't find a home anywhere in a church any longer oh uh, and so i'm very I'm sorry, interested you're not you're not attending a church anymore no zero uh the last church i went to was two weeks ago um uh to Dude, this baptist church my facebook posts this guy What's that? this guy's a former baptist from what oklahoma no probably not oklahoma um where you where are you at? you're close to oklahoma right maybe Texas. Who are you talking to? Me? You. I'm yeah. in Georgia. Yeah, I'm in okay, Georgia. I was, gonna, I was gonna say you're close. I knew you weren't a Louisiana. Like, where Where are you at? I'm in Nebraska, but I'm originally oh. from 
New Orleans. Oh, okay. May, yeah. May I send you a link for a church directory? Uh, you talking about in my in my in my region? Yeah. In my area. Yeah. Um, Mario, well, I, if you I mean, send him Louis Giglio's church, we're talking. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, <laughs> fellas. So you're either, if you're not going to a Baptist church, which I find no Baptist church that I really want to attend, if you're not going to one of those, then you're going to go to a non-denominational like my dude here does, right? But generally you find in non-denominationals that people are always speaking in tongues and they have the fruits of the spirit and so on, right? These these type of churches where they're slain in the hey, wait, spirit. Wait, wait. And, oh, no, you just said the fruits of the spirit. Well, so, you know, I mean what they call the fruits of the spirit. So what right. they call the fruits of the spirit are speaking in tongues and these sort of things. But what I feel is that those were for a sign and that yeah. they have passed. So in There's other words, a really good people... movie out right now that I'd recommend called Cessationist. And it's definitely worth the watch. And it's to that exact point. And, uh, it's put out by the same guys who did the American Gospel, and it is phenomenal. In fact, the pastor is featured, Pastor Jim Osmond, and it's the movie The Sensation Cessationist, available on uh, Amazon Prime and YouTube, and it is well worth the watch. And it talks about exactly what, what you just referred to. <laughs> and you want to hear something funny about it? What's that? I went on Amazon and I rented it, and then we didn't watch it because we got busy doing stuff, and I'm like, oh, we'll watch it tomorrow night. And then we forgot all about it, so I rented the movie for nothing. No, damn, it's may awesome. I, may I suggest something? Okay. Uh, A, get it on uh, Vimeo. Oh, Vimeo, okay. Because uh, that platform actually allows you to keep it. So. Well, please. Amazon will too, is if you don't, if you buy it. Yeah, but uh, uh, with uh, Vimeo, even if they were to remove the movie, you could still keep it, because uh, you could uh, you would get a backup copy. Then I got to pay for a subscription to Vimeo. And... I'm not uh, talking subscription. subscription. I'm no, talking just uh, paying out, right? just a few uh, dollars, and you can uh, oh, get, yeah, yeah. Uh, get to watch the movie and get a backup. Oh yeah, you do that on Amazon too. I just rendered it. Instead of All right, it. Tim, off the top of your head, can you name the nine fruits of the spirit? Go. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self control. And I that, missed one. You uh, did. That was eight. That was eight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, Josh, you going to show yeah. them up? Can you name all nine off the top of your head? No, I couldn't have named more than four. Oh, right, man. Mario, can you do it? Without cheating? Without cheating. <laughs> um, I'm trying to re uh, remember uh, what wasn't said. No, just it, it's easier if you just name them all. That way you don't yeah. miss them. Love. Okay, love, joy, and <laughs> peace. Um, kind uh. I have no idea uh, what, what, how your Bible translations are. It's okay, just go, things, go so. with the German. I'm okay with the German. Go ahead. <laughs> um, There's iron sharpening iron right here, boys and girls. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. You guys know. It's always funny to listen to people say it online and stuff because they'll be like, love, joy, peace, patience, and the rest of them. <laughs> it's all right. I'll say it since we're not here. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. There you go. Well done. Yeah, but uh, you already said the nine. No, no I, I didn't say eight. goodness last time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which is okay. every time I think of that, I think, man, the one I left out is probably the one I'm not doing. <laughs> well, nothing, uh, you nothing have wrong no with the nothing wrong with the fruits of the spirit. That's for sure. Nothing wrong at all. In German, it would be Liebe, Freude, Frieden, Geduld, Freundlichkeit, Güte, Treue, Rücksichtnahme und Selbstbeherrschung. Yeah, that's, like what I was, that's what I was thinking. weren't you thinking that? I know I was. <laughs> no 
Okay, so speaking in tongues, do you guys reckon that's passed, or, or are we still supposed to be doing that? Well, I mean, it depends on how you qualify tongues. If you're talking about the shenanigans that are happening right now, of course not. If you're talking about Wait the fact minute. that you need, you need to uh, be able to share the gospel in another language, and and you just automatically learn that language without any uh, sort of um, um, overhead to it that would involve uh, the kind of difficulty that you think about with learning a new language. There are people who have the gift. I, I, I wouldn't say that um, from the, the standpoint of what you see as the shenanigans, but I pick up languages really, really quickly. Um, but it's from... No, but that's not, that's, not, that's not the gift, though. All that I, is I will, what I'm, what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, what I'm talking about is people were prophesying yeah, in instantly. other languages instantly. that they did not know. So yeah, it was... That's, uh, that ceased. Uh, okay, I agree with that. So, but anyway, my point was, when you go to non-denominational, that's what you end up finding, is that um, people people trying to talk in tongues, you know, some of these... Some of these in some cases, it depends on... If yeah, I was going to say, it just depends on non-denominational. Say again. If, if, if it's charismatic, isn't it not non-denominational? <laughs> That's why I'm saying. You just got to check out the church, because if you try to go through these labels, I mean, our church is a non-denominational church, and it's solid, and I'm grateful for it. So you got to you got to go to the church, because there's other ones you go to, and they're nonsense. It so all you've depends just, on you've, the church. You've determined that your church is solid. So what do you think? Then back to my question originally. What did what would the what what would the letter be? Which letter would you give? In like Revelation. I said, I'm, oh. I'm not. I'm not able to apply those to my church in the way that I think they're looking for. Um, if I if I researched it, went to it, okay. But yeah. the the reality is for... not a dispensationalist. No, I'm not. I don't what even do know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> that God uses different dispensations throughout time to. It just means a different things. different times for different things. Yeah. But He does use different times for different things. That's why we have an he Old does. Testament and a New Testament. He does. That's that, then you are a dispensation. No, he's. I'm a he's, Christian. He would agree to probably three points of dispensationalism. Yeah. What what wouldn't I agree to, Tim, Mister? I'm gonna tell you what you agree and disagree to. Sure. What the, what me, would I not agree to? Let me bring up the seven points of dispensationalism. <laughs> <laughs> This sounds Calvinist. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I I mean, think, is that Calvinism? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Calvinism. A lot of, nope. a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of Calvinism is absolutely biblical. I would, I would make that argument that the only unbiblical thing about Calvinism is the name Calvinism. I bet every um, time Calvinist meets somebody who says I'm a Calvinist in heaven, he goes, oh, oh, will you stop using my name? And I would like to point out, uh, since apparently uh, some other people coined the term because they mistakenly thought that Calvin came up with all that stuff. Nope. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, uh, it that may, was it may have been originally a derogatory term because uh, something like, oh, yeah, you believe blah blah blah, so. Therefore, uh, you must be blah blah blah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Well, again, was Calvin the one that came up with it? No. Let's go back to August Augustine. Not even uh, Augustine came up with you that could stuff. Go back to Augustine, the Bible. And Augustine's not the one that came up with it either. You could go back even further than that, and let's just go back to Paul. <laughs> so, all the way back. Go back to God. Because God uh, uh, showed us in His Word, we are so utterly terrible, radically depraved. Not sure what happened, but somehow that happened. But anyway, um, I sent you um, two church directories. He's got his Xbox thing, so I'm not sure he's going to get those. Uh, oh, he should. He should. Okay. And he would, uh, if he doesn't get it on the Xbox, then uh, he at least gets it on the phone. 
Yeah, sorry guys, I'm trying to chow down my dinner here. No worries. Bon appétit. Also, I have no idea uh, if there is uh, any of uh, you German uh, viewers out there, but I'm gonna tell you. Evangelium bedeutet gute Nachricht. Die schlechte Nachricht ist, wir haben alle gesündigt und vergeben in Gottes Zorn. Doch Jesus Christus starb für uns alle Sünden, wurde begraben und am dritten Tage auferweckt. Nach der Bibel. Er fuhr in den Himmel auf und sitzt jetzt zu Rechten des Vaters. Jesus sagt, ich bin der Weg, die Wahrheit und das Leben. Niemand kommt zum Vater, außer durch mich. Die Zeit ist reif und das Reich Gottes ist nahe. Kehrt um und glaubt an das Evangelium. Amen. Thank you, Mario, for faithfully proclaiming the gospel in German. You're welcome. And I am grateful for that. And you know what? You never know who's going to be watching these videos. In fact, um, I have been constantly surprised when I go back to Twitch and I look at the views after we've had a long stream. We got, what, four people in here right now. I'll go back a week later and there'll be over a hundred sometimes even more views on the, the, the recorded uh, stream that people have watched after the fact. So you never know. I've had uh, Muslims from Saudi Arabia, you know, come back in and, um, you know, people... Dude, I'm, dude, 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 you sent me a Presbyterian? <laughs> I sent you something that I've heard of being good, sound churches. That's all. Presbyterians? No, sir. I mean, okay, Pres Presbyterians allow women preachers, first of all, that's... Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, 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 uh. No, not these, don't. not these. These are the Presby biblical ones. No, oh, these, not, oh, uh, okay, now that, not the user. that's interesting. Because I, I did, I did attend, what, what church was that we went to, me and John went over here? It was Methodist, right? Oh, where was it? <laughs> oh, I've been to a Presbyterian. Easy I know there's easy, uh, uh, easy Jim. <laughs> I know uh, I know for you guys just, there's Presbyterian just, USA. Those are the yeah, quote unquote uh, bad guys, same as the Lutherans that no longer uh, count the Bible as word of God and stuff like that. But these, the OPC and the PCA, those should yeah. still be solid. Yeah, that was you the got, difference. You got you got to you got to go to the USA. Church. <laughs> yeah, PCUSA is horrible, so yes. That's like, why I sent you OPC and PCA. Yes. That was thoughtful of you to try to do that, Mario. Thank you. This is important. While OPC.org makes every effort to obtain current information on each congregation, we recommend that you call ahead to confirm location and service time before you visit. Okay, so this, this is not, let's say, like uh, Southern Baptist, right? In other words, Southern Baptist is a convention. They send all their money. All of their uh, money goes to, or the missions funds, goes to the Southern Baptist Convention, and the Southern Baptist Convention decides where those funds are allocated. So is that is this similar to that? Because I'm a little against that. Like, in other words, is this a conglomerate? Like, like you go from one Presbyterian to the next, and you find the same thing in each place of, the, of this Presbyterian code of conduct and so on you see what i'm saying i think i do uh, see what you're saying and uh, i would say try and find uh, find out or uh, give me more of your location i will i will and, check uh, this i will out, uh, talk to my online elder and ask him about the church that would be close to you because okay. in here um the closest the closest one an hour and a half away. I'm not going there. Oh, really? You won't drive an hour and a half to get to a good church? I have driven an hour and a half to a bad church for years. So I should go to a good one, right? I drove I, I drove an hour and a half for four years <laughs> to get to a good church. Now we live by the grace that of was, God. Yeah, it was before gas was from. five bucks an hour. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, right. I know. I was driving a Dodge five bucks Diesel. An hour. You got it about right. Five bucks an hour. Where we were paying for seven miles per gallon. So that was a dually and that was a big mistake. But the whatever it takes to get to a good church. Whatever it takes. 
And I would Dang. like to know five dollars, uh, five dollars per gallon. You guys have it cheap. Come nah, on. We know, we know you're in Germany. We know. Well, diesel. Costs I'm not in money. Germany. Or I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> refresh my memory. Where are you at? Austria. Austria. Thank you. I was gonna say Austria, <laughs> but I thought I'd shut my mouth. <laughs> So we okay, have, uh, what, what is it, work out serious. to a gallon for you? Take me to 1420 Rock Springs Road. Let me, uh, let me check uh, with the one uh, up the street quickly. Uh, one moment, I, I'm converting. <laughs> you do not need exact numbers, just round, round it up. Yes, I know, but I need to convert after all, because we use different measurements than you guys. <laughs> Yeah, we're still waiting uh, for that metric dollar. It's time for you to use liters, just saying. It would make things so much easier. <laughs> hey man, I, I remember doing a... Um... How many liters of pop did you pour into your fuel tank? <laughs> <laughs> I remember all doing right. uh, all the work on my Bobcat and having a double set of wrenches. I had to have my metrics and I had to have my standards. Figuring out which screw on the side of the machine was what was always a pain in the chickens. I hear ya. Nice. It actually dropped by now. We're uh, we're down to seven dollars. That's not bad. Yep. When I was in we Italy, used, it was, uh, uh, pay, uh, it was $8 way more than gallon. eight. Yeah, when I was in Italy, it was eight dollars a gallon. When were you in Italy? Uh, from ninety to ninety-four. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now, because uh, I was, uh, if you had been here recently, then I would have been so mad that you uh, didn't show up on my doorstep. You no. Know? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be happy to visit you if I'm ever in Austria, but that would require me to get on a plane. And good Lord willing, I hope I'll never have to get on a plane again. I hear that, but uh, you know, there's ocean liners too. I would, I wouldn't be opposed to a boat necessarily. Uh, but I don't know. After some of the news, after the whole COVID thing, when then people get trapped on a very nice cruise ship for however long it was three months. No way. Good thing God is it. sovereign and in control. Uh, yeah. Okay, That's yeah. Why I an said hour. good Lord willing. I said good Lord willing. <laughs> okay, we make it a hot air minutes. balloon next for you. Okay. Uh, hot air balloon. That's good. <laughs> Or maybe we can uh, get a train across the ocean. Well, here's the good news. There will be a day and age, very soon, where instead it will just simply be, Hey, brother, here we are in eternity, and we have all this time to fellowship and be together and enjoy great food, and all I'm going to say is the first round of apple fritters were on me. In fact, the second round of apple fritters will also be on me. Nice. Looking forward to that. I am not eating anything. That's on you. I don't care if it's your shoulder or if it's on your Easy. head. Easy. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, <laughs> we always we always joke in our family when when mom says it's time to eat, people, and punctuation saves lives. <laughs> yep, it does. Pronunciation does too, at least in German. <laughs> there is that. No, but uh, you know, uh, as for uh, visits and stuff, who knows? Um, I'm still praying for uh, for God to open the door for me to make it to the states. Oh, you want to come over? Oh, I definitely want to come over sometime. What? Especially for a visit, uh, as or are you in... trying to move. Um, I would also like to move sometime. Would be nice. Are you anywhere close to Atlanta? God. Um. I am. I'm about an hour and a half from Atlanta. Okay. Promise, Tim uh, can't I, find any good churches over there either. What's that? I said what? Tim can't find any good churches over there either. Well, the, 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 have things changed, Tim? No. I'm still driving right, two hours to church. Did you, you find a good one two hours church away? Church I Sorry. didn't hear anything. I heard two people talking. <laughs> I said, do you want the church directory links then too? <laughs> I mean, 
you could send them. They're not going to do you any good. Dude. I you know. never know, Tim. I've, you never I've, know. I've looked at them all. There's none out there. See, I'm, I'm, I'm in your boat where I've been to, you know, 50, 60 churches, and uh, I'm not looking for that much, really. I just want a Bible believing church rather that's than that's a lot to ask for that's I mean, a he, lot to ask for joyce meyer said her church is a bible believing church i understand that yeah <laughs> but um but yeah i mean so i'll, I'll give you uh, my brother's church i went to his church and um the reason he left the original church that we were both in and we were both in a bus ministry there and he was the driver and i was the captain and uh he got kicked out um no i'm sorry he didn't get kicked out he he got he got all of his positions stripped away so he wasn't allowed to be the bus driver teaching sunday school any of the, any of that any longer because um the sunday school teacher had his daughter and she was teaching how liquor was a sin and, and alcohol was a sin and she had a face that begged the question and she said what's wrong Lily and Lily said well my dad drinks alcohol and so as soon as they found that out he was stripped of all of his um, his titles there or his positions I should say or his jobs um, and so when they kicked him I didn't feel like that was that was right obviously so I went and had a talk with the pastor we, we could not agree and so I went to my brother's church and um, I had a question there, and I asked the question, and a woman answered me. And I, I tell you what, fellas, I just think that if you're a Bible-believing church, women ought not be answering questions or asking questions in church, um, just only because the Bible says it. I'm okay. I, I love women. They're dear to me. I have a lot of them at my house. Um, some of my fondest memories of women in the church, in the school system. Um, but uh, but there's a reason for what the Bible says, and there always is a reason, whether it's outside of our understanding or not. Um, and so anybody that doesn't go along with that, I don't want to meet with them. Um, so I reckon I have a high standard. I don't know. I wouldn't think so. I would just think that, like, you ought to stick with the Scriptures. Um, so... Well, again, there's room to grow in that and help others as well. Galatians 6 1 says, If anyone's in there, you come to them in a spirit of love and gentleness to help correct that. But, you know, again, do you agree on the gospel? Is the really, I mean, are we keeping the main thing the main thing? There's the second, there's more than that, for me. And let me, let me Let me give you an example of, of why that's a little bit in error, I think. Uh, if two men do not agree they're not going to be together okay and it can be on anything i mean if i disagree with you on something and i think it's important that we'll we'll separate uh we won't have each other's company for very long because how can two men walk together unless they agree right sure. but now i feel like when, when Christ said it into one of the churches, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What he was saying was, I'm on the outside. Y'all on the inside, but I'm on the outside. And the reason he was on the outside is because they, he didn't agree what they what they wanted to do. Um, and so so when you say that the only thing, you know, that the main thing is the gospel and, and do we have a full understanding of, of how someone comes to Christ, that's that disagrees with what God says, in my opinion, because... He, he required, he told that one church, he didn't tell them their gospel was incorrect. He said, you hate the way of the Nicolaitans. You hate the way of, uh, I don't remember the other people. He said, you hate their ways. I hate their ways. He said, but you've left love, right? Go back to the, to the love that you had at first, right? So if you disagree with the Lord on anything, you'll not walk with him. So because he'll, he'll, he'll be outside knocking. And for me, I don't, I don't need to go to church to learn the Bible, right? I've already learned the Bible. I've been in church for a lot of years. But what I do, what I do desire, is to be in a place where God walks through the center of it and makes Himself known there. Now, I don't need speaking in tongues. I don't need any of that. 
But I know when God's there. I, I've, I've, I've been around him. I know when he's present. Now, you say, God's everywhere. Well, that's a cop-out because he was outside of that church. You see what I'm saying? So he might be everywhere, but at the same time, he stood outside and wasn't in there. So what I find is that there is no church where Christ walks the center of the aisles because there is no place that fully agrees with him. And I, I fully feel like that is what leads to the falling way of the saints. I'm not saying that uh, I'm trying to lead the way. <laughs> I'm still looking for a church. And I was excited when I saw that, when I heard your explanation of the Presbyterian from your country. I, I was excited to see because I feel like if I went to Africa, I could find a good church right now. I feel like if I went to China, I could find a good church. Um, but I feel like in America, it's going to be a long shot, a real long shot. And that's why I asked you what, what you would say, which, which church is yours in the Bible? Because if you're telling me it's one of the two that had, that had no complaints, then I'd, I'd, I'd want to go there. I mean, I really would. I'd, I'd want to talk to the wife about how we could make it there. But, uh, but I don't, I've not found that in my experience, in my journey. And it's going to be a I've, long I've, trip to Sandpoint, but it would be well worth it, I'm here to tell you. I've done due diligence in the matter. Um, I found nothing. Well, I sent you a link to our YouTube channel, and I would uh, encourage you to watch any of the videos our, sir, our pastor is going through the book of Hebrews right now. And he's been in it for years, and uh, it's been an amazing study, and I'd encourage you to check it out. The one thing I would say about your, your question there is when two people agree on the gospel and understand what the gospel message says, that's an agreement on the scripture. Again, it goes back to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped with every good work. You're welcome. I'll be here all day. Yeah, I quote from King James, bro. I, I grew up on the King James, and, and sometimes it's a bit alien for me to hear those other versions. But, uh, but yeah, uh, here's the thing, though, my friend. The Lord agreed with them on what they were doing wrong, right. But he disagreed with them on what they'd done wrong, and because of it, he wasn't with them anymore. So, you know... It, no matter no matter what you tell me at this point, I mean, if, if it's if we can just agree on the gospel, we can be together. That's not real. Uh, uh. We can, and, no, excuse me, excuse me. We can be together, but the Lord won't be there if He disagrees with something that we are practicing or something that we are teaching. All right, hold on a second, because I gotta I gotta introduce you to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, you're hearing uh, our, our latest uh, uh, fellow camper on our art Christian camp here, Josh. And Josh is a uh, King James guy. Josh, this is Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah is a King James guy. And Jeremiah oh, loves to torture me because I wrote chapter verse, and he knows chapter verse has a King James edition for it, and he loves... I didn't say you were a King James only guy. Those words did not come out of my mouth. Stop doing that to me. I didn't say I said you're a King James guy. Right? I can't did hear I... him. No, he's in the chat. He's in the Twitch chat. You're not going to hear him. Although he oh. could join, he could join our Discord, Discord. But I don't know. He might be. Uh, he might be too good to uh, to to come in and join our humble uh, conversation here. He's you know he's a busy guy. He's got a lot going on. Um, but uh, I'll I'll drop it in there and see if he if he comes in and shares his King James goodness with us. So, hey, buddy, you're invisible. Well, I, I will say that I've had I've found error in some of the uh, in some of the translations. Um, grievous oh, error. Hold on, hold the phone. Jeremiah has graced us with his presence. Yay, that, Jeremiah! That welcome, brother. Right to the thing. I did. I did not expect to be just yeeted in here. And <laughs> I, I'm here, <laughs> apparently. Welcome. How you doing, brother? Hi. You got you got somebody else to uh, die and thou with, uh, uh, Josh. Meet uh, Jeremiah. That's uh, Ping there. Uh, Ping meet Josh. That's Hebrew, and you know Mario and uh, Tim's here as well. 
How, how art thou? <laughs> IVF good. <laughs> I completely forgot what I was doing. That's awesome. Okay, so, so before Thanksgiving, my family got together to sort of plan the meal. And my sister and I was teasing our mom and we were speaking King James. Like in the King James like <laughs> English. And we were like at a, like a diner and everything. And my mom really gets embarrassed a lot with us. And so we were like speaking for like a good several minutes. Just everything we would say, we were putting thous and bees and ifs and... <laughs> Too yeah, funny. Too funny. doing the well, uh, prayers at dinner. Would you like to pray, son? I would. <laughs> oh, <laughs> holy yeah, and yeah. great is the Lord. <laughs> Going through I will, I will say this, prayer. fellas, and this this to me uh, was sort of pivotal on, on, on which version, but I, I started with King James because I was in a church that, boy, they preached it, golly, every Sunday. King James only, you know, they, they had no meat. They just had the King James only and modest apparel and, you know, these sort of things, right? So, but when I got away from that whole that whole class of folk, uh, I started reading the NIV and I thought, well, this is an easy read, you know. Uh, but I, I, I was reading it. I was reading it one day and I thought, what in the world does, that doesn't seem right. So I went, I went to the King James. Bro, it was opposite. I'm talking about it was absolutely the opposite meaning. It it uh, it was nowhere near the same meaning. So I made a choice that day that I wasn't going to go with any other translation, save the save the one that I consider to be the first in English. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to I don't want to you know argue that, but uh, I would say that yeah I would say that it's the preserved word of God. Tim, that's you, right? The faithful and insight. Yeah. But yeah, and I'm not mad. I'm not mad at anybody that reads the other books, like the NIV or the New American Standard or any of that. But I would let them know that. I would always let them know that I have found contradictions uh, in 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 other translations, and there are people that are a lot more adamant about it than I am, and that could take you down a much deeper path on on that subject. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking of a guy right now that uh, he was very into that. He, he did his due diligence to study that, and he he is more convinced than I that King James is the only version for him. But uh, I'm not that good at convincing on that. I've not done the same study he has. But I will say that hey, if the I am King a King James, James only guy. If the King James was good enough for Paul, the King James is good <laughs> enough for all. Oh yeah. Oh, you know Paul does not have a King James. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so. The, the thing what, that, what do you say? What do you What do you say, King James guy? Or I mean, are you King James only for I'm, a reason? Or I'm not King James only. I should be clear. Oh, you're not. Yeah, I and, I, and just for, and just for the record, I did not say you were King James only. I just said you're a King James guy. Yeah, and I put only in your mouth, and then I, I exactly. blamed you. <laughs> there you were putting unfaithful words in a faithful brother's mouth. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jeremiah. Appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome anytime. Uh, My yeah, biggest I... argument against uh, KGB only would be if if it really was KGB only. Come on, not everyone knows English. I'm just thinking of my no, parents. No, no one's no one's no one's saying no one's saying for Germans. We're saying for the English-speaking folk. So, if yeah, we're even talking then, about uh, that, I find you the King James version. They, I mean, I've seen this in many different churches. Yeah. But um, one thing that they they use the King James version for is intimidation. And so who does? I find that a lot. A lot of the churches that use King James. Okay. I have features. Intim intimidation? How? How? Yeah, uh, as an example. Well, again, um, well, let's just say, because you never, I don't know exactly what I've, uh, I've been to an IOP church where the guy will say, he'll take some portion of, of scripture, and then, All right. uh, I'm an IFB, by it, the way. Yeah. Right, That's well, my for those, it, it, for those of you who don't know, like, I don't, what does IFB stand for? Independent. 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 Middle Baptist. 
which sometimes I even wonder if those are Christians. <laughs> um, so now, obviously, well, at least one of them are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, obviously, having this conversation with you, I can tell you've read your Bible uh, within a couple of words. Like, have you even read your Bible? Like, do you even know what's contained in it? The last IFB guy pastor that I talked with, uh, I said I'm a five point Calvinist Reformed Baptist. And he says, how is it you live in western Nebraska, and how did you become a five-point Calvinist? I said, because I read my Bible, and he didn't know what to say. <laughs> now, there are some IFB... I've not studied, I've not studied Calvinism, so, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. There, there are some IFB people, and I think it's a very extremely small minority, that would say if you're not saved out of the King James, then you're not saved at all. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of like cult level size of oh, people. Yeah. That's the new um, independent fundamental. Yeah. Um, the, and, and, oh, new and, IFB? Nip. Yeah. Nip. They're running <laughs> people out of churches. Um, it, it's, and it's like, while my church, my church, so the term fundamental, like fundamentalist there's there's two ways it's usually used um there's usually the like ifb where it's fundamental with king james only and such and then there was back in the 20s or 30s there was the uh, modernist versus fundamental controversy um and that was basically the defending against like um like was it was uh, the Virgin Mary? Was she a virgin when she, you know, gave birth to Jesus? And I, you know, and miracles, and it was what we would call liberalism today. Um, and so, like my church would say, we're fundamental. We're a fundamental Baptist church, but we very much are not a IB or IFB. Um, I mean, in that church when I was growing up. We did use King James a lot, but I think that was because it was cheap. Those Bibles were cheaper to buy and give to kids. Um, I so like, I mean, like we 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 won't. We've never been King James only, and I, but I, I really think because of we just it was a cost thing. It was always cheaper just to give King James materials to kids, and we didn't have that much money. That's what it is. It's an entryway scripture. You see how it happens. They give it to the kids. They get them addicted. <laughs> you there. get what you pay for. <laughs> and, and like, and that's part of the reason why I like King James is because it's kind of, it's just it's familiar, the way the passages. Go yeah, and flow. it's readily available, which seems yeah. like something God would have done. You see what I mean? <laughs> it just, I mean, there's like part of. Part of the reason why I use it is because it's familiar, and I kind of and I kind of do like the sound of the King James. It's not copyrighted either. Yeah, well, it's copyrighted in Britain, but if you're not in Britain, you'll be fine. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it, the Crown holds the copyright in Britain. And in fact, if you look in like the U version app, or whatever on the bottom, they always have like the copyright thing. It says copyright the Crown on the bottom, but because I'm not under the Crown, because I live in the free country of America. I, I, it's on the public domain. But it's like the thing, the thing that people, I feel like when it comes to translations, the thing, the thing that people always uh, assume when it comes to like King James versus like ESV or NAS or anything is that it's a translation. It like translating of the, like does, does Lagos actually mean water? or does it mean banana or whatever? Okay, like, the people, that's like what people seem to think when they hear some of these arguments is that it's translating like that, but it's not a translation issue. It's a manuscript and what's included in the manuscripts. If you look at uh, the different passages in the Bible, I mean, let's use the one in Mark that Peter used for so many years. Uh, that that yes. one. I wa I didn't say it. I was just thinking it really hard. And 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 yeah. the I I believe it's in the Alexandrian text family. It's not there, and that's it. But in like the Byzantine and Texas Receptus, it is there. 
And that's why the King James used it, because that's the manuscripts they had available when they translated. I didn't say a word, man. I'm just like, I'm going to... I just, I love, oh, um, do me a favor, Jeremiah. Would you yeah. please share with us, are you in a biblically sound Christian church? I would say I am, yes. All right, and what is the, what is the denomination of that church? Uh, independent Baptist is usually what I tell people because when you say fundamental, people think things that I don't mean. So, like I, so like I was saying, we're fundamental in the sense that we hold tightly to what the Bible says over, you know, what society says. Um, which sounds like a basic Christian. Yeah, thing. but they don't. They don't on everything, and that's why I parted with them. I was just telling these guys, as far as my brother was ran out of. Him and I both were independent fundamental Baptists, but we started believing differently. But we felt like the independent fundamental Baptist was, in these parts, the closest that we could get to the Bible, the the yeah. Bible Church, right? So, but. When they found out that we disagreed with them by accident, uh, they 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 took away my brother's rights. Uh, yeah. As, as, okay. So when when they found that out, they took it away, and we couldn't walk together anymore because we disagreed. So when 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 and my brother was prepared to to conform to their belief system. He was, he said, "I will do this," and he and my, his wife said, "You should not." And I agree with her. I don't, you know, I, I just, I 100% agreed with her. But uh, but I understand where he was coming from, too, because what does it leave you with? If you disagree with the most, to the people that are closest to the Bible that you can find, what does it mean when you disagree with them and cannot serve there? It means that you're, you're alone. You're lonely. That's what it means. So... You know, so is, I would, he in, is he in a solid church now? He's in a church. Uh, I wouldn't call it a solid church at all. What? Well, uh, uh, Jeremiah, maybe you, can text, maybe you can text uh, Josh where your church is at. I don't know how close you guys are. I never know. Based off his accent, I don't think he's anywhere near me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but so you um, can't just base things off an accent. Uh, he, he also mine. said something about a Midwest state, so. Alright, I just thought I'd throw it out there. I mean, I don't. It's state of New York. I don't think you're near the state of New York. I'll put it that. I mean, it's just south of you. If you got a good arm. <laughs> um. So, someone had mentioned, like, what denomination I'm in. So, I would say Independent Baptist. And I would say we're a fundamental independent Baptist. And so I'll break down that. So Baptist, so with the Baptist, it means, you know, we're Baptist. We, we hold immersion, <laughs> baptism, and the independent part means that we believe the local Baptist church should be in charge of the local Baptist church. And I agree with that. And it, what I mean, and sort of what I mean by that is like the Methodists, they have a whole hierarchy Agreed. and everything. And while that has some benefits to it, we believe that the local church is the best to make the decision of what happens with the church. And the fundamental, that's, that's the complicated, difficult bit because uh, a lot, because some people would say fundamentals King James only, but I, but like the way, the way we talk about fundamentals in our church is we would say, what we stand by that is that miracles happened in the Bible as they are described, that it was the Virgin Mary, and that we got to stand for the gospel. And we, the big one that kind of sticks in people's fall is biblical separation. And that, that boils down See? to when do you, when do you stop fellowship as a church? When do you stop fellowshipping with an other church? That usually gets in people's fall because what a did lot you say? of time, when do you stop what? When do you stop fellowship? Ecumenicism. Yeah. That. Well, that's why I whispered when you said there's good things about the Methodist Church. I said, don't 
<laughs> That's no, why I, you got I, homosexuality. Yeah, in women I, I meant I met this, this type of structure. To be clear, I meant the type of structure that they have where it's all sort of connect. They're all sort of connected to each other. Because you can like, re, you can move resources around and like there's. Yeah, but the Independent Baptist is all about separation. It's a lot about yeah. separation. Not all about it. It's a lot about it. But I agree with them because the Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Yeah, right. and and the thing people don't like is that our church isn't as strict, but we do kind of hold to this. Like, we as a church would not fellowship. I'm going to use Billy Graham as an example here because I feel like he's a huge um, We we as a church would not donate to the Billy Graham Foundation, and we wouldn't have people volunteer. We wouldn't send people to volunteer at a local crusade. And that's and, because of your standards, correct? It's, it's, yeah, I mean, that's a big part of it. And it's like, the thing is, like, the Billy Graham, if you look at how they would do it, you get the invitational saying, oh, if you want to, you know, accept Jesus into your life or whatever. Um, Easy believism. Universalist. It, he, he also, the way he did it is he would have Catholic priests and, like, Protestant pastors and such. And if someone grew up in, like, a Catholic church, they would send them to the Catholic priest. So it's so so the way churches would see it in the sense of uh, doing something like that. If we sent people to. Uh, Are you sure about that? That's about Billy Graham. Are you sure about that? I've never heard that. I I I mean I don't know in the sense of I. I've read yeah, everything I've, I've, about him, but yeah, what it looks I've like heard, he... I've heard a similar story. Billy Graham was a universalist. He was, yeah. He was very focused on, you know, everybody together. It didn't matter if you were Roman Catholic or... That's very, yeah. Yeah, very ugly. That's very ugly. Yeah. There's, there's an argument to be made, and I, I think it's legitimate, that he did actually a lot of harm uh, to the gospel in his outreaches because he was, he was really trying to get the numbers... And not more focused on preaching yeah. or the, the true gospel, and that's that's we're dealing with the outcome of that right now in our own family, because my wife's um, father uh, was at a Billy Graham um, crusade and gave his life quote to Christ, he welcomed Jesus into his heart, and got inoculated with, from the gospel, and he yeah. never had any any even semblance of being a follower of Jesus Christ and if you try to share the gospel with him he is convinced beyond any ability to to shake him that because he um, was at this conference and came forward and was uh, you know part of that Billy Graham crusade that that he's yeah. saved and he doesn't yeah. need to worry about it and, yeah and, but, but I'm too much of a Calvinist to blame that on Billy Graham in <laughs> other words in other words, well, that's part of how he ran his crusades, though. No, no, was... that's not my point. That's not my point. Billy Graham, Billy Graham, Billy Graham is is definitely at fault. I'm just not. I'm just saying that guy will not be able to blame Billy Graham on Judgment Day. You see what I'm no, saying? No, I agree with you there. Yeah. I'm saying he did harm to our ability to proclaim the gospel to her father because he's been inoculated, so to speak, yeah. from the gospel by this. And by this work that Billy Graham did, he was Billy Graham was not batting for our team, in in how he right. handled that situation and with her dad. Yeah, you, you, whether or not he would be truth. saved or not is is a different yeah. story. and that that's what I'm talking about. He wasn't being helpful, and that's why like my church wouldn't do anything with him, even if he said the right words. It's because he had those kind of positions, and it's like, no, you're not standing for the truth of the Bible. And so it's like that, and that that kind of gets people don't like it when you take a stance like that when it comes to separation, because they're like, oh well, yeah, he, but he said the gospel right. Yeah, he might have said the words of the gospel right. And I'm sure people became Christians from something he did, but that doesn't. Yeah, but if you only give a half gospel. It's not the gospel. Yeah. I'm sorry. I gotta defer to Mario here because he's wanting me to ask a question. Mario, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. If you could ask your question. <laughs> I'm sure they'd be happy to answer you, um, but I'm, you can you can jump in, dude. This is an open conversation. I'm, no, the, uh, this, I'm, uh, this is just, for, uh, for what you said there. What I said? Yeah. But you just said, ask him. 
the one person that isn't a Christ follower. You talking about my father-in-law? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, he's, yeah, we can have that conversation later on. I'm just saying he's, 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 every time you try to talk to him, like I have, one of the, one of the conversations that I love having with people who, you know, Mormon or Muslim or whatever, that I've always found to be of a great asset in, in shaking that, um, that false foundation they're on is I'll say, and, and it was funny because I just heard Josh say a little bit ago. Um, and it's and it's a good question to ask. If you die today, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you'd be going to heaven without any doubt at all? And normally, if you catch somebody who's who's in one of these other religions, um, they'll they'll start to shake. There, they'll start to well, I hope so, or you know, you know, maybe or stuff like that. A lot of good stuff in my life. Yeah, but for her, um, for her dad, he'll look me right in the eye and go, yeah. Because I was I was at this Billy Graham conference and I I gave my life to Christ and it's it's I've only had it happen a couple of times where it wouldn't shake people at all even then I walk them through the law and I bring up their own their their standing before God and their sin and and with him he is he is unflappable and yet there is there is no chance the man saved and so well I, I've I've got a similar story uh, my twin brother uh, Jeremiah in fact. Um, he'll tell you that he's born again. There's no way ifs, ands, or buts. But I'll tell you right now that he's not. Yeah. So, um, That's going to be hard. Now, That's your twin brother? One will be, two will be working in the field. One will be gone, and the other will still be there. You know, it says that very clearly, that, that you'll have brothers and sisters out, out working, and two, two will be there, and only one will go. So... In my opinion, this is not, not not this is more the norm than anything, you know, than than anything else. This is going to be this is going to be what happens. I, would I say. know it, just, it breaks my heart to hear that. That's all. Well, it does me too, uh, but at this but at the same time, I'll leave all and go with you. So, uh, yeah. But he's he's yeah. still alive. You still have time. My my brother OD'd on meth. In fact, the year I was saved. And he's, there's. There's no hope for him, but there's still hope for your brother. What's his name? Jeremiah. Jeremiah? Well, we're going to take a minute now, and we're going to pray for uh, Jeremiah, because I can't imagine that your your heart, is, your twins, I can't imagine your heart is anything but for him to be saved. So if you guys will join me in prayer for Jeremiah, I would be grateful. Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you knowing you are um, sovereign, and we are grateful for that. We, we rest in that, and, and yet we, we come to you with, with hearts that just desire Jeremiah uh, to truly repent and put his faith and trust in your son and be saved and, and join us as uh, true brothers in Christ. And Lord, we know that um, this is impossible without the the work that only you can do it's a miracle lord and we pray you would do it you would be glorified through it and we ask this knowing that um that only by uh, your work in our own lives would we not be going uh to that place we deserve which is an eternity in, in hell and yet you loved us and you saved us and even though we didn't deserve it we will be enjoying eternity uh, with your son and with uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, a multitude beyond counting, praising a good and loving God for saving wretched sinners like us. And Father, we pray Jeremiah will be there. We ask this all in Jesus Christ's name, our King and Savior, my hero. Amen. 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 Wow, great conversations today. We had Nathaniel earlier uh, who brought up that he was a little off his game today because he's been so distracted by the great conversations we've been having. And I, I fully well agree with that. It has been quite the quite the blessing. So thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. We're going to do this some more. I enjoyed it, too. I, I've, uh, I've been listening to guys tell me how they're gods and elite. All this stuff. I'll tell you what, bro. I'm powerfully annoyed at this point. I enjoy PvP now. Don't, don't hate me for it, but uh, no, no, no problem. Yeah, but but I but I don't enjoy PvP as it is. In other words, um, I'm 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 a defense guy, so I do not I don't attack people. I I only defend. 
And so I've always enjoyed that. But the people that, if you, there's no one on Earth like that. I'm the only dude that, that likes that. I'm the only dude that acts like that. I've not found another. I've put out different ads and all that. And I thought, man, if I could be around Christians, uh, you know, after you told me you were PVE, bro, that was a little bit earth shattering. But, uh, uh, I'm sorry. If I could only be around Christians and go kill them. I'm sorry, <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah, every, everyone has their convictions. There's no doubt. But so uh, what I'm basically saying is, is that, uh, you know, it's still, I would, I would give up that PVP to hang out and talk for a while. Well, you're most welcome. Peter, don't you do uh, no fighting in Fortnite? I do. Yeah. I mean, that just like looks like a fun, fun way to play that game. It, it I actually, agree. I I found it to be very challenging and and a lot of fun personally. I exactly. I think it's it's way better than than playing the regular one. And it was very exciting as I'm sitting there hiding in a bush, you know, two feet away. Two guys are duking it out with the last three, and I'm like, what's gonna happen next? You know and so it's it's been it's been an interesting thing there, but I was always very thoughtful of wanting a clean testimony of being able to have a conversation with somebody and wanting to talk to them about how I love them and not have to worry about them saying, well, yeah, but you were that guy who killed me that one day and, and you know did a did a Fortnite dance on my my you know, my boss <laughs> and, I, and I didn't want that to come across in, in a in a way. What was that, Tim? I know we're the last two, but before you shoot me, I'll let yeah. you do it. I don't have a gun. <laughs> how does that? How does that DayZ play out like that? How, how do you I, do it on oh, DayZ? Oh, DayZ is so profitable, so profitable for sharing the gospel. Um, it is. It's the evangelism of our ministry. That is the game we're using right now until we find one better. Uh, so Ark is where we've been investing just recently, just to get the camp built up and get everything stabilized and get. I gotta get my rank guy up enough so I can make stuff for people. And we can do the boss battles and stuff, but I'll be returning to Daisy uh, regularly throughout the week, uh, just because well, it's such a great environment to share the gospel. Well, okay, so so wait a minute, wait a minute. Why wouldn't you why wouldn't you do the same thing with Ark like that you're doing oh, with Daisy? Oh, don't get me wrong. I share the gospel with Ark, but the way Ark is configured and it's the Ark Christian camp, most of the people who come in here either a are like you, where they've met me online and are like, oh, I want to come fellowship with other believers and or it's somebody who is uh one of the kids who have seen me in daisy or something like that already heard the gospel and, and then come in here there's not the same sort of open air evangelistic opportunity most of the people i'm interacting with on yeah, art, i guess i guess i guess what i'm asking i guess what i'm asking is on daisy you're with the public arena you're in the yeah. you're in a public okay so what i'm saying is why wouldn't you be in the public arena on art so I so am, basically, but it's different. Oh, you're okay, saying no, no, why no. not go play in public servers? Okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. So with like like you've got signs up that have scripture here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But only Christians are gonna see those. I'm I'm not I'm not talking bad about the idea of what you have here. I'm just saying it's not the same as Day Z. So so this is basically like a church. Right. Day Z is an outreach. Oh, 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 yeah. So, this is, this is, this is not a church. The other one no, is sir. evangelism. No, this is like this is like you could call this a Christian camp, and I will agree with that. But this is not like the church, no sir. But that's where Christians go. So what I'm saying is, so so what I'm saying is, disciple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So are you saying this is just a different? This this is what you wanted for this, and then you you want the outreach for the other one. It's not right. that what I want. It's just the way things work. This this tends to be more of a discipleship environment. Daisy is more open air evangelism. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. We get we get reoccurring people here. Very rarely do I ever run into the same person twice on Daisy. Very very rarely. With our Christian camp, the Art Christian camp, most of the people who are coming in here are regulars, and they return regularly, and they're they're here every once in a while. We get the outlier, but they usually don't. I usually don't get enough chance to bump into them yet to even get a chance to share the gospel with them. And because the, the interaction is longer term, it tends to be more uh, acclimated game mechanics wise to discipleship. Where DayZ is more game mechanics wise to evangelism. I'll do it in either. And we have tried that. We built a whole camp out in DayZ and it was a complete disaster. And as far as art goes, I just don't get those organic, I meet somebody for the first time from anywhere and get a chance to share the gospel. So you got to use the right tool for the job. I got you.
Now I sent you my Missionary Gamer YouTube channel and you you can easily see curated videos that I have on there that are both Daisy and Ark and Fallout and No Man's Sky and what are PUBG? I tried PUBG and couldn't make it work. Tried PUBG, tried Scum, tried Rust, tried um You gotta have somebody in there with you. Well, the problem is you gotta have enough time to talk to somebody. There's gotta be good audio channels. I got a bunch of a bunch of game mechanics that I look for. I'm, I'm just I thinking how. Me. I'm just thinking how much. Like, I'm just thinking about the contrast. Like, what? How? How stark the contrast would be. I'm amused by the idea that, that of of a Christian plan that is not aggressive. No, in this go game, watch my videos. Go watch my videos. In, in this game, I mean, in a public arena. The problem is you you, you don't get enough time to talk to. Them. You don't. Not no, in they, chat they, or not on the no, signs. The, I mean, there's the, got to be. Well, and for the record, for the record, I haven't tried it yet in with the new version of Art because the old uh, local area chat was so terrible that um, it was just it was it would it was terrible. No, no, I said technology was bad. With the new local area chat on a public server, maybe it's a good thing. Uh, I'll be open to that. But the mechanics well, yeah, of the but, game. But, but why not? Why not just you simply use? Why not simply use the uh, uh, the global? So if you're using global and you're texting your your conversation, right? So then you can present the gospel there. If you have a bite, then it's just a it's just I've an invite to the party. But I guess what I'm saying is, it just amuses me the thought of not even a neutral plan, but a passive plan. I've never even heard of that. You see what I'm saying? That's the way I play. That's the way. But I that's roll. Not, yeah, but I'm just saying what the, how stark that contrast would be. Well, and, that's with Daisy. Not only, that's that's what it is too, because everybody in Daisy is just killing each other. Exactly, and I, but I and that. same, same with art, same with art. I mean, uh, it's well, the, the, most... the big difference though is at least with DayZ, they need you if you because what I do is I stabilize my character in DayZ and then I have gear, and so as soon as I meet somebody before they get a chance to kill me and steal the gear, I just start giving it to them, and that just blows their mind right there. They're like, "What? What are you doing? Why are you being so nice to me?" And that leads me into well, I'm missionary gamer. Um, I'm here. This is part of my ministry. That's I'm a good, yeah. On Twitch. And by the way, may I ask you a question? And they're like, sure, you know, because they're happy they got some gear and stuff, and they're expecting me to say some twitchy thing like, what's your favorite part of the game or something like that? And I'll say, what do you think happens when we die? No, no, not in the game, but in the real world. And that, then they go, what? What just happened? And so if you watch my YouTube channel, you'll see where that goes. And it's it's very profitable on, on Daisy. Profitable how? Have you have you seen people come to Christ, you're saying? All right, Peter, I'm going to kick off out of here. You out of here, Tim? All right, God be with you, brother. Thank you for joining us. Nice See you, Tim. See you, Josh. See you tomorrow. So when I say profitable, I mean profitable to have the opportunity to actually share the gospel. That's that's yes. the part that the best I can hope for as far as my, my uh, participation in the work that the good Lord does is I'm hoping that I will run into somebody that they won't kill me long enough for me to proclaim the gospel to them. And if I get the added bonus, I can pray for them. And that's usually about as, as good as I can hope for, because usually by then I'm dead. So I've had people kill me in the middle of praying for them or in the middle of sharing the gospel with them or all kinds of bizarre situations that have happened in day Z. And um, it's, it, so that's when I say it's profitable. It's profitable where I actually get the chance to share the gospel. Where, where's where's my uh, strict IFB guy? Jeremiah? Jer is that his I'm, name, Jeremiah? Okay. I'm not yeah. strict. I'm just ah! kidding, dude. <laughs> that's all just banter. I'm just kidding. Okay, okay. Hey, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, that's, uh, I don't know what that's called. But anyway, he's lying. It's called <laughs> so giving somebody a hard time. Hard time. Yeah, it gives somebody yeah. a hard time. But hey, um, no, I'm, dude, I'm the, I, I have the same beliefs you do, say probably just a couple. Uh, but but at any rate, uh, have you led anyone to Christ? I bet you have. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I've, 
I oh, should... Andrew, Andrew joined us. Hey, Andrew. Hey, he's been here for a while. I'm sorry, I don't have the Discord thing. <laughs> I gotta watch YouTube, I gotta watch Discord, I gotta watch all these things. So. I mean, I've I've shared the gospel with people. You have? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, mean, I don't know a lot. Peter share the gospel. I've known people who are saved through hearing the gospel. Yeah. From you. So, a lot of. But again, a lot of. It's not us who can do anything. It's Amen. The spirits yeah. Of the generation. I, I agree with that. I guess. I guess. I guess what I'm saying is, is like, you know how when the one guy said, "What must I do to be saved?" and he said, "Only believe." Now, Mace, and he said, "I believe," and he came down from the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm talking about like that type of moment. Um, We've seen those moments. Yeah, yeah I know. blessed us to see those. See it's cool, so. I've met people who were recently saved, and that's that's always encouraging to see. But I mean, I don't usually ask people, you know. And it's a lot of times I'm sharing the gospel. It's via Twitch, which is like I don't know. Maybe I should do it more in person, but there's still people on the other side of. You know those usernames, so it's like, I'm, you know, I do share the gospel there, and I. It's not, but, it's not gonna happen a lot, and you sound young. Yeah. How old are you? I'm almost thirty. Oh wow, yeah, you sound way young, bro. I hope you look that yeah. young too. For <laughs> your whole life, dude. If, if I shave my beard and like down, like I make it nice and clean, I actually, I think I look like at least five years younger. It's. it's Have you got a beard? Nice. It's. I don't he's usually got, let it grow He's got long. beard, he's got tassels, he's got that King James thing through and through. Listen, no, 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 no. Beards are almost strictly rejected in the philosophy of IFB. Not, not, the, <laughs> not the written down. Not the oh, he's a, down. Jeremiah's a rebel? Yeah, oh, Jeremiah man. Is a, like, he's a rebel, yeah. yeah. But, but <laughs> I've never heard that beards being rejected in the IFB. That's interesting. I guess, just I guess that's what he's talking about. Yeah. I, yeah, no, okay, but I mean, I've seen a distaste for it in my experience. I, um, I usually don't let my facial hair grow long enough to really look great. Like, if I could grow a beard, but I don't know, it's just, I don't like a beard looking look on me. I don't know. Okay. Does anybody in your church have a beard? Yeah. Lots of people do. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like I, mean, I said, Jer we're not, Jeremiah, we're not like, I don't know, so I'm just, I'm just asking. What's your opinion, Jeremiah, on alcohol? Uh, personally, or as a, like, as, a, as a as a church position? As a rule. Uh, yeah, as a rule. We, I mean, we don't condemn it as sin, but okay. we definitely uh, strongly don't encourage it, uh, which I think is probably the biblical wise way of approaching alcohol. Abstinence, you're saying? It's, it's more of, uh, Wine is a, uh, wine is like a, I don't remember the proverb. Wine will bite you, uh, but it's, it's not that you can't, it's just that it's not necessarily the most wise thing to be doing. What would you say, what would you say about Paul telling Timothy to no more drink water, but only wine for his stomach's sake and his often infirmities? Mm -hmm. Probably was just fermented grape juice or something, I don't know. Probably had alcohol you, in Yes, it. you would say it was grape juice. Right. I, I I don't know. I probably had alcohol in it. I don't know. A lot of things probably had alcohol in it back then. They didn't have refrigeration. Right. So you're saying now that we have refrigeration, it's alcohol is not necessary. I mean, I don't know. It's do uh If the spirit tells you not to, then don't do it. I don't know if you if you uh if you have an addictive personality. I agree you with that, though. Because I agree with you know, what you just did. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just, if you have an addictive personality, I know I would be addicted to it, so I avoid it, and I'm also, I also feel like I just missed the boat, I mean, you, like, need stout. Like, I feel like stouting at this point in my life, which is like, what's the point, if that makes sense? I, I think, I think there's a good, a good statement about it. There's, there's no legal requirement to not have wine or beer or anything like that. Yeah. The legal requirement, very clearly in scripture, is do not should you get be, drunk. Do not should get you drunk. be, in your opinion oh, though, on, Jeremiah? Hold on. Hold on. I'm, 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 I still got some Sorry. But as a as a as a wise decision, you will not go wrong no longer drinking. 
or or not drinking like jeremiah yeah. it, it won't but that it won't do you that, any disservice at all but that's not that's not what paul told timothy well paul told timothy that because he had a sour stomach yeah, that yeah was a, no it was news. a medicinal it was a medicinal decision not it wasn't about you know enjoy your steak with a nice glass of wine so the point of it is is if you have a medicinal need for for some kind of drug be it wine or otherwise go ahead but the point is as jeremiah just said and i am i'm in full agreement with you will not do yourself a disservice by not having alcohol in your it's not a, it's it, there's no problem with it that said you will not have a problem either if you responsibly uh, enjoy a beer or a glass of wine. Should that be said in the church? I mean, I, it should be I, when you get to the proverb about uh, wine is a mako. Um, but that's I, about being drunk, though. That's a yeah, it, it, it needs to be properly, properly preached on. But it's not, I mean, it's, it's you can't put a law where there is no law. That's, that's part of the reason why I don't like uh, calling my church fundamentalist on the one hand is because fundamentalist tends to be legalistic and putting laws where there is no law but we're fundamentalist in a lot of our doctrine and beliefs so it's like kind of it's kind of difficult in that sense but we don't so are you telling me that your church does not preach now i'm, I'm not being i'm not being ugly i'm very curious they don't preach at all that you that you shouldn't drink or that it would be better if you didn't? Uh, I think my pastor has spoke on it once. And I think it was just like a, it was more of a just, it's not wise kind of thing. I mean, he, he hasn't really talked about it uh, much. The previous pastor who, cause the current pastor we have, we've only had for like five years. Your, your pastor, hold on, hold on, hold on. Your pastor said it's not wise though in his, in his, in his, in his statement or in his, message that it I wasn't mean, wise to drink i think he was talking about uh i think he was going through the bible and it was just sort of like a thing that was sort of there in the text and so he's like i'm just going he sort of takes approach of if it's in the text i can preach on it um yeah but, but it has to all be in context though yeah so in other words so in other words you have to you have to point out that the lord drank wine the entire time he was here except when he was fasting and and he was called a drunkard and a wine bibber by, by others by, by 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 religious leaders but why was he called a drunkard and a wine bibber? i don't think it was because he was drinking wine i think it was because of him casting out demons and stuff and the things he was preaching uh, i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna call issue with that because scripture definitely makes it clear that that he's called a drunkard by the pharisees because he had some wine and yeah, first... because he drank wine because yeah. they were always drinking wine together at dinner. Well, and, hold, on. And, I, and... hold on. I don't think you can say always either because the script, scripture does not say always. Don't, don't no, put a word no. in there that's not there. Right? I just know so... what's common. I just know what's common. Well, I know you can say culture. it's common, but we can't, we, can't make, we can't make the statement that Jesus was always drinking wine. I don't, I don't think that's, a, that's, that's fair to scripture because scripture doesn't say that. Now, did Jesus drink wine? Yes. Did the Pharisees accuse him of being a drunkard? Yes. Was Jesus ever drunk? No. That would have been a sin, and Jesus did not sin. However, did he drink wine? Yes. Is there a way to have a glass of wine and not have it be a sin or a beer or otherwise? Yes. However, that was then in in where they were at, and it's there's no law against it, and it shouldn't be shouldn't be said that well, there is. However, I it is about getting drunk and Jesus did not get drunk. I think my main point though is that um, a lot of a lot of IFB they say flee the appearance of evil. That's what that's a good verse they would give you to have you not drink and say that you know it's wise not to. But then at the same time our example of the Lord was he knew that he'd be called a wine bibber if he drank a wine. He that in advance. Uh, but it still he did not stop drinking wine with his, with his people because of it so uh so so my point is 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 when we say and i'm not saying you know there's anything wrong with your church i have no idea but when we say out of context that it's not wise to drink wine then we also call in to question the lord's behavior uh, I, because because he drank wine it, it's not wise, but it, it's also in not. In public. He, he drank wine in public. 
it I mean it's just because it's not wise doesn't mean you can't do it. It just like I like No no I, no, no, no no are you say yeah but what I'm saying is the Lord wouldn't do anything that was unwise. Is what I'm saying. So and he's he's our example. So if he wouldn't do anything that's unwise and he drank in public, then it, then it's impossible for it to be unwise. I mean it would be un it would be unwise for me to drink it because I would get addicted. Okay, but 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 that's a different. So, you know, that's a different so is history. so does that does that all does that always apply every case? Because Jesus was able to drink wine in public. Does that mean? Okay. Take care, Mario. Oh, okay. Um, but so if Jesus always drank wine in public, and clearly, please, please would... stop saying always. Yeah, Just yeah, say... I don't mean always. Oh, I don't mean always. But yeah. Uh, I, I, anyway, if Jesus drank wine and it, yes. he did it in public, okay, and it was unwise, but if it was, it wasn't. If it, if it was, no if, way to if, say that. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I did not mean that. Okay, that, that, that's why I happened to correct you. Okay, and hey, let's just let's just backtrack for a minute. One of the reasons why we're being very careful to articulate this all properly is not for us. It's for you, the viewer. If you're watching this right now and you're like, these Christians are getting nitpicky about this. It's not for us. We're okay. We're doing this so that you can know exactly what Scripture says and what we believe clearly, and that's why we're making sure that we articulate it because it's so easy to say something and know amongst brethren that this is what we really mean. But this video, you might be watching this later. You might be in this channel. You might be on YouTube. You might be on Twitch and listening to this, and we want to make sure we're not misinforming you about what scripture says. So realize the clarity that we're bringing here, we're bringing for you, the viewer. And so with that said, I'll now defer back to Jeremiah to screw it all up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just doing it for the brother. I didn't even know you had any viewers, bro. But yeah. Ouch! Yeah, oh! Oh, it's so mean! <laughs> oh, it's no, so mean! No, I don't oh, know I'm out! Anyone watching I'm you. out! All right, we're shutting down the stream. <laughs> I'm out of here. There's not even anybody watching. You <laughs> guys don't <laughs> count. Sorry. <laughs> Josh has spoken. Oh, man. I had to cut the guy deep. Oh, it's just... <laughs> That's anyway, you go pick up what's left of my self-respect over there, Caleb. I think it's in the corner. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Grab mine. Yeah. Please feel free to. Do you want some duct tape heat up for that? Yeah, I need some super glue. Put, put it back together. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Anyways, if, so just be, I don't think because you can say that it was not unwise for Jesus to drink wine. But I don't think you could say because of that it would be. It's fine for me to drink wine because I know it would be very unwise if I did. Is what Why I guess. Like, that? I would probably get addicted. Are you? Are you what, what do you? What do you have to base that off of? My addiction to porn for like over a decade. Okay, well that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, um, but the lust of the eyes are, are not. They're, they're, they are yeah, tied, but they're not. They're not. They're not exactly the same as the less of the flesh. It's, it's so, that, and uh, there's other yeah, not as destructive addictions I've had to deal with. And when I say not yeah. as destructive, it's like, you know, there's some things that like it's not sinful to do, but it still can be kind of addictive. Do you drink yeah. coffee? I do drink coffee. How often? Uh, coffee is a blessing from the Lord. <laughs> a couple how, how cups. Often? A couple cups a day, at most. Okay, some days, yeah. some days I don't drink any. Some days I drink like a cup. It's really so you, don't, like you're, like. you don't drink daily. You're not a daily user. I I what's, yeah, what's I would say you, Jeremiah. Come on now. Be, I be would honest. say open up probably, open up about your addiction to coffee now, Jeremiah. It, Come on. I would say it's pretty close to. I would say it's basically daily. You could say it's daily. Some days I don't though, but it's probably if like I, if 80, I don't 90%. Drink it daily, I get a headache. Like, I don't know Here's the yeah. thing. I don't. My wife does, if I drink but coffee, uh, I get a headache. Really? You, talk, you, get it, okay. you might be getting. You might. You might need a little hydration, bro. You might be dehydrated, but um, it, it, here's the thing. So what you just told me is that you drink coffee, but you almost tell me you're dabbling in it. So in other words, coffee's a strong drug. I mean, uh, caffeine. I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa! I wouldn't all foul on that. Coffee is not a strong drug. Caffeine is a very strong drug, and it caffeine requires a very. 
Caffeine may be considered a drug on its own, but we're not drinking caffeine. We're drinking coffee, which is a brew. So let's be careful having a cup of coffee. Let's not let's not take it to a context that it doesn't apply to it. It's not like I'm sitting here injecting caffeine into my brain, my my brain. Oh, I didn't. I'm However, not. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're an addict. I'm just. All I'm saying. All I'm saying is that caffeine is obviously a drug. So it's. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no discussion. It is a drug. So but caffeine you just is said a it's drug. It's a strong it's, drug in relationship. It, like somehow that applies to coffee, which having a cup of coffee is not like taking a strong drug. I I think I know where you're going with this. How I don't can... know what my point is. What my <laughs> point is is that is that it is an addictive substance. So not only is it a strong drug, but it is an addictive drug, right? So, so it 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 makes itself a habit in your life. So I guess my point is is that when I say, what are you basing the idea that you become addicted to alcohol off of? And but but when you're, when you're telling me that you're not addicted to coffee, I'm not trying to talk to you to drink alcohol. All I'm trying to say is is that. I think maybe you're you're um maybe do something anyway uh I think oh your caution I think your caution comes from teaching so but but my point is my, my point is is that if 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 we if we follow the Lord as an example right and only only the Lord as an example now don't get me wrong. If Paul said something, I consider it from the Lord. So if it if it's in the scriptures and the Lord or the Lord did it or the Lord said it, then it's okay. It's permissible. But But there's but there's a difference between being permissible and being commanded. Yeah, all things are all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. You. Exactly. So just because the Lord did it doesn't mean it's profitable. All right, we got RCN says, as a grandson of an alcoholic, trust me, caffeine does not destroy families like alcoholics. Uh, yeah, and that. the thing is, is I I sort of get what you're saying is why can I why can I use coffee in a responsible manner? I don't like over I don't drink like a whole bunch of coffee a day or whatever. How, a lot of people do. Yeah, but like I, I don't. I mean, at the most, I'll drink like three or four if it's like a really tired day. I'm really tired that day or whatever. But uh, I get what you're so saying because why can I drink coffee, which can be addictive? Why can I drink that, but then I go turn around and say I'm not going to drink co or alcohol because I'm going to I'll probably just get addicted. I'm going to drink to excess. That's the thing. Are you going to drink to excess? Because I don't want to risk it. But yeah, for the I'm record, good. hold on, hold on. For That's the record, good. please tell me if I sit there and I drink five gallons of coffee, what is the negative outcome that that's going to cause? Tell me, tell me what that's going to do. That's uh, the question you have to ask. That's, that's no, I'm asking. Have have. How, how quickly? No, 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 no. Let's, no, no. Hold on, hold on. There's a, there's a specific reference here. I drink five gallons of coffee today. What is the scripture that the command that I'm breaking? Yeah, excess. No, there's no there's no scripture that says don't have you know, coffee in excess. Tell I, me I, I have I have the scripture. It's supposed to be Tell good stewards of the planet and the amount of pee that comes no, out of you no, 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 will no, no, destroy no. the planet. The planes. I'm yeah, the planes. true, true. Yeah. However, you however, if I drink five gallons, if, uh, not even five gallons, if I drink an excess of alcohol, I will become drunk, and that is specifically commanded against in scripture. Do not become drunk. With wine. I know. You cannot know, apply that to having a cup of coffee or cups of coffee or gallons of coffee every single day for your entire your life. Mind, so, your mind can get too spun on coffee. Now, if you what? have spun. Where Why? is the scriptural Why? verse about getting caffeinated? Please tell me. I want I don't, to that I don't have to. I just have to give you the one about excess, right? But where's because the one we about, know. Where's listen, the one about listen, excess? Listen. Where's the one about gluttony, Pito? I mean, you, you, it's, all things do, all, do all things in moderation. Hold on, is, is gluttony whatsoever, applying to it says, yeah, listen, 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 it says whatsoever you do, do in moderation. That's what it says. So, whatever you do, do it moderately. The Bible clearly says that. So, if, if you drink five gallons of coffee, even a moron would tell you that's not good. 
even a doctor would definitely tell you that's not good that's excess it's not moderation the moderation is in the middle so if if you do uh, alcohol moderately you're in the middle you're, you're in the middle of nothing and drunk that's the only way to do it or you can't do it or you'll have to do less than that there's no way to go above that because now you're going into excess excess is disallowed moderation well, is not required Jeremiah you don't dropping, have to moderately drop in verses in here about being drunkards and gluttonous eaters of meat I don't yeah. think you can apply gluttony to drinkers of liquor other than alcohol. Gluttony is, well, you can, you can, but glut, gluttony is out. Yeah, you can with Mountain Dew. Gluttony, though, is excess. That's all gluttony is, is uh, excess. Have to look that up. It, you, you have left moderation, the middle. Yeah, whatsoever you do, do in moderation. Look that one up. But what I'm getting at is, what is what is your moderation for coffee? It may not be my moderation for coffee. It's an audio audio well, opera. It's audio. We'll opera. figure that out. We'll, we'll figure that out for ourselves. Yeah, it but th well, that's it, audio it opera. Doesn't... With alcohol, it's very simple. You get drunk. Period. You're drunk. Yeah. You're wrong. There's no, my but point no is, heat measurement my, like that with alcohol. Or I know, not I know, alcohol, but if you're drunk, coffee. you've left moderation. Is my point. So and the, what the is your application you... with coffee? You're you're I, okay, applying can, alcohol to coffee. They're they're not the same. Can, can we pull it back to the coffee. original I, no, conversation? No, no. Okay, what I'm, go what ahead, I'm, what I'm putting go ahead. it to no go no you're mistaking me. What I put it to was okay. excess. That's what okay. I've said from the beginning. It's excess. It's leaving moderation. When you leave moderation with anything, oh boy, we've hit you here. Boy, you drink some coffee, don't you? When you leave oh, moderation, I drink, I, drink two, though, I drink two pots of coffee a day. Is that that's all a lot? Right? That's a lot. But by look, your all standard. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's the question. By yeah, your standard, yeah. am I in sin? I would no, say no, I'm, but you should I'm, probably I'm gonna, take I'm that. Gonna, Hold on, but that's I, the question I, we're talking about here. Am I in I, sin? I, I'm going to say that you've left moderation if you drink it. So two you're pots saying a day. I'm because I'm now, drinking two pots. No, I'm in no, sin. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm okay, then, say you got, it, then you got nothing. What, what I'm going to say <laughs> is, is if you drink two pots, in 24 hours, that's you're still nearly in my for me, and and I would say most doctors would it would you're probably nearly leaving moderation if you drink two two pots in 24 that's, hours. That's that's your Reason. that's your observation. That is not a measurement like drunkenness. Agreed. Drunkenness is Agreed. a clear measurement. You can measure Agreed. the amount of drunkenness Agreed. that somebody has. But, but moderation can be commonly agreed on by most, and so, but uh, and we find we listen. listen dabbling listen. in audio opera that is specific. I don't know what that means. Be, audio opera is the like getting a tattoo. Is getting the tattoo condemned in scripture? Can a Christian get a tattoo or not? And it's the not answer is specifically. It's not specifically right? condemned, yeah. but no, 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 not exactly right in my opinion. But well, that's your uh, opinion. That's the deal. Is when I can say don't get drunk, are we? I in have agreement? scripture though. I have right? Scripture exactly. Up. Scripture. When you have, have clear, clear have scripture, scripture that backs it up. Clear I do scripture. for for tattoos. Yeah. Tell me, tell me where in the New Testament it says you can't get a tattoo. Well, it, I don't know if I don't I don't remember where it is exactly, but it does say about the heathen marking their bodies. Um, so I wouldn't say that would have been a Christian, or let's say back then, obviously a Jewish uh, tradition. I wouldn't say that that would have been something they. Well, we're not Jews. We're we're Christians. Well, well, I, I understand, but at the same time, we're not heathen either. So, and that's what well, we did. I was it. a wretched heathen. heathen. I was a wretched heathen. Yeah, but I'm you're not, not knocking, now. I'm not knocking Christians that 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 have tattoos, but I would I would try to talk them out of going to get. One. Well, see, that's where it, that's it, it's, it's audio opera. It's on them to make up their own mind. And if okay. and if I decide, for example, like Jeremiah, that I'm better off not drinking because I know myself, and I would I would become uh, it would it would be a detriment to my life. You should it do would it. be hold yeah. on. It would and it would be sinful for you to try to convince me otherwise. Well, and I agree opera. with that. There I agree go. with that. Um, but at the same time, if you have, if, in other words. If you're dealing with teachers talking to teachers, then you would need to teach the teachers. In other words, you wouldn't want a teacher of men 
to 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 hold down the wrong position on anything. So because what'll happen is is they'll end up with little sex because they're not sticking with. I'm sorry. What did you say? Sex, like sex. S -E -S -E -S -E oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta enunciate that all the way out. Little groups. Southern. Little oh, groups. Southern. <laughs> just, you, know, you gotta, you gotta be careful air. what you're saying there. We're on live stream here, so we want yeah, to be clear. No. Oh yeah. boy. All right. So this has been a great conversation. Really, really appreciate it, guys. We're gonna wrap up too, because we're coming up on the top of the hour here, and we have guests coming over, and we've got Adventure Club tonight. I want to do this some more, guys. You're always welcome. And you found a, a non-toxic environment, Josh, to join us. Even though you can't run around killing each other, I hope you're having a good time. And by the way, I got a whole bunch of Ankies over here that I didn't mean to hatch out. They hatched while we were talking. I wasn't paying attention. So if you want to come over and grab one of these, I would be grateful because they're all about to go the way of the dodo. Uh, and I can't get the one in there I want. But anyways, um, you're more than welcome to come over. And there's um, saddles in the community chest. And if you have any questions, by the way, as you're listening to these Christian uh, men faithfully talk about our beliefs and how to apply those to our lives, and you're like, what do these guys mean? Here's my recommendation. Don't take our word for it. Go to the word of God. Read it for yourself. God gave us his word so that we could know. Not guess, but know. There's going to be stuff in here that's going to be crystal clear. What must I do to be saved? What shall I not do? Um, what shall I do? And then there's going to be things like we're talking about right now with coffee and tattoos and things like that. But there are very clear guidelines for believers on how we are to behave. There's not guesswork in it. And it's written so that anyone may know what is the truth. Jesus Christ literally said, I am the way. Think about that. He's the way and the truth. He is the truth. We can know it. It's not a secret. It's not something that you have to guess at. Here's his word. Read it. And right now, if you're watching this, the word of God is a click away. We're going to drop a link in here to a, uh, a version of the Bible. Other people are, are welcome to recommend uh, other ones as well. But we, uh, we recommend this one simply because it's got no ads, which I don't know about you, but the ad stuff is just, ugh, I don't need to see that stuff. So here you go. This is the book of John. It is a great place to start to learn the gospel. The most important thing that you can know for where you are going to spend eternity. There's only two options. One is absolutely terrible. I don't want you to go there. The other is absolutely amazing. You want to be there. It is going to be wonderful for eternity or it's going to be absolutely horrific for eternity. Those are your only two options. And if you don't know if you're going to heaven, then you're going to hell. But if you know you're going to heaven, it's 100% assured. That's what we have. We can know. And that comes down to the gospel, and that's what Jeremiah just dropped in here. Thank you, Jeremiah. Because gospel means good news. We got good news to share. The word, Turn on the news. It's nothing but bad news. We got good news. We, we are followers of Jesus Christ, and we're here on this channel talking about this because it's good news. You can know that you're saved. Why? Well, because you can first off know that you're you're in trouble. We've all sinned. I mean, if you're honest, you've lied, you you've coveted, you if you haven't committed uh, murder, you you've murdered somebody in your heart by being angry at them. You've lusted with the eyes. All of these things. It just takes one sin, and you have earned the wrath of God. And you, it, the eternity is hell for that, and it's horrifying. But there's good news. The good news is that Jesus, the Messiah, Messiah means Savior right? Jesus Messiah died for our sins, was buried, and then raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and right now is seated at the Father's right hand. We have a living, breathing Savior. Nobody else does. You want to answer the quick question, why is every other religion, religion wrong? Where is their prophet? Where is their Savior? They're dead. We have a risen King. His name is Jesus Christ, and right now he is seated in heaven, in a throne, the most important place for anyone to be. Jesus Christ is seated there right now, and you can know him. You can know him through his word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It is the best news ever. If you have any questions about it, guys, that's why we're here. That's why we're talking about all this stuff. 
you're more than welcome to ask them. But we're going to give a raid now to another channel. Jeremiah, any recommendations from you? Oh, I'm hold on. Let me pull list. it up. I got um, I got redeemed uh, DJ streaming and Black Belt. I guess this uh, is a guy who doesn't look like they have a cam on. Um, but I mean, Black Belt's you, usually a good, pretty good choice. He's there do you know Chovy? Like, uh, I think so. Like anchovy, but, I, but without the A-N. Yeah, I think I stopped going there for a reason. Let me take a look and see if I can remember why. Yeah, his hat says it all. That's why I'm not going there. I'm gonna judge him on his hat. I'm gonna judge him. Wow, that's wow. That's cold. I know. I know. Uh no, I that's mean, not the only reason. That's not the only reason. Uh, but no, I'm sure. I'm sure he's fine. I just try to go to places where if um, if we go there, I have a. I hope that they are gonna share the gospel message because ultimately that's what we're all about. The game's fun. The game is interesting, but the game is really not important. It's do some fish tank. That's important, huh? Houston's fish tank. No, come on, man. <laughs> it is cool, but we aren't going to. We'll give uh, we'll give Black Belt and his wife a read. Okay, uh, yeah, all right. that's good. Thanks, guys. We got eight people coming along. Eight people on my channel that apparently, according to Josh, nobody's watching anyways. And uh, we will <laughs> see you guys later, Josh. It's been great meeting you. Look forward to talking to you some more. And thanks, everybody. Enjoy it, dude. Have... I, I I LOL'd real hard, but I have my mic turned off so you can hear that. That. That, that. that was a burn, man. That was a burn. All right, guys. Uh, happy with you. Intentional. <laughs> I hope you have a very blessed evening. All right. Raid and let's turn on his audio so we can hear what he's saying. Oh, no. I get a. I, I hate that. You give him a raid and then you get an ad. That's just not cool. That's well, cool. you can pay for Twitch Tobo. Oh, boy. That's the true. only way That's is true. to bribe Twitch with money. Yes, exactly. I pay for YouTube so I don't get those ads because I can't stand YouTube Premium ads. is such a good it's Oh yeah. Expensive. It's so oh, good. It. Just save <laughs> just save my eyes. Dude. Yeah. Just I'm gonna shut off the stream though. If you're watching this, thanks a lot. Hope you guys check out uh